it. So I would say that the What Happened to You book really helped me think about my life. And also to understand that there must have been a lot of, I mostly remember the bad stuff, mm -hmm. but there had to be a lot of good stuff for me to have turned out the way that I did, you know? And I think so much of my sense of validation came from outside, like in the church. I was mm -hmm. speaking by the time I was three or four. And so I felt seen there. Mm -hmm. I felt seen by my, you know, t teachers. And, uh, you know, my grandmother, who was very harsh, but a lot like a lot of Black parents during that era, mm -hmm. um, the, the idea of hugging and loving on your child or even allowing the child to feel seen was just not a part of her part of her life. But she did give me Jesus. She did give me a belief in something bigger than myself. So I'm grateful for, for that. I love how you said up till you were about 10, you thought Jesus was your daddy. I thought that, I was, did. that was the best. You know what struck me? There were so many parts of this that struck me. Um, when you went to go see your mom in Milwaukee for the very first time at age six, mm -hmm. and you were told that you could not come in the house to sleep because you were too dark, your skin was too dark, you slept outside. Yeah. It struck me that you talked about a guardian angel, like you dreamt of an angel watching you. Did you, yeah. did you believe? And I named you, her Melinda. Melinda? Yeah, I named her Melinda, yeah. Do, yeah. You, do you believe it was a real, I mean, to this day, do you think that there was really a guardian angel watching over you? I absolutely do. I believe that my belief that there was is what saved my mind. I believe that if I had not believed that I had something bigger and greater than myself to protect me, then I would have lost my mind. I would have become bitter. I would have been really very angry with my mother and I would have carried that bitterness in a way that it would have affected my behavior in school. I would have been acting out. I would have, I would have been a different kind of person had I not had a belief in something that was bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. So do I believe the angel was there? I imagined that she was there. I literally would like see her on patrol, oh. you know, in my own little six year old mind, I would see her on patrol like she's there and she's taking care of me and I'm gonna be okay so that I could sleep at night. And I, I think now knowing what I know about what happened to you, had I just slept there every night in the fear mm that I felt the very first night I arrived there, I wouldn't have survived it. Hmm. I wouldn't have survived it. And I would have awakened every day just angry. And But 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 I didn't. I awakened hmm. with, okay, and then we get on my knees and pray at night. She's going to come back again and she's going to protect me. So, yeah, I think the belief that she was real saved my mind. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Is this an issue about guns or is this an issue about social justice? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? The question is, are you now more open to packing the court? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Is this an issue about guns or is this an issue about social justice? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? The question is, are you now more open to packing the court? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. How did you square the fact that you loved God so deeply and dearly, yet somehow these things kept, bad things were just happening to you? How did you square those two? Oh, 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 I love this question, Hoda. There is a wonderful um, hymn that says, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now, for my journey now, for my journey now. Maya Angelou actually wrote a book called Wouldn't Take Nothing for My Journey Now. And I wouldn't take anything Mm. for having been raised the way that I was Mm. and having the experiences that I did because every one of them created what um, Bruce Perry calls in in What Happened to You, post-traumatic wisdom. It is because I was sexually abused, raped at nine and 10, 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 that I have such empathy for people who've experienced that. It is because I was raised poor and no running water and going to the well and getting whipping that I have such compassion for people who have mm-hmm. experienced it. And so it has given me a broader understanding and a deeper appreciation for every little mm-hmm. and big thing that I, I now have. And now this is what I now, I just had this thought. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for bringing it up. I had this thought after uh, writing What Happened to You. I suddenly realized that being sent to live with my mother, which at the time felt like my grandmother is now abandoning me and sending me away. Oh my God, Hoda, I realized that was my saving grace Hmm. because otherwise I would have started school in Mississippi, Hmm. segregated Mississippi, Hmm. sitting in a classroom where I was, would be made to feel that I was less than the other uh. children. Instead, I got shipped to Milwaukee and put in that kindergarten class where I already knew how to read because my grandmother gave me Jesus. I all knew all the Bible stories and knew all the... So when I walked into kindergarten, I write my kindergarten teacher a letter and say, Miss New, I do not belong here because I know a lot of big <laughs> words. And I, and I write them out. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Joshua. And I got sent to the principal's (gasps) office. So it wasn't until, and they moved to the Mm. first grade the Mm -hmm. next day. So I got myself out of kindergarten. But it wasn't until doing the big revelation for me is, oh, Mm. even my grandmother Mm. becoming ill and not being able to take care of me in this particular moment Mm. is the thing that changed the trajectory of my life in that moment. I, that, I just thought, wow, I had never thought of that before. Like, whoa, what happened to me? Oh, I got sent away. I was no longer with my grandmother. And uh, oh, that is the thing that saved me. Because I would be a very different person had I been raised in a, in a, in a Mississippi uh, school. Oh my God, I want to weep right now. I have, I'm having this big wave that's, that's hit me. It's crashing on me. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> no, but that, 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 that's, that's, what, that's yeah. what post-traumatic wisdom is. Yeah. It's like, oh, that thing happened. I thought it yeah. was a terrible thing. Yeah. I'm sleeping out on the porch. I'm, uh, I felt separated, not a part of. That created a sense of, oh, I got to take care of myself. Wow. It's, it's me and the, my, my angel team wow. here. You know, so all of it, all of it works out if you're open to see it. Right. If you're open to see what happened to you and let what happened to you allow you to recognize Mm -hmm. the me you can't see because they're all connected. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man, the All right, it just did too. These days, the news never stops. 
The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's talk for a second about uh, Prince Harry. He spoke out, and you know, for people to get rid of that stigma of mental health, people have to speak out, and Prince Harry has been speaking out. And with his speaking out, Oprah, he's got gotten some criticism. I don't know whether it's for speaking out too much. He asked for privacy, and now people feel like they're seeing him everywhere. What are the critics not understanding about what's going on? Uh, I think privacy, uh, you know, I ask for privacy and I'm talking all the time. So I think being able to have a life that you are not intruded upon by photographers or people flying overhead or invading your life um, is what every person wants and deserves is to not to be intruded and invaded upon. And I think when they say they wanted privacy, that is what they were asking for. But the uh, one of the reasons um, from the very beginning when I had one of my early, early conversations with Harry about what do you think are the two most important issues facing the world now? And he said, climate change and mental health. And I said to him, oh, well, I'm doing the series on Apple for Apple TV Plus mm -hmm. and, and started talking about it. And then he said, well, when I turned to leave, Oda, he said, well, if you ever need any help with that, let me know. And I went, mm -hmm. did you say... <laughs> Did I need some help? And so his interest uh, and partnership was really authentic and about his desire to champion these conversations. Mm -hmm. And so I think that your, your asking for privacy in your own personal life does not mean that you don't want to also use your platform to help the world see itself differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is also one of the reasons, Hoda, that Harry and I wanted to include, Harry and mm -hmm. I and the whole radical team, all of us working on this, wanted to, to, to include uh, people who were known mm -hmm. and people who were not known. Because, you know, what I think celebrity is good for, what your being known is good for, is for people to be able to see themselves in you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it is. It is being able to say, oh, if that is possible. And the same thing is true uh, whether you are being celebrated for mm -hmm. something that's accomplished or being acknowledged for being open and vulnerable uh, about something that is meaningful to you. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. that happened to mm -hmm, me too. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that's what people will come away sure. from. And I'm hoping that people you know, understand that for them, Privacy means not being invaded, not being not being intruded, but they are public figures who are going to right. use their platform to speak to the world. And, and I'm sure you, we will continue to hear from them. Yeah. They didn't mean we're going to go. Privacy doesn't mean silence. Mm -hmm. That's what people are missing. Privacy doesn't mean silence. When they did their interview with you, Oprah, and you've, I'm sure, spoken to them since, obviously, did they, how, reflecting on it, did they have any regrets about sitting down and talking about their lives? Um, they have not shared any regrets with me. We had a conversation prior to the interview where I do this with every single person I ever speak to uh, about something important. Um, and I started doing it on my show mm -hmm. like around 1989, I think, um, going into the green room and saying to the person, tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. What do you want to happen here? What do you mm -hmm. want to come out of this interview? And uh, we didn't meet before, but we texted and both of them shared that they wanted the truth mm -hmm. and they wanted truth and they wanted healing and they wanted this to be, um, in, you know, an open conversation and that there was nothing off limits. And I, this is my number one goal hmm. was I understood what had happened to them and I wanted the rest of the world to come away being able to answer the question, oh, now 
Mm -hmm. I understand what happened. Mm -hmm. So the question was, why did they leave? That was the, that was mm -hmm. the number one question mm -hmm. that I wanted to have answered. And I think by the time that interview was done, people understood. Oprah, did you think that Harry was, was caught off guard by anything that Meghan said during the interview? Was he surprised by anything? Mm. Let me just tell you, that couple is one of the most in sync couples I've mm -hmm. ever seen. I mean, it is a joy to see them uh, together behind the scenes. And so I think that they probably, that they have not shared this with me, but I, I, I think that they would have not just shared their intention with me, but they would have had a conversation um, about what they both wanted to accomplish mm -hmm. in, in, in that interview, so. Well, Oprah, this was great. I love you. Uh, I wish we had more time, but I always want more time with you. And um, Wonderful talking to you. Thank Wonderful you so much. You. Thank you for everything. Today is good as hell. <laughs> we have been waiting for this day. We have renamed this day yeah. Oprah Day. Yeah. You want to know that? She's been very busy on her tour. Let's check out what she's been up to. Uh, I can't take it. <laughs> I have some good news to share. I'm going on tour. Oprah Winfrey is hitting the road. She's four stops into her nine city tour across America. As part of Oprah's 2020 vision tour, your life in focus. Oprah covers diet, fitness, mental health, and more during each day-long event, which are run by WW, the company formerly known as Weight Watchers. Oprah is part owner of WW and sits on their board. As long as there is breath, there is more. I see you back there! Throughout her tour, Oprah's been joined on stage by A-listers, including Lady Gaga, The Rock, Tina Fey, and Amy Schumer. Her next stop, Brooklyn alongside Michelle Obama. But first, she's with us, right here in Studio 6A. Everyone, say hello to Oprah. Oprah! <laughs> Need a moment. Just to, uh, do y'all feel like you need a moment? <laughs> I feel like I need a moment. This is um, so fun, guys. Okay. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. And you manifested she did, this, didn't she, yes, Oprah? She did. I tried to manifest it, but really, all I wanted was this moment. Oh. Thank you. I wanted this oh. moment. Oh. Let's do it again. Oh. Oh. I wanted. Oh. I manifested oh. this oh. moment. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Which means, I mean, I can't tell you, Oprah, I feel like I've been in this business a hundred years. And I was, thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that cool? You probably don't need one, but. Oh, good, I'm good, I'm good. We do. I'm good. I'm good. Anyway. Uh, um, I, sorry, goodbye. Um, I can't, cool. you know, I think, you know when people say like you mean so much to me, but they've never met you and I know maybe it always does seem a little weird, but this is really one of those moments for me. So well, thank, 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 you. You. thank you. Thank you for coming. So, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah. tell me what, I know I've heard you say that, but tell me why, like you watched over the years. Yes. You, Yes. I watched you over the years. I've watched you lift people up. Yeah. Every, you know, there are like, there's only a couple people on the earth who you want to emulate in our business. 
and I, used, I watched you like hold people's hearts in your hand. Oh. And I remember thinking like, how does she do that? And, and you did it in such a way and it was always so tender and real. And like the fact that you're sitting here on this day is really kind of blowing my mind. <laughs> I mean, I'm 55 or 56, nobody knows. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. It, it it just shows you like the the kid in you is still in there when you walk in the door. So well, thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. everybody in here must yes. feel the same way. friends we've got a fantastic wednesday edition of pop start plus for you thanks for being here on the show today some real class acts fran drescher and lindsey vaughn plus we dug up some seinfeld gems right out of our vault but first let's check out today's pop start news we're going to start with this year's big news on the academy awards on tuesday the president of abc entertainment announcing that this year's oscars will actually be returning with a host oh, makes the sense. first time in three years that Hollywood's biggest night is going to include a master of ceremonies. You might recall Jimmy Kimmel was the last man to hold that position back in 2018. And although there's no word yet on who's going to get the gig, Judd Apatow, of all people, throwing out some suggestions online, writing on Twitter, I would like to suggest Steve Martin and Martin Short host. It would be pure joy, and we need that. Mm. Well, couldn't go wrong with that. No, well. absolutely. Steve's hosted the Oscars for uh, a few times over the years, and he's, well, he's never been afraid to poke fun at the whole thing. The proceeds from tonight's Oscar telecast, and I think this is so great, will be divvied up among huge corporations. <laughs> <laughs> so simple, so funny. Yes. Everything's funny right yeah. now, the way yeah. the world is spinning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Whoever hosts that show is going to crush. It's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, the Academy Awards set for March 27th. Next up, Reese Witherspoon oh, and Ina Garten. The, to work the, on. the barefoot Contessa is keeping it real in the comment section of Witherspoon's latest post on Instagram. On Monday, the actress shared four healthy habits that she's working on. Here they are. They include drinking a big, giant glass of water in the morning, trying to get outside, huh? read more, maybe 90 minutes a day, get to bed earlier before 10, don't indulge mm -hmm. in any of that late-night TV binging. Ooh. Well, as great as all of that sounds, Ina thought that maybe those weren't so realistic. So she responded with her own list of perhaps easier habits. <laughs> <laughs> One, drink a large, uh, more large Cosmos. Two, stay up late watching addictive streaming services or series. Three, stay in bed in the morning playing Sudoku instead of reading a good book. And finally, four, spend more time safely with the people that I you love. I love it. That's Not why we love Ina yeah. Garden. Yeah. Well, and so did everybody online. The comment section blew up with support for Ina. Uh, users on Instagram leaning a little bit more towards the beloved TV <laughs> chef's recipe for happiness. But... Reese. Team Ina. Team yeah. Ina. Team Ina. All right now. Yeah, yeah. Next up, Foo Fighters. The band's heading to the big screen. There's a new horror comedy out with the band. On Tuesday, the first trailer dropped for Foo's upcoming flick. It's called Studio 666. And in the movie, they really go for it here. The band heads to a creepy mansion in Encino, California to work on their next album when things start taking a bit of a supernatural turn. The sound of this house is the sound of album 10. How are you feeling? Everything okay? Ever since we moved into this house, my mind is flooded. We all have writer's block. This is not just a creepy rock and roll house. It allows spiritual entities to cross into our world. It looks crazy. It looks funny. That's nuts. That's wild. There's a funny scene where Dave's working on a new song. He's pitching to the band. He yeah. starts at the beginning of Everlong, one of their famous songs. Yeah. And the, the band's like, uh, Dave, that's Everlong. We you, we made that 20 years ago. <laughs> He's like, oh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, the movie also stars, as you might have seen there, Whitney Cummings, Will Forte, and Lionel Richie. Studio yeah. 666 hits theaters on February 25th. And quickly and finally, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. After the stars and filmmakers of Being the Ricardos just took three of the biggest awards oh. at last Sunday's Golden Globes, the iconic Hollywood couple now at the center of a new project heading to streaming. Prime Video is going to be debuting a new documentary in March. It's called Lucy and Desi. It's going to examine the careers and relationship more in depth of Ball and Arnez. That film is being directed by none other than today's queen of oh, comedy wow. herself, our friend Amy Poehler. Ooh. And the doc is going to feature an all-star lineup of the world of comedy. We've got Bette Midler, uh, Carol Burnett, Charo. Norman Lear, just to name a few. Lucy and Desi will start streaming on March 4th. 
And we've got a few more noteworthy items here because it is Pop Star Plus after all. So first up, Bowen Yang, the SNL star, stopped by the Kelly Clarkson show on Tuesday and shared a funny moment that he felt like he was officially a true New Yorker after making the big move to the East Coast. So when you moved here, like, when did you finally feel like I am now a New Yorker? I was um, eating dim sum, and then I went to Columbus Park in Chinatown, and there was a, a pigeon lady, very home alone, too. I saw a rat scurry over her foot, and then she freaked out and screamed, and I thought, wow, this is the most New York thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's funny that, like, you're chill with pigeons, but not chill with rats, because I feel like that's a package deal. <laughs> Like it's a flying rat. God made them on the same day. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> That's a fact, by the way. Pigeon lady and rat are definitely two of the boxes on the official New Yorker bingo board. So welcome to the Big Apple, Bowen. Funny story there. And finally, Simon Cowell, the America's Got Talent judge, is officially engaged. Finally, People Magazine confirming the news on Tuesday. Cowell and fiance Lauren Silverman went public with their relationship back in 2013. Of course, they share seven-year-old son Eric together. So we're sending big congratulations out to their growing family. All right, those are your headlines for today. When we come back, Nanny Star Fran Drescher shares the key to easing her her anxiety thanks to her furry friend. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just it. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. Did you know that Fran Drescher is a huge dog lover? She's even had a famous one of her own. Get this, Chester, you might recall, the dog on her hit show, The Nanny, was actually Fran's dog. And she told us all about that and how her pets have shaped her life for our My Pet Tale series. I starred on The Nanny, and I wrote a part for my first dog ever, Chester Drescher. Oh, Chester, I haven't seen you in such a long time. Nanny, fine, please. He doesn't like strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Chester was an amazing dog because he was extremely consistent in his behavior. We knew what he would do under certain circumstances, so we wrote towards that. And that was why every time, you know, Cece Babcock grabbed him away from me, we knew that he would growl. Oh, how thoughtful! <laughs> So we always had her do that. You need some time to get used to you. I mean, you can't expect a dog to just jump into your arms and love you at first sight. Mr. Sheffield. Oh, you got her a puppy. Oh, how sweet. Oh, look how friendly he is. And it was great working with him because he was always on the set anyway. I'm always of the camp must love dogs. I have a, a dog now. Uh, Angel Grace, and I rescued her just days before lockdown, and then she rescued me. And for the first couple of months of our relationship at my house, you know, it was just her and me. I don't think she really uh, knew what was happening, but all of a sudden, you know, it was just the two of us for a couple of months, and so it really did bond us. And we're very, very close now, and she's three years old, and I travel with her, and she's 
my service animal. So I'm just very grateful to have the first big dog I've ever had. And, you know, she uh, gives me added security and, uh, and helps me through situations that sometimes would otherwise um, make me anxious. She's kind of different shades of white and bone. And I thought she was so loving when I met her at the rescue place and so sweet uh, that uh, I said, you know, are you an angel? Did Samson send you to me? And Samson was the dog that sadly uh, had died just days earlier uh, from a stroke. I said, are you an angel? Is that your name? And it just seems suitable to her because she is such an angel. She is definitely a big part of the family. She's got all these other mothers who come and take care of her if I have to go out of town and I can't take her with me. Dog is God spelled backwards. And I think that dogs are here to teach us unconditional love, to remind us that there's room in our hearts to love another even if you've loved and lost. And I think that every human should experience unconditional love. It's just a, a bond between two species that really is unparalleled. I just, you know, couldn't live without having a canine to love and care for and feel loved by and share my bed with. Just be there as a friend and a companion and company, a wonderful company. In fact, as a cancer survivor, you know, I always tell other people recently diagnosed, make sure your pet sleeps in the bed with you because at night is when your imagination and fear starts to run wild because you don't have the distractions of the day. And if you don't have a pet, get one. Love talking about dogs. Love hearing people talk about their, they're so passionate about their pets. Coming up on Popstar Plus, Olympic legend, Lindsey Vaughn. I'm not sure if she has an animal or not, but she tells us about her new memoir after this. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just love is. That. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just is. We're back now, three-time Olympic medal winner, royalty, Lindsey Vaughn, retired from skiing in 2019, and when she did, she's the most decorated skier of all time female. Now in a new memoir, she pulls back the curtain on what her life is really like, and she spoke about it on Today.
She's won 82 World Cup wins, 20 World Cup titles. She's got three Olympic medals to her name. And now, guys, she's peeling back the curtain on her remarkable life and career. It's a new memoir. It's called Rise, My Story. What a beautiful title, Lindsay. It's so good to see you. And as I'm looking at you, I'm thinking of like America looking at Lindsay Vaughn and saying, wow, talk about somebody who has it all. Talk about someone who's had a charmed life. Talk about someone who seems without care or worry. But when you page through the pages of Rise, you learn all of the vulnerabilities, the depression you battled. And I was just thinking, was it cathartic to finally say, hey, this is me? To your point, everyone thinks that you know, life is great, I have success, you know, everything is perfect. But first of all, no one is perfect. And I definitely am not, you know, I've had my struggles, you know, obviously, I've crashed many times in my career, I've come back from many, many injuries, but I also had personal struggles. And um, most of which I talk about, you know, some things I don't um, like my relationships, but you know, for me, my story, it, it was really important for me to get out my story, you know, after retiring from my skiing career and really being able to close that chapter, so to speak, of my life and move forward. Let's talk about battling depression. It happened when you were a teenager. It kind of hit you and your parents split up. And I don't think, I, th I think when people think of depression, they don't know how bad it can get. If you were to try to put your finger on how bad it got, what would that be? I mean, I definitely, you know, struggled and, and when I was a teenager, I had a very hard time. Um, and then I, I got through it, you know, I, I, I got medication and um, saw a therapist and things like that. And it really reared its head most of the time when I was injured, especially after my second ACL surgery and I was missing the Sochi Olympics and, um, you know, I was very isolated and just very depressed. But um, I had a great support system and that's really what mm -hmm. got me through it, you know, being able to lean on other people and, and also being able to talk openly about it, you know, after uh, the, in 2012, I actually talked openly about it and I felt like that really opened the door for me. It was a huge weight off my shoulders. And again, now writing this book, it feels mm -hmm. like an even bigger weight's been, been taken off my shoulders. Well, I picture you at the top of the hill, you know, and a lot of people are battling nerves and expectations. You're battling depression and other things as well. But there you were with all those titles we just read, with all of this excellence. So it just struck me that you were able to maintain excellence despite all of these sort of monkeys that you had on your back. I mean, skiing was the one thing that I really, that could make me happy, you know, and that was my escape, my emotional escape, my physical escape, you know, everything that I, all of the emotions that I was going through, I really put into my skiing and I used that in so many ways as my therapy and also as a crutch. And I think that's why retiring was so hard for me because I no longer had that crutch to lean on, mm. you know, I, I really was, was stuck with my own emotions and my own thoughts and um, sometimes being alone can be very a very scary place. So, um, you know, I, again, it was good for me to reflect and process all of that and be able to now have the skills to, to cope with everything mm -hmm. that I deal with without using skiing in, in that way. A lot of women will be able to relate to this. You have confidence at work. On the slopes, you like, I got this. A lot of women have confidence at work. But when it comes to personal relationships, it's like the confidence just evaporates. We don't know where it goes. And that same thing happened with you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like I was so much in control of my skiing career, but when it came to my personal life, I was very much a passenger. And I think I, I chose to shy away from conflict. You know, I don't, I don't like um, getting an argument, so I tend to be very passive and, and not stand up for what I want and what I need. And I think also, too, because I was so focused on skiing, I didn't know exactly what I wanted and what I needed. So um, it's been a it's been a good maturing process for me these these few years since retiring. And now, you know, I feel like I finally really happy because I know who I am <laughs> without skiing and I know what I want and I can stand up for that. Well, I think we just read your titles. I'll just say them again. 82 World Cup wins, 20 World Cup titles, three Olympic medals, seven world champion uh, chip medals. People would have asked you, Lindsay Vaughn, who are you? And you probably would have said skier. So today, if I were to ask the question, Lindsay Vaughn, who are you? What would your answer be? 
Uh, I'm just a Minnesota girl that loves to work hard. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a happy, lucky person. I'm not a skier anymore, but um, I definitely am, am a very motivated and, and uh, hardworking person. That's well, it. Eyes don't lie. Eyes don't lie, and your eyes are telling the truth. Lindsay, uh, it's a great book. A lot of people should read it. It's not really about skiing. It's about overcoming. I think it's something that all of us can use. Always great to hang with our friend, Lindsay. Coming up now, we're going to celebrate one of the stars of the show about nothing, Seinfeld, next. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All yeah, right, it just is. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey guys, welcome back to Popstar Plus. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, of course, is comedy gold, an icon, and she uh, is beloved for playing Elaine on Seinfeld. We know that, and as she turns 61 tomorrow, we thought it'd be fun to dig up some seinfeld theme memories from our vault. And so we have to start with Uncle Al's guest appearance on Seinfeld back in 1993. It's my big break, my acting debut, a shot at stardom. Okay, so it's a couple of lines on a Seinfeld episode. I showed up early so I could get some tips. You know, what's my motivation? Am I a method actor? How should I play the scene? It's really just pretending. That's it. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. That's the secret. Yeah. All the technique and the motivation and the, the uh, you know, dredging up your prior life experience. Forget, Forget that. It. No, just pretend. Okay, Jerry's good, but let's face it, he's a comedian. Now, Jason Alexander, we're talking Tony Award winning actor here. And one thought that sh should be going through your head at all times uh -huh. please God, don't let me screw it up. That's basically, uh, you know, if you, if you take all the acting training that I've had and you distill it down to that, that's basically what I do at every performance is please God, don't, don't let me screw it up. up. That's it. And it's held me in good stead. So that, that you, you would recommend that? That's Just think, don't let me screw I'll up. I'll tell you one other tip. Okay. If the scene is essentially over, but the uh -huh. camera's still lingering. There's going to be a moment where you don't know what to play. Uh -huh. And if you just play, who passed when? Okay. It will look something like this. It'll be... About, uh, hey, Tom. And it's good for any situation. It covers everything. You know? It could be somebody could have said, Al, I love you. Okay, Wayne. It's yours, Wayne. about Andy Williams? It covers everything. Well, I will personally go to Queens and deliver his Al Roker TV guide to him. What'd you do with the one you took? I don't know. I don't want to give too much away, but part of this episode's plot involves me on the cover of TV Guide. Notice the resemblance? This Hollywood stuff is fun, but hey, I'm not taking it too seriously. I'm just looking at it as a learning experience. Well, time to rehearse. I hope I remember my lines. All two of them. Elaine! Now, now, you saw me rehearse. Do you think I have potential here? Or? No, I don't, Al. No, none, I don't. none, 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 nothing. No, you're, you're talentless, Al. <sighs> what do you really feel? You're talentless, Al. <sighs> I just, so I don't have a. I, there's not. You don't have a prayer. Not even to go. Have a good show tonight, though. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks Thumbs for... up. <laughs> <laughs> 
for the Today Show. Thanks for the support. As we get ready to film the show, I'm starting to feel a little nervous, but I'm sure the cast feels the same way. Do, do they get nervous before they go on? Or? No, excited. Excited? Yeah, there's some excitement that happens. Excitement. Very rarely is it nervousness. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's kind of a nice rush. They don't get like a sick to their stomach feeling? Never. No. Okay. No, I think they're well beyond that. Then I guess I have the flu. And as himself, from New York, Al Roker! <laughs> And of course, our regulars as Kramer, Michael Richards, as Elaine, Julia Louis Dreyfus, as George, Jason Alexander. Who else can play George? It's hey. showtime. Elaine! <laughs> yes, your boyfriend's gonna have to catch the next train. He's not my boyfriend. He's not? Interesting. <laughs> For today, I'm Al Roker. That is so fun to watch. How amazing is Uncle Al? Finally, here's Julia speaking to us here on our home turf today, back in 1998. We begin with Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who recently told me how much she enjoyed playing Elaine. You know, I, I've been working long enough to know that all the elements don't come together like this every day and so it's been a fabulous role and I'm sure that there are other great roles out there but my god this has been sublime. I have to tell you I love Elaine. I think she is so great. Thank and, you. Um, <laughs> I love you Elaine. What is it about her? I love her? you Katie. <laughs> Thank you. What is it about her though that makes her I mean, really, don't you hear that from so many women? Men, men too, although a certain kind of man. Yeah, a um, man that you don't want to be near. I mean, what do people say to you when they talk about, about her and your character? Maybe she, she says what so many women would like to say. Maybe that's it. Yeah. You know, maybe everybody wants to say, get out, and push somebody away. And because she, she does do what you wish you could do, you know? I hate that question when people say, who's your favorite interview, because they're always, they're always going to say me. Yeah, always. <laughs> exactly. Right. And then they get their feelings hurt. Of course. You don't want to hurt their feelings. Drive this right. <laughs> but um, when you think about moments that were just great for you and your character and fun to do, and you knew it would, was really working. Oh, I've had so many moments like that, because they've, I've, I've been so lucky to have the opportunity to do so many different comedic beats, so to speak. The dance was fun to do, although humiliating, but fun. Sweet, fancy Moses. Can you really dance, by the way, Elaine? I mean, Julia? <laughs> yes, I like to think that I can really dance. I don't really dance like that, if that's what you mean. You that's don't? not my real dancing. No. I've been actually doing the, the Elaine dance the last two days. Oh, I'd like and to I see that. I think I have it down pretty well. Well, but... I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Well, no, because that has a, like, just sort of, go like, no, see, you're too fluid already. It's gotta <laughs> be jerky. Okay, so. And then just do that at the same time. Yeah, that's not bad. Do it a little more. So, like you're listening to music. And do, just make everything. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then go, uh, like that. What sort of things would you like to do next? I can't even tell you. I, I need to take a breather, you know? I've been working hard for so many years. Um, I'm not going to do television. Um, well, because I've done it, you yeah. know, and this has been so good. And I don't want to sully that, you know. I, I think that I should leave that as a sort of a treasure, treasure and just let it be. And there you go. That is some 90s nostalgia for you today. Listen, we appreciate you watching Popstar Plus today. We know you have choices in Popstar material, but thank you for choosing us tomorrow. We're going to catch up with two stars from the Netflix hit Cheer. We'll see you then. Have a great day. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day.
is a long oh, way of man. asking. Yeah, Who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah, things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. <laughs> look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. Oh, wait a minute, you showed up again? Hi, you guys, hello. Welcome to all of you watching our favorite streaming channel. We like to call it Today All Day. It's Today All Day because all morning is not enough anymore. <laughs> We're halfway through the week, Hodes. You're in Studio 1A, I'm home, I miss you, but we are together in our digital show today in 30, and it's a packed half hour coming It away. is, I miss you too. We're gonna start off by focusing on a big question tied to Omicron's rapid surge. So is it time to upgrade our masks? The CDC is weighing some new changes, and we'll bring you the full report and everything you need to know. All right, then we got to catch up with our friends Bodie and Morgan Miller as they introduced us to their adorable new bundle of joy, baby girl. She's number eight. You mm. don't wanna miss our conversation with them. Can't wait. And we had some major star power in the fourth hour. Oscar winner Denzel Washington joined us along with some of his co-stars from the new movie he has out. It's actually an old story, The Tragedy of Macbeth. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that yeah. story, actually. Oh. Also, can't wait to get hair and makeup again. Doing this from home, <laughs> look at my hair. It's sticking it looks out. good. I like it's it. It's a total mess. You know what, though? I know that Today in 30 viewers very understanding. So thank you. Let's get it started right now. Right now. NBC's Tom Costello's got it all covered for us. Tom, good morning. Yeah, good morning. A lot of scrutiny on the White House and the CDC over the shortage of tests, over confusing messaging. This morning, word that the administration is going to start shipping test kits to schools nationwide. And the CDC, as you said, expected to urge all Americans to upgrade our masks as Omicron is spreading unchecked across the country. Overnight, new data showing the highly contagious Omicron variant now makes up almost all new COVID cases in the U.S., a staggering 98 percent. It happened at lightning speed, too, spreading in just over one month. With COVID cases surging and hospitalizations hitting all-time highs, the CDC is now considering whether to update its own mask guidance, potentially recommending Americans choose higher quality options like N95s or the Chinese-made KN95. They are really, really tight fitting and they, and they help filter out very small airborne droplets of COVID. The typical surgical mask provides decent protection, but doesn't seal tightly around the nose and mouth. The Biden administration also taking a big step to keep kids in school, announcing this morning it will hand out 5 million rapid COVID tests and another 5 million lab-based PCR tests to schools nationwide every month for free. Meanwhile, the nation's top health officials faced a grilling on Capitol Hill. Tuesday's testimony punctuated by this very concerning message. Most people are going to get COVID. The experts were blasted over their mixed messaging and criticized for their confusing changes in guidelines. The American people are right to be confused. It seems like you all don't talk amongst yourself. Lawmakers also demanded answers over the critical test shortage. Our frustrated constituents cannot find rapid tests. A contentious hearing that turned personal at times. You are totally viewing. incorrect. Well, we Dr. Fauci clashing with Republican Senator Roger Marshall and later heard on a hot mic. What a moron. Jesus Christ. Senator Rand Paul and Fauci also sparring again. You're not an objective scientist. You, you've lost that long ago. Fauci accused a Kentucky Republican of putting him, Fauci, in danger, citing a case last month of an armed man arrested with a hit list. The police asked him where he was going, and he was going to Washington, D.C. 
to kill Dr. Fauci. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Welcome back. Well, Bodie and Morgan Miller have been our cherished friends here on Today for years. And last month, we were so thrilled to announce that their family had grown yet again as they welcomed a new baby girl. Well, we're going to catch up with the Millers live in just a moment. But first, the journey to what they say has now completed their family. It's been just five weeks since Bodie and Morgan Miller welcomed a little girl to their family. Her arrival at home on November 26th, an early Christmas gift and a blessing they've been dreaming of. Baby girl makes eight, joining big sister Dace and big brothers Nate, Nash, Easton, twins Asher and Axel, and of course their sister Emmy, who died in a tragic drowning accident three and a half years ago. She would now be five years old. There's this undercurrent of, of sort of loss that's just never gonna go away. Through their tears, the Millers have made it their mission to educate parents about the importance of water safety training for kids so no other family goes through what they have. If your child is crawling, they should be floating. If your child is walking, they should be swimming. Helping them heal now, a new baby girl, a wish come true, as they told us in 2019 after their twin boys were born. Do you all have like a Christmas wish? An unrealistic one, another little girl. <laughs> Baby girl Miller still doesn't have a name. Mom and dad say they've been waiting to see how her tiny personality develops, something of a Miller family tradition. They've been calling her Ocho, Spanish for number eight. Though Morgan writes they have been toying with the idea of incorporating some part of Emmy's name. The Millers say the latest addition to the family will be the last. Their family is now complete. From the heartbreak to the joy, we have been along for the journey. I am so nervous. Bodie and I have no idea. We were there last May when they learned the gender of the newest baby. The moment bittersweet. Oh my God! At the time, Morgan writing, I've dreamt of this moment for a long time and have longed to be able to hold a little girl again. My heart feels overwhelmingly full for the first time in a long time, and I have no doubt that my angel in heaven has her hand in this. To my Ocho, we have all been waiting for you. Have we ever, and joining us now from their very full house in Montana, we've got Bodie Morgan and baby girl Miller. Good morning, Miller family. Good morning. Oh, Good morning. That was a great little early. piece. Yeah. Oh, I know I'm crying too, because after all these years that, that we've been together and all the ups and downs, and you guys have just been so sweet to share your hearts. Um, and now this little heart in your hands, baby girl, What's she like? Tell us about her. Yeah, she's so <laughs> she's so um, similar to to the way Emmy was, but really unique as well. Like so, really relaxed. Her whole birth was obviously we've done them at home, and this one, both Morgan and I afterwards were like, "Wait, did that just happen?" It like <laughs> she, it was like, "Okay, I think the baby's coming," and then she was late, so we were all kind of like really excited to meet her, and then. It just went along and then 
she came out and we were like, oh, no, there's a baby here. It was it was so strange and surreal for me because I'd, you know, obviously dealt with the twins the last time, which was mind blowing. And uh, <laughs> she's been that way since she just fits right in all the boys fawn over her all the time. And and uh, they're super gentle. and Everyone's been really exciting. I mean, excited, but yeah. it's I don't know. It's It's hard because her personality is different. And I think we're all trying to get used to it but um she's stumped us on names so far we have a lot that we like but she hasn't like <laughs> she hasn't like smiled or like high-fived or anything when we when we say them, we say them to her all the time but she she seems to just kind of do that i yeah, know morgan so, i was really really I was, sweet i was like teasing you guys in the during the commercial because you know mm -hmm. when you give birth at home you don't have to name the baby right away. If you give birth in the hospital, you got to do that birth certificate or they don't let you leave. So now it's been seven weeks. And I, I actually think it's wonderful. And I love that you guys want to get to know her and see, like, who's she going to be? But, you know, the clock is ticking at some point. This was supposed to be the deadline today. Yeah, we, we, we've been feeling it. Um... But it is. I mean, as you know, right? Like, I honestly, I've known you, Savannah, for, I don't know, 20, 20 years, maybe more. And I I can't imagine you as anybody else. And I think I feel the same way about my name. I feel the same way about Morgan. So it really is an important thing that I feel like, um, yeah, almost she has to have input. Your daughter came up with a exceptional suggestion. Um, she did. My little daughter just said baby lavender, which I think yeah. is actually quite cute. Um, what are some cute. other front runners? So we've definitely narrowed it down. Uh, um, our three front runners are Skylar, Scarlett, and calling her Letty, or Olivia and calling her Liv. All kind of have a special meaning to it. So we may have to reach out to our social media following today <laughs> and ask for some assistance because <laughs> she has not really been giving us many answers. And it, it's been cool to be up here in, in Big Sky in Montana because the feel, the whole, is different than obviously all the other ones we've been in California. And we're sort of, I'm sort of hoping that something very Montana, very Big Sky comes to us mm. that, that fits her. But um, I'm a huge fan of Liv, uh, of Olivia. It's a little bit frustrating that it's like one of the most popular names this year <laughs> um, because most of the names of our children aren't aren't terribly popular, but... Um, we're not going to let that stand in the way, obviously. No, no. When she lets you know, she'll let you know. And she will, of course, be so precious and unique. And Morgan, I just, after all these years of us talking, I just know how much a little girl meant to you. I um, remember being in Emmy's room with you. And yeah. just if you can put into words what it's like to hold that little girl again and have that, that little girl magic in your life. It's going to make me cry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, complete. It's so full and so complete. You know, we have a we have a lot of boys, <laughs> um, <laughs> and and you you know, Emmy was such a great balance because she was such a powerhouse. And then when she passed, it was um, it was shocking because you really felt this energetic shift in the house. I mean, obviously we were all suffering and everything too, but there was just this this gap there for all the boys, and and now. They have this little girl to kind of like, it just makes them gentle. You'd be yeah. blown away. I mean, they, they always, you know, they, they, they know like, oh, you, we have a video from yesterday that maybe we'll send you um, that they were just wanting to hold her. No, is it my turn? Is it my turn? But then they hold her and they're, you can see that they're like trying to be as gentle as they can. Whereas with okay. each other, they're like, they just roughhouse <laughs> and like basically are relentless. So um, it really is. I mean, that's a great example right there. It's like, you know, she, the one holding her is like, oh boy, oh boy. And everyone else is like, you know, WWF. So, um, it, it, it feels, I think maybe I was more excited even than Morgan, although maybe not, it's, it's impossible to, to sort of surpass her excitement, but we both, um, I think maybe underestimated the importance of this for everyone else as well. Both, are all of our parents and our surrounding, you know, yeah. group of friends. Cause My dad. like everybody really, really was, um, impacted by both the loss of Emmy and the, the joining of this little one. Oh man. We needed her light. Didn't we? Bodie and Morgan, it's so good to catch up with you. Love seeing you so happy. Um, and you know, I guess keep us posted. 
Send me a text. Let me know. I love playing the baby naming game. <laughs> Lavender is available and quite unusual. I know. It actually really does sound nice. Um, <laughs> right. We will. We will absolutely let you know. Thank you. It's yeah. great to see you both. Today shows newest fan. This is the moment. Al Roker. Yeah. 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 This is your moment. Your moment. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Oh, in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with our series, Clean Sweep. And this morning, we're focusing on the heart of the house, the kitchen. Mm. Chef and TV host, Elena Be What noise was that? <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm sorry. Elena Besser is here uh, with some squeaky clean <laughs> solutions. Hi, Elena. How are you? Get Hello, everyone. I'm great. How are you? Doing great. Good. Good to see you. Wish you were here in person. But before we start scrubbing, what are some <laughs> basic things that we should all you know, restock or refresh this time of year? Yes, absolutely. So the number one thing is go through your pantry, go through your refrigerator, check the expiration dates. One of my favorite things I learned when working in a restaurant kitchen was using tape and a Sharpie to label the expiration date. Oh, Surprisingly, idea. things are going to expire faster than you may think, and you really want to refresh. The other thing is condensed pantry items. Make sure if you have two bags of flour lying around, you take the older one, pour it on top mm. of the newer ones. You can use that first. And of course, get some new cleaning supplies. You deserve it. If you're the one cleaning, get a fresh sponge, you know, get some new dish rags. You got it. <laughs> hey, speaking of cleaning supplies, uh, Elena, you say before you go out and buy a bunch of stuff, there's some, there's some great DIY cleaners you can make with what we've already got underneath the sink or in the pantry. Oh, absolutely, Al. Surprisingly, the four things that are great DIY cleaners you probably already have lying around in your house. Vinegar, lemon, rock salt, and baking soda. So let's talk about the garbage disposal. I love to take an ice cube tray, pour some vinegar in it, rock salt, some sliced lemons, freeze it, and then put it in my garbage disposal, run the water, and what it's going to do is it is going to clear out all of that grime and grease buildup so your garbage disposal works prime. Okay, this one is a little, I know that there's some controversy in the Melvin household around whether to rinse your dishes before there's no controversy. Them in the dishwasher. There, there actually is. There's no controversy there because is. I know that you're not supposed to. No. It wastes water, I'm right? going to clarify something real quick because you need to know this. He, okay. he means when not rinsing, he means actually leaving the chunks of the food oh, yeah, on. I, I just, no, you, oh, no, you do. No. Right. Well, so, what, what, okay, sorry, go ahead, Lindsay. No, 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 that's it. You have it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no, I love it. I think that here's the deal. <laughs> 
whatever your choice is, let's just make sure that your dishwasher is operating to the best of its ability. So here's how to do it. You're gonna take a little bit of baking soda, about a cup or so, put it in the bottom of your dishwasher, let that sit overnight. You wanna make sure the dishwasher is empty. Then the next day, you're going to run it on the hottest setting. Oh. Once it fills up with water after a couple of minutes, open it up and then pour in two cups of vinegar and finish running that cycle. Just like with the garbage disposal, the baking soda and the vinegar are going to unclog yeah. the Never bottom, make it operate as best as it possibly can. And then, you know what, Craig, if you're not in the mood to rinse off that dish, hopefully the dishwasher will get the job done because it is squeaky clean. What, okay, what, wait, 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 what wait, do you wait. do? Well, yeah, I, if there are chunks, I, get, I just give it a quick wipe uh, because eventually all those chunks get into the filter, the dishwasher starts to smell, or, and it's not running at, at uh, optimum Or capacity. you open it when it's clean and the chunks are still there in the bottom. But uh, so oh, anyway, we, we, we digress. Yeah, and, but I, <laughs> you did kind of dodge it. So who's right? <laughs> you know what, Lindsay, I appreciate your squeaky clean approach. And I got to give you a shout out for that. Um, but honestly, as long as your dishwasher is operating to the best of its ability, <laughs> it just de it depends on the fit. It depends on what food's on it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. I think it's still a, it's, it's a draw. Thank you. It's a draw. All it's right. a draw. It's a draw. <laughs> what about the cookware? Cookware may okay. also need a face lift. What, what tricks do you have for that? Oh, yeah, it absolutely does. So the deal with cleaning cookware, I actually picked this tip up from my father-in-law. He's a master cleaner. What he loves to do is he loves to take a little bit of baking soda on a sheet tray and then put um, some dish soap on it, scrub it into a paste, and then you're going to put a layer of paper towel over it and then soak that in vinegar. Depending on how intense the stains are, you want it to sit for about 15 minutes and honestly wow. up to overnight. And wow. then what you're going to do is you're going to take that paper towel and you're going to wipe away those stains. It's actually unbelievable how well this trick works. It has completely transformed my baking sheets. Wow. The wow. other crazy cool. thing is you're going to want it surprisingly for stains and scorched burns on pots. Mm. You're going to want to look to your laundry room. Hello, dryer sheet. Mm. So what I love to do is I actually will take a dryer sheet, yeah. put it into a pot with a little bit of dish soap and some warm water, and then you're going to let it sit for at least an hour. And what's going to happen is the dryer sheet is going to help pull away those ugly stains and you are going to be left with a beautiful pot that looks good as new that you'll be proud Look to display that. on your kitchen. I mean, you, these have been really... some mind-blowing tips. That's I mean, right. Unfortunately, Thanks, we've got guys. a bounce now, Elena. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, it's okay. Well, oh, there are more was, tips where that No, no, from. don't encourage that. <laughs> that. No, but actually, those would be great um, things to do with kids. Like, I could see our kids getting into the baking sheet thing you know nah, oh yeah kids know that. <laughs> elena thank you thank you elena come thank back thank you so much that was great, great. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital. You rarely see. This is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fits. days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Okay, what is your favorite Denzel Washington film? Oh, there's so many. I think these might surprise you because these are not the marquee ones that everyone has probably chosen. My favorite, and I remember seeing it in a movie theater, 
was Pelican Brief with Julia Roberts. How good was it? By the way, the John Grisham movies were crazy, uh, and that one in particular. I loved it. I love a sports movie. You do. I could cry for a sports movie. Remembering the Titans, oh. T.C. Williams. Yes! What? Hear ye, hear ye. We are in presence of greatness. Oscar winner Denzel Washington. Yeah, Denzel's getting rave reviews for his role as the ambitious and murderous Macbeth in the new film, The Tragedy of Macbeth. Take a look. Come to Dunsinane and I'll oppose. Being not a woman born, yet I will try the last. Leon Macduff. And damn be him that first cries old enough. Whoa. Wow. Okay, he joins us now alongside his incredibly talented co-stars, Corey Hawkins and Moses Ingram, who play Macduff and Lady Macduff. Hey, everyone. First of all, good morning. And you would normally start with the Oscar winner himself, but I instead want to start with Corey and Moses because, Moses, would you please tell us what it's like to work with the very talented Denzel Washington? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Denzel. It's a lot like that. It's like I am actually odd at it. I was like... God really made a power play. He was like, you know what? I'm going to give you a little some, some early. But I, I, I felt really blessed to be in his presence and to um, learn and receive of his generosity. Yeah. yeah, I know I have. Corey, the language in Shakespeare, again, is for some people look in, and are intimidated. So when mm -hmm. you got uh, your lines, obviously, um, how did you like how did you approach it? Um, well, first of all, good morning. Good morning, um, good morning to you. <laughs> thanks for having us. Um, for a lot of people, it can feel a little bit ostracizing. And, and I, for me, my, my sort of hook has always been music. And in the same way, you know, you listen to a piece of classical music and you might not catch every, you know, sonic change. Or you listen to a piece of hip hop and you might not catch every lyric, but you feel it. Um, that's, that's what Shakespeare is for me, you know, the poetry of it all. And so, you know, working on it with these actors, it was just like, it was a dream come true because it just starts to sing. Wow. Uh, Denzel, you've, you, your daughter worked on this show. Your son is, we were just talking about him in the commercial break. Uh, Alan Craig were saying, oh my God, I love Denzel's son. He's so great in every movie he's in. How do you take that role as like proud dad? It must feel pretty good. <laughs> Well, uh, we're just working actors, you know. My my Olivia, my daughter is uh, on her way. Why I forget which one's where. One is working in New Orleans. That's <laughs> Olivia. Uh, Katya is producing a movie in New Mexico, and John David is in Indonesia as we speak. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Or Bangkok, where he is, Thailand. Was was there ever a moment where you said to them? You know, acting can be tricky. Mm -hmm. Acting can be hard. Like, you gotta, or were you always like, go for your dreams? I had Olivia audition for me, show me her audition piece. And I told her, I said, you know, you, it's gonna be, number one, you're very good, mm. but it's gonna be tougher for you. It's gonna be tough for you. You know, just tried to be honest with them about the business. Corey, you know, this is a spoiler alert, but many of us studied Shakespeare, or, or at least tried. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you have the, the, I guess, the predicament of killing an, an icon, yeah. killing an Oscar winner. <laughs> so how did you prepare for this fight? Were you intimidated? Were you like, no, man, I, I, I can't be Denzel, you know? <laughs> what did you do? Yeah, see, right there, right there, that moment, right there, I was just thinking, Lord, please, please, don't, 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 don't hit him, don't hit him, you know? Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's just, it's crazy because they, they, uh, Joel, you know, he's an incredible director and visionary. Um, but, you know, the interesting thing is to put sort of obstacles in these actors' way. And and uh, and he put us in this tiny sort of parapet wow. with these huge, real broad swords. <laughs> and, um, and I think our first time doing it was on the day, actually. So, you know, we had rehearsed it separately and then came together to do it. And so I was just nervous. <laughs> I was just honestly, I was just nervous. Denzel, I feel like these young actors are looking up to you and I'm marveling at it. it I think cheated. I look, yeah. Cheated. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I 
feel like they're marveling at you and they're like, you know, in your shadow and trying to drink it all in. And when we spoke about the passing of Sidney Poitier, I felt like the roles were reversed. Mm. It was your turn to look up to someone and marvel and, and want to draw what you could draw from them. Um, uh, how, did, how did Sidney Poitier shape you? Well, he, he was just the, the, well, I won't even say he was the only example because I, I, I came up in the theater. So I was watching James Earl Jones at the same time. Mm. You know, Sidney was just in a, in a lane by himself and there was no one ever like him before him or since. Mm. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you guys all for being with us. Uh, this is big. Uh, it's called The Tragedy of Macbeth. I know y'all are doing a lot of press. Good luck. Yes, we wish you good luck with the movie. Congrats. We hear some Oscar buzz, yeah. which we're into. And we like buzz, yeah. all of it. All right, it's in select <laughs> theaters now. Premieres on Apple TV Plus this Friday. Thank you guys again. We appreciate Thank your time you this morning. for waking up so early. early. Uh, the other side. Uh, yeah, yeah that, 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 you know that, what? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, don't worry about it. We're going to be back for another great morning tomorrow. Bobby Flay will be here. He's cooking up some winter pasta that your whole family will love. Have a great day. Have a great hair day in every other way as well. We'll see you then. Bye bye. Today all day. Next on Saucy, Anthony Contrino is whipping up three dishes any true lover of Italian food should never live without. First up, he's making a classic creamy risotto. Then it's a super easy red sauce. And finally, an irresistibly crispy arancini. Oh, this rice is nice. I love risotto. It can be a bit time consuming to make, but it's actually quite easy and it always impresses. You can make risotto even tastier by deep frying it. I like to transform it into one of Sicily's most popular street foods, arancini. These OG rice bowls can be found pretty much everywhere in the region where my gram comes from, Palermo. Today, I'm making a classic creamy risotto. I'll use the leftovers to make my irresistible arancini that I love to serve over my no-fail everyday tomato sauce. For cocktail hour, it's another taste of Sicily my blood orange and white wine coolers that are sure to be the hit at your next summer party. Risotto is something that I think that everyone should learn how to make. And it's a technique that's quite simple to master. Now you can add any flavor that you'd like to it. Mushrooms are super traditional. I like to fold in some roasted butternut squash in the fall a fresh zesting of lemon for a delicious risotto al limone, or if you're feeling super bougie, you can shave some fresh black or white truffle on top. I like to keep it simple with this base to really let the flavors of white wine and Parmigiano Reggiano really shine through. The first thing you need to do is warm some stock. We're gonna need this a little later on in the process, but we want it to be ready. We're not looking for it to be simmering, just stay nice and warm. In the meantime, we can get the rest of our ingredients all set. I have two small shallots, but you can use one large instead. I go this way, and then the opposite direction. I'll just give my knife a quick run over just to make sure I didn't miss a piece or two, but Kind of nailed it. Set that aside. And a couple of cloves of garlic. Oh God, where did we get this garlic from? Peeled garlic from now on. We want to mince this up as well. I have the rest of my ingredients ready to go. So all that's left for me to do is just open up this bottle of white wine. A good dry white wine will do here. Like I've said in the past, something that you would drink. I'm using a nice Pinot Grigio. 
Make sure you go deep enough. There's nothing worse than breaking a cork. Ta-da. We'll just set that aside. Time to start cooking. I'm gonna put this pan over a medium heat. And to that, we will add some butter. Just one tablespoon for a little extra flavor. And then two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Give it a swirl, get that butter melted. And we can add our shallots. Looks like a lot, right? We're not looking to get any color on these shallots just to soften them. So we're literally just going to saute these for a couple of minutes, two to three. Time to add our garlic. Just wanna cook this garlic for a minute, just until it's fragrant. It's fragrant. Then our rice. One cup right into our pan. We want to toast this rice a little before we start adding the liquid to cook it. I'm using Cotnaroli rice. It is considered the king of Italian rices. It has a lot of starch in it, which is going to add to the creaminess, and it also cooks to a beautiful al dente. I think this guy is getting thirsty. Time to add a half a cup of wine. Looks about right. Now this is where the technique really kicks in. Over this medium, medium low heat, you want to keep stirring constantly until there's almost no liquid left. Like right now, before you start adding your warm broth, just a little bit at a time, about a ladleful at a time. And keep stirring and repeating the process. The reason we're adding warm stock is because we don't wanna halt the cooking of our rice. What makes risotto so creamy is, unlike pasta, where you strain the water, you're keeping everything, all those starches remain in the pan and it just keeps getting thicker and creamier and delicious. I'm way too passionate about risotto. <laughs> you see how all of my liquid is almost gone? I'm actually gonna lower this heat a little bit and add another ladleful of our stock. Just keep stirring, adding liquid as needed. And this is probably gonna take about 40, 45 minutes. And do note, you might not need all of the broth. It's better to have too much than too little. Look how creamy. It's like the parting of the seas. It takes a really long time for it to sort of come back together. I'm gonna get my last couple of ingredients on standby so it's ready to go. Okay, I think we can add our cheese. Half a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. The good stuff, the real stuff. And a quarter cup of my secret ingredient. Looks about right. Mascarpone cheese. As if this wasn't creamy enough, this is gonna put it over the top. You can see how creamy it is. It's almost like rice pudding. It's so creamy and decadent that you don't need that much of it. 
Then to finish it off, simply a drizzle of really good olive oil, just a couple of cracks of fresh black pepper, and of course, just a little bit more Parmigiano-Reggiano. Or a lot of it more. Buon appetito. Perfection. So good, so creamy, so delicious. Don't worry, these leftovers are not gonna go to waste. Never in my house. While it's still warm, I'm gonna transfer it to a sheet pan, spread it out nice and thin, let it come to room temperature, then we'll cover it and get it in the fridge to chill so that we can make the crispiest, the creamiest arancini you've ever had. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man of the beverage. All right, it just made it. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I always serve my arancini with a tomato sauce, and my family's been making this forever. Once a month, my parents would make a vat of it so that we always had it on hand, even packing it and freezing it up just to bring on vacation with us. God forbid we couldn't have sauce on a Sunday when we were in Florida. This sauce uses just a few staple ingredients, at least staple ingredients in my house, and comes together fairly quickly. First up, a sweet onion. It adds a little bit of sweetness and balances out the acidity of the tomatoes. Any sweet onion will do. I feel like my gram had this sauce going within minutes and it would just be simmering away and we would be in the kitchen trying to like sneak a dip of bread into it before we got yelled at. I'm gonna get this into my pot, get it out of my way. A nice healthy amount of garlic, five cloves, Thankfully, I have some left over from my risotto. And just thinly slice it. Obviously, I love garlic. And that's gonna go in at this point as well. Next up, extra virgin olive oil, about a third of a cup. Okay, let's put this over medium heat and start to saute that garlic and onion. This is definitely one of my favorite smells in the world. It means that somebody's cooking up something delicious. We want these onions to get nice, soft, translucent, but not take on any color. Just stir it pretty frequently 
just so that you can make sure they don't burn. Okay, these are looking perfect. Time to add our tomatoes. I have three 28 ounce cans of what were Pilati whole peel tomatoes that I pureed in a blender. And we're gonna throw that right into our pot. Gonna give this a stir and add our last few ingredients. We'll add a teaspoon and a half of salt. We'll go back later and make sure that doesn't need any more. Some fresh black pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of dried oregano and a pinch of red pepper flakes. If you like a spicier sauce, of course, add more. And then basil, decent bit of basil, about a quarter of a cup, which basically means this whole plant. And stems are fine. Kind of a sad looking plant. Right on in. The basil is just so aromatic and in my opinion, that's what makes a really good tomato sauce, is the basil flavor that's infused and permeated throughout this whole sauce. At this point, you wanna bring your sauce to a boil, then immediately reduce it to a simmer, stirring every 10 to 15 minutes until it's thick, all the flavors have come together, and it's ready to be served. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Is this an issue about guns, or is this an issue about social justice? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? The question is, are you now more open to packing the court? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I've never met a rice bowl that I don't like, but these are truly the best. It has everything going on. It's creamy, it's cheesy, and has a crispy exterior. They're not your typical traditional Sicilian rice balls or arancini. I like them to be on the smaller side. They're a little bit more elegant and perfect for a cocktail party. The first thing that I need to do is set up a dredging station. I don't always use flour, but this is one of those times when I do, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So about three quarters of a cup. Up next, a couple of eggs.
whisk those up real well. And finally, some panko. I've tried it both ways with standard breadcrumb and panko. This is the way to get the perfect crispy exterior. So about a cup and a half of that. Now that our dredging station is complete, on to the cheesy part. I have some fresh mozzarella. These are called ciliegine because they are the size of a ciliegine, cherry. Gonna need 12 for this recipe. And I'm just taking them out of their liquid and placing them on a paper towel. I wanna get these nice and dry so that we can wrap them in the risotto and it's not too slippery. I have my chilled risotto from earlier. It's nice, firm, and set. Feels a little weird, but it's exactly what we want it to be. We want it to be pliable so that we can shape it around our chiliagine. I'm taking a two tablespoon cookie scoop or measure, it's one ounce, and scraping up some of our risotto. Don't worry if you rip the parchment that's underneath, just make sure it doesn't wind up in your risotto mixture here. That is not the crunch we're looking for. Press it in, make sure you're getting the full two tablespoons. My stomach is growling. Oops. Last one. Okay, now for the fun part. We're going to wrap our chiliagine inside our risotto. Take one of your mozzarella balls and slowly shape the chilled risotto around to enclose it. Takes a little patience. Give it a little roll. Don't worry about making a perfect circle at this point. We will refine the shape later on after we dredge them. Cute. Now keep going. Take your time. It's really important that the cheese is in the center of your risotto so that when you fry them, it doesn't leak out. It's a little sticky, but that's what's helping to keep everything all together. I like my arancini on the small side because of the cheese to risotto ratio, but traditionally in Sicily, they're much larger, pear-shaped or orange-shaped, hence arancini, and are often filled with meat sauce with peas or prosciutto. Last one. Okay, that just about does it. At this point, wash your hands. You definitely wanna start with clean, dry hands for the dredging process. That's all there is to it. This size is the perfect size for a cocktail party. And then you don't have to feel so guilty when you eat three or four of them. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna give my hands a quick rinse, make a little room so that we can fry these bad boys up. I have a high-sided skillet filled with a generous amount of vegetable oil. You want there to be enough oil for the balls to be completely submerged. We're looking for a deep fry, not a shallow fry. Be careful. Cook them in batches of about four, just so that you can control the temperature of your oil. in about five minutes, and these are looking great. They're beautiful golden brown. And I know that that cheese inside is nice and gooey. Right onto our paper towel lined sheet pan, and immediately crush up some sea salt 
right on top so that it melts from that hot oil and just gives a little bit of extra seasoning to our arancini. Don't they look great? Beautiful. Our arancini are beautiful golden brown. They're nice and hot, just the way they need to be served. Let's get it plated up. I'm gonna go with a fairly simple presentation. Just a generous puddle of my everyday tomato sauce right in the center of a plate. Just like that. And then I think three is a very nice and generous portion for our arancini. A little extra cheese never hurt anyone. And last but not least, if you can find it, some micro basil. You can use regular basil. If you haven't figured out by now, I'm just over the top and bougie. Look how beautiful this looks. It's like the Italian flag on a plate. These arancini make the perfect appetizer for cocktail hour. And I have the perfect drink to mix up. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses by the man of the Richards. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. When blood oranges are in season, I can't wait to get my hands on them and use them for as many things as possible, like this blood orange and white wine cooler. This is not the stuff you were sneaking behind your parents back in high school. It's a little bougier than that. This blood orange is doing double duty. Half of it's gonna go into our cocktail to help flavor it, and the other half is gonna be a beautiful garnish at the end. So cut one half into wedges, and you can throw this into a cocktail mixer or a cocktail shaker, whatever you have. The other half I'll have again, and then just slice into half moons. Look how beautiful, deep, vibrant red that is. Super delicious, and it's also very nutritious. You're also going to need a half of a lime. Save the other half for something later. Cut that into a few wedges as well. Then a little rosemary, about two sprigs. Add that and muddle it up. Put some elbow strength into it. We wanna get all of those citrus juices out and the oils and fragrance of that rosemary, which I can smell already. Look at that beautiful fuchsia color. Okay, to that, one cup of our Pinot Grigio. Stir it up.
and then strain it into two glasses. One cocktail for now, and then one for right after. <laughs> Isn't that a gorgeous color? Then to amplify our blood orange flavor, some blood orange soda. Half a cup to each of your glasses. All that's missing are some garnishes. Throw a couple, a few, of those half moons into your glasses. Any way they fall. Some more rosemary. I have one last surprise. It is summer after all, so some edible flowers. You can find these in the produce section of your supermarket. Mm, that'll do. I don't know about you, but I think this is one gorgeous cocktail. It also happens to be extremely delicious. Mm. This is not your average wine cooler. Cheers. Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post and I Know Trends. Each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovu and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day, January Reset. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Happy New Year, everyone. You know the saying, New Year, New You. Well, it's true. For many Januaries, about resolutions and resets, and we have you covered. From the latest kicks making their mark all over social media, to must-have elevated everyday items that will add ease to your routine, whether your new goals are in the kitchen or the gym. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Let's start with beauty in the new year. So this bestseller from Kiehl's can help give your under eye a new lease in 2022. This is their creamy avocado eye treatment and all I can say is thank you. It may be small in size, but it sure packs a big hydrating punch. It is just so creamy and so rich and it's really perfect for this time of year when we're all combating drier skin and what I love about it is it has ingredients like avocado oil and beta carotene and even shea butter so there's a lot to love with this little Kiehl's eye treatment. Next, it's winter, and we know the feeling of dry hands. So if giving your nails a little TLC is part of your list of beauty resolutions, this cuticle oil is for you. So it's called the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, and it's actually made with cold-pressed oils and vitamins that is designed to blend and help give intense hydration to your cuticles and your nails, whether they're brittle or cracking or just super dry. But one of my favorite things about this cuticle oil is that you can also use it on your skin. And we're washing our hands all the time these days, so that's really helpful. Now, I am really excited about this next one, which I've personally tried. I mean, talk about an easy skin upgrade for the new year. This is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF 50, and this is a multitasking cult 
favorite wonder. And it's essentially a tinted moisturizer, or I guess you could call it even a moisturizing foundation. And I've always really been excited about the idea of a tinted moisturizer, but I've never really been able to find one that had the right amount of coverage. So when I tried this little CC Plus cream, I cannot tell you. It was like a eureka moment. It gave me almost instantaneous full coverage, but it felt really, really light. And it didn't look like I was wearing a ton of makeup. Also, it comes in 12 different shades. Okay, New Balance has once again taken the sneaker world by storm with one of the hottest, most talked about sneaker designs of the past two years. Sneaker fans, meet the New Balance 327 and it is seriously stylish. It actually launched on the runways in Paris. And what people are loving so much about this sneaker is its retro style. It's got a total 70s vibe. But what's so cool about it is it's made with high-tech materials. So you're getting that retro vibe and modern day comfort. It's angular, it's got great suede details. I love the sole. It's pretty much a platform and who doesn't like a little lift? And I think one of my favorite things about the 327 is all the great colors. Today we've got this bold orange with the forest green logo, this lavender with the metallic silver, and these purple, which really to me look like very Perry, which is the Pantone color of the year for 2022. Now, this next one is something that I hadn't seen before. It's an exciting new take on the puffer, and you're gonna wanna add this to your winter uniform this year. It's from Old Navy, and it's called the Packable Half Zip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket. First of all, it can do a really cool party trick, which I'll show you in a minute. This material is so warm, it's so light, it's not bulky, and I am so jazzed about the silhouette. It's oversized, which we're seeing so much of now. It's got the great drop shoulder and it's long. It really hits at a flattering place on the hip. Plus, it's got the high-low hem longer in the back. So this gives you a little bit more coverage. It looks great with leggings and it's really versatile. You can easily layer this. Now, let me show you the party trick that I mentioned. See this little pocket here? This entire jacket can fold down and fit into this little pocket. So it's packable. So you can throw it in your bag and go. It's great for travel. It'll fit in your suitcase. This is a really cool jacket. Now, another useful cold weather piece to invest in this new year, the puffer vest. Layer it, live in it, or just love it. You'll want to wear this versatile down vest from Land's End every chance you get. Talk about an affordable upgrade. I cannot get over the price on this one. And this little vest has style and substance. Let's talk about these bold colors. They are so on trend. I don't know which one I like best. Plus, these are actually really flattering and they have a couple of cool features. First of all, they're tailored. But secondly, they have this shape enhancing stitching. So see this stitching here? They kind of look like rectangles. That's called baffling. So if you notice on the front, it is a wider baffling. On the side, the stitching and the baffling is more narrow. So it gives this slimming optical illusion. So we talked about the style, now let's talk about the substance. These babies are made with genuine 600 fill power down. So that means weightless warmth. Yep, three cheers for these little puffer vests. They really do elevate the everyday. Last but not least, let's talk about one of my all time favorite solutions to looking cool while staying comfy, the sweat set. So let me tell you what I love about the set. So each of these are fantastic in their own right. We've got a crew neck top with a sort of oversized silhouette. It's cropped, it's flattering. We've got the new high-waisted jogger, but when you put these two together, you get an outfit. Suddenly, you've got instant 
elevation. It looks so stylish. It even almost looks like a jumpsuit. And what I love so much about this is we're still super comfy. We're still wearing sweats, but it kind of doesn't look like it. And these crew necks and joggers are so incredibly soft. They're made out of a French terry, and Gap has even used this great washing technique that makes these feel like they're vintage or well-loved. So when you put them on for the first time, they kind of feel like you're already wearing your favorite pair of sweats. So I'm really loving all the fun fashion forward colors and I can't wait to get in my sweat set <laughs> and enjoy 2022. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment, the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF, the New Balance 327 Sneakers, the Old Navy Packable Half Sip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket, the Lands In Puffer Vest, and the Gap Sweat Set. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, McCohen Logu is talking to trend expert Brittany Levine about her favorite items to stock up on for the new year. And later, Jen Fallick tackles more must-haves, whether your resolutions involve the kitchen or the gym. Don't go away. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C. The side of our nation's capital. You rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital you rarely see. This your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and that must have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. And today's show is all about kicking off the new year with a reset. Style and trend expert Brittany Levine is here to help us start 2022 right. Brittany, it's so good to see you. Did you have a good holiday? Yes, it's so good to see you too, Mako. It was wonderful, well-rested, and now I'm ready to dive into January and everything that that means, right? Yes, absolutely. Now, before we get into January reset, let's talk about the fact that you have this 
adorable baby boy. Did you enjoy the holidays? Did you do anything special? Yes, well, we were able to go down and get a little warm weather with him, and it was just great to spend the time with family and just have everyone around being healthy and safe, yeah. so that was really cool. Did you have a good holiday, too? I did. It was really nice to be with family, just like you. So because this is all about the January reset, Brittany, I'm just curious to know, do you have any specific traditions that you had at the top of the year? I do like to do some things in terms of resetting, you know, my meal prep. I like to start really doing clean eating and then also trying to get as organized as possible because I feel like when you are organized and things are all settled around you, you work harder, you do better. So that for me, it's like little things that help me get more done along the way. So let's start with the first item. This was great. Tell me all about them. Well, you know how when you are taking your vitamins and your supplements, they're in these really ugly packages and they hurt your hands. But what Moomi has done, this company, is created these color-coded packages here that are by day. So you have every day of the week in a specific color, you put your vitamins and supplements in there and you throw them in your bag and they're airtight, they're really perfect to keep everything nice and clean. And I just love these because it keeps them all together. It keeps them organized. And that way, you know exactly what you're supposed to be taking on each day. And this is all from Moomi Design. They have some great pill pouches in larger sizes and smaller ones too. Okay, let's move on to the next item. One of the things I love to do during the course of the year is get my nails done, but it's expensive to go to the salon. It's so time consuming and you've got this great solution. So tell me about the Manny Rescue Kit. Yes, okay, so this is from Gloss Lab. They created their proprietary kits here that really are aimed to just save every issue that you have with your nails. This is a Manny Rescue Kit. So if you have a chip, if you need a little bit extra polish, if you need to smooth something out, they have everything in that kit there for you that just comes in these cute little pouches. So again, something easy to just reset, throw in your bag and go all from Gloss Lab. How adorable is this? Like one of my goals for this year, Britt, is to travel. So I love how small these are. Okay, let's move on to the next item. This wash buff bar is so cute, but how does it work? So we're talking about the sponge gel infused buff bar yeah. right now. So this is amazing because you see that it comes in this gorgeous flower design, but this gives you a chance to exfoliate, cleanse, and moisturize your body in up to 14 washes. And we're talking about a body reset here because when you really exfoliate, exfoliate your skin, that's when you give your skin the chance to glow. So this is by Sun Gel, their body infused wash buffers. They're all available at Anthropology for $16. They're super easy to just hang on to your shower, cleanse your skin, and they come in all of these gorgeous scents, Mako. This is the Freesia Pear, absolutely stunning. It's gonna really create that spa-like experience in your bathroom. And I know not a lot of us are getting out to the spas right now, so if you wanna do that for you, reset at home and give yourself that pan experience, this is what you need. I love that, and it's like a two and one, so it's such a space saver, it's a time saver, I absolutely love that. Okay, so let's move on to electronics. Everyone can relate to this, you got wires all over the place. I love that this next item can keep you organized. Exactly, I like to keep everything organized. So in order to reset your life in terms of your electronics and all those different cords, this is a case from Ganamoto. You can get it on Amazon, $45.99, and they come in different sizes. All you do is just slip all of your wires in here, basically organize them by area. You can also put your chargers in there as well. So this is something that you can have everything in one place. And then when you are going to look for something, because I'm always losing the cord for the specific item, you know where it is, right? It's in that specific yeah. place, it's in that compartment, and then you just zip it up, and you're uh -huh. good to go. So How perfect is that? This is going to be a lifesaver for you and your family if you get one of these. Speaking of lifesavers, all about January Reset, we're trying to save you money. And when it comes to groceries, I want to keep my groceries fresher and keep them nice and organized. And I am so obsessed with these meal prep containers. These colors are so cute. Aren't they amazing? So oh. these are the Ello Dura Glass containers. They come by color coding and they're glass. So when your food is stored in glass, it really preserves the food longer. It keeps everything airtight. It's also BPA free. So you just put your food in there for the week, 
prep it, you're ready to go. Load these in your refrigerator. If you want to take these, I'm going to go with you too. You have this silicone coating that surrounds the glass to keep everything safe. Stack them up and you've got your meal prepped for the week. I mean, it's not, it's easier than that, right? That is so clever. If you're starting to go back into the office and you need uh, organizers, meal prep containers, these are so classy. Well, Brent, I feel like I'm ready for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for joining us on our January Reset. I hope you have a great, sparkling 2022. You as well. Thanks so much, Mako. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The pill pouches, the Gloss Lab Manny Rescue, the Spawn Gel Box Flower Body Wash and Fuse Buffers, the electronics case, and the glass food storage meal prep containers. Up next, Jen Fowler continues with the January reset. Whether your reset goals are in the kitchen or in the gym, don't go away. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made two. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick. Welcome back to Shop All Day, where we're talking all about that January reset. We have must-have products, whether your New Year goals are drinking more water, spending more time in the kitchen, or making more me time. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Upping your daily water intake can be key to reaching your health and fitness goals, which is why so many of us are making the resolution to drink more water in 2022. And this water bottle could help make all the difference. Check this out. So this is a water bottle that has a time marker, but Unlike many similar products, this water bottle is actually really sleek looking. You can bring this with you out and about all day long. You could bring it to a work meeting. It fits in the cup holder of your car. It's just like a fashionable, great accessory item that happens to also help you achieve your hydration goals. All you gotta do is stick to the markers, refill at lunchtime, and by the end of the day, you will have downed half a gallon of H2O no problem. There's different colors. I love the metallic tops too. Easy to clean. These are genius. 
Another great way to stay on point with your health, wellness, and fitness goals is to get into the smoothie lifestyle. I am a huge fan of smoothies because for me, they're so delicious, they're really filling, and with this product, they are so easy to make. This is the Blend Jet, and all you gotta do with this, charge it up, it's USB rechargeable, so every full charge is gonna give you 15 smoothies that you can blend up anywhere, anytime, on demand. You throw this in your bag, and you literally put in whatever you want to mix in your smoothie. I love to put in some berries, a little milk, maybe a little protein powder if you're in the mood. And you don't even need a cup because you can drink right from the top of the jar. It's small, but this is a mighty. There's a patented turbojet technology in here that blends some of the toughest foods in 20 seconds flat, according to the brand. Comes in a ton of fun colors too. I love the little turquoise here, the blue. This is such a great gift for a fitness fanatic. Do you have anyone that you wanna gift to this month? But for yourself, this is a must. Now, if getting to the gym is part of your 2022 plan, we have an elevated essential that you need to own. Check out this duffel exercise bag. It can really feel overwhelming to pack up for the gym when you have a full day ahead of you. I love that this has compartments for everything, so it's so much easier to pack efficiently. You've got the spot for your water bottle, there's a spot for your sneakers. You know, there actually is a separate shoe compartment. You can also attach your yoga mat up here. And I love that there's a waterproof compartment in here, so after your workout, you can store your workout where in there until you've got a chance to throw it in the laundry. We cannot ignore the fact that this bag is cute. I love the quilting, I love the gold zipper detail. It's got a crossbody strap so you can tote it around hands-free, all the options. Now that we have your fitness hacks handled, let's talk about meal prep. If that was one of your resolutions, we're gonna start with this Herb Saver Pod. I am madly in love with this product. I own three and they are always in my fridge at all times. This preserves your herbs and it saves valuable space in your fridge. All you do is you rinse and dry your favorite fresh herbs, it can be basil, mint, oregano, dill, and you place them right inside the pod. Then there's this little spigot on the back. You just add water to the bottom and these herbs will be good to go for up to three weeks. In addition to herbs, I put asparagus and scallions in these. And you save so much money too because there's less waste. Now that you have a fridge stocked with delicious fresh herbs, enter the herb shears. Check these out. I absolutely love these. The fact that I can literally chop fresh herbs right into a salad or right on top of chicken is huge. You can just snip and savor the most delicious meals. Plus, these are so easy to clean. They come with a little comb that you can basically brush through to get any little bits and pieces out, give it a quick rinse under the faucet, and then throw them right in the dishwasher. It couldn't be easier. Now, planning ahead is the key to changing your life with meal prep, but you need to be ready to store all the staples that you make. And bulky containers can take up way more space than we have to spare, right? Enter these collapsible containers, ready? These are stackable and collapsible silicone containers. They're great to store all kinds of food. You can put your leftovers in here, you can put your chopped up prepped veggies. These have a snap on lid. Snap it on, you know when it's nice and secure. And when not in use, you can collapse them down to one third of their original size, right? So this is what they collapse down, so easy to store. Besides saving space at home, if you're taking a snack to go, once you're done, flatten them out and You've got more room for everything else that you need to bring around with you every day. This next product is another one that we swear by in my house. These reusable lidded bowls have a sturdy lid that has a really secure wrap. So it's easy for all ages from my six-year-old all the way up to open and then when they're done to reseal. All you gotta do, put the top right on and easy to clip it right around it's leak proof and it's sleek looking. So this is sophisticated enough for me to take with me if I'm going to like a work meeting. This looks like a beautiful high-end bowl, but totally portable. Now, to round out the resolution trifecta, the next thing everyone's thinking about right now is getting a better night of sleep. So first up is a white noise machine. 
I love this white noise machine because besides drowning out environmental noise, white noise can become part of that bedtime ritual that really helps to cue your brain and your body that it's time to wind down. This machine right here, so little, right? It has 20 sounds to choose from, including ocean, rain, bonfire noises, if traditional white noise isn't your thing. And it has a little timer right here, so if you want it to auto shut off after an hour, you can. Or if you prefer that white noise to last all night long, it'll work that way too. Another thing that's important to note about this, again, is the portability. I find that when I'm on a work trip or if I'm away with my family, having those little reminders of my nighttime routine on a daily basis really helps me to fall asleep. And now that we've set the ambiance with the white noise, the sleep eye mask is the last thing you need to complete the moment. And this one is a gem. Light is super disruptive when you're trying to sleep, both falling asleep and staying asleep. And while you cannot always control the environment around you, with this sleep mask, you can control how it affects your rest. I love the design. Some sleep masks can feel claustrophobic. They really press down on your eyelids but not this one. With this, you've got the little openings here so your eyes can breathe and blink. It's memory foam as well, so it means you're gonna get a custom comfy fit every time. And beautiful colors too, it just feels great. It works wonders, it's a no-brainer. Now let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the water bottle with time marker, the blend jet, the Exercise Duffel Bag, the Herb Saver Pod, the Herb Shears, the Collapsible Containers, the Reusable Lid and Bowl, the White Noise Machine, and the Sleep Eye Mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap on all your better basics and for our show, it's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Thanks for doing this, sir. Great to see you. Great to see you. I want to tell you right out of the box, this is the highest elevation we've ever done one of these interviews. 101 stories. I've never been this high up in my life. <laughs> this is crazy. It's kind of crazy, isn't yeah, it? It's beautiful, though. We felt like it was perfect for you given where you are right now, on top of the game with this year you've had between oh. playing the Super Bowl and a Grammy and an Oscar. How does it feel to be in the middle of this moment right now? I don't know how to describe it. It kind of feels like this view. You know, it's like all you can do is just sit and, and enjoy it and, and be thankful for it. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like taking every moment, trying to seize every moment. And I know this is just the beginning, which is really like scary, but amazing in a way. So um, I'm just taking it all in. And I'm, I, I know that this is a very special, special situation. You know, I know that this doesn't happen all the time. So I'm, I'm just so grateful. So we're just a couple of days away from your 24th birthday. Yes. It's kind of crazy and I know you can't stop and let it wash over you completely because you're moving around doing so much but have you processed at all what these few months have been like and how early in your career these things have started to happen for you i guess so i i have been thinking about it like wow and of course you have those doubts like do i deserve this you know do, do i deserve to be here and and i have to remember you know i've been doing music for my pretty much my whole life you know i've worked for so many years and then i have to give myself more credit you know i have to say you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing you're exactly where you're supposed to be you've worked for it and you should be proud of yourself so i've just been working on being proud of myself because of course you know when when you create this art and you do, do these things you're you know the hardest on yourself so i'm always hard on myself but now i've really been taking the moment to like you know pat myself on the back <laughs> it feels like people in the music industry and real fans of music have known you for several years but when you stood up there during the super bowl and did america the beautiful with that guitar and you were by yourself and singing and playing i think a huge audience of football fans or you know a part of the country that maybe didn't even know who you were stopped and said who is that how special was that performance for you I, it was very special and the timing I think couldn't have been more perfect because you see a young black woman, black Filipino woman up there on the stage, you know, playing electric guitar and I don't think you see that very often, you know, especially on a stage like that. So I just felt so like excited and nervous at the same time because it is, you know, one of the biggest stages ever. 
Um, but it was so much fun. My mom was there with me, and like I know she was super proud. So, you know, we'll be back for, for a halftime show one of these days. <laughs> you will. I, <laughs> I bet you will. I, I always think about when I see somebody singing the national anthem or just oh, being alone on a stage that big. Mm -hmm. Do the nerves come in different than other performances? Do you think, oh, there are 100 million people watching this? Oh, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> definitely, definitely. But it, it takes about, like, two words or a line, and then I'm, I'm in it. I'm, like, I'm in the performance, and I'm nowhere else. You click into that zone. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you corrected me when you were right. I almost caught myself when I said, so early in your career. Your career started when you were a toddler, <laughs> basically sitting at the piano, and you were on the Today Show when you were 10 years old, yeah, <laughs> um, 2007, sitting in a piano in a little fur vest you had on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and your parents were in the studio and Hoda was interviewing you and then you played Alicia Keys. Yeah. And now tomorrow, you're getting ready to go stand on that city concert stage with a big crowd mm -hmm. on a Friday afternoon. That's a kind of a crazy full circle moment. It is. It, and I, there's been tons of those full circle moments. And I think that's what really shows me that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Um, but you know, it, like it is early in my career. It's fair to say that, you know, I'm only 23 years old. So um, I still got a, a whole lot of years of, of doing this thing, you know, to, you know, to, to be in it and, and, you know, do my thing. It's like crazy to think that I'm only 23 and so much has happened, but and it is early. And so back in your mind, I was reading is technically your debut album. I mean, what does I wouldn't that mean say, exactly because I, we've been listening to you for years. I don't. I wouldn't call it debut album. Okay. I would call it my first official album, okay. just because I've, I've released EPs before. Right. You know, it, it's only been EPs and then combined into one project. But this is my first official, you know, full body of work, like album. And so, what went into this? What was in the back of your mind? You were just saying, I've been listening to these songs on my phone for a couple of years yeah. now, and now they're out in the world. What's in the back of your mind? Um, so much, so much is in the back of my mind. I think this album is is pieces of Volume One and what got me here in the first place, you know. And it's uh, ele elevated, and it's it's the growth. It's it's more musical. There's elements of live drums and and you know live keys and and band feels, but there's also you know pieces of like more trap drums and new R&B sounds. And I, I think all of that is in this project. It's not just one specific period of time. It's everything up until this point. You've said you're, when you write a song, it's sort of a, another way of writing a diary almost, that Absolutely. you put your thoughts down. So what specifically has been on your mind for the last couple of years? What was coming out of your diary? What was coming out of my diary? It's all in the music. I'm not going to tell you because I have everything <laughs> revealed in the music. Okay, I've been listening to it, so I know, but for people who are going to go out and listen to it. How, when you decide to put out um, something this personal in an album like this, what is the process? I mean, I was, you said it's been a couple of years, but like you start with the blank page and what do you want to say when you're putting out your, your album? You know, it, it's moment by moment. It's what do I feel today or what did I feel yesterday, you know, that I need to get out um, on this, this paper, you know, in this song. Um, and, and when I do that, you don't realize you're working towards a body of work. You know, at least I don't. I don't realize that, oh, this is actually a story because it's my life. It's just a collection of songs that represent different feelings and different moods. I'm super moody, so there's so many different <laughs> moods, you know, that go into this project. And um, yeah, it's like I went into the studio thinking I'm just going to make great music. I'm going to make a good song. It doesn't matter what's in it. I don't care if it's a, a, a flute or if it's a, a trap hi-hat. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a great, it's a great song, it's a great song. And to me, some of the best songs sound great, you know, when they're stripped down. So if they sound good like that, then they're going to sound good any kind of way. Um, and that's kind of what I start with. And with this project, I, I thought it's really time to make a full body of work. It's time to work towards. I had been touring from 2017 to 2019, pretty much. You know, I just was touring. So I never had time to really buckle down and like just focus in the studio on a full, full body of work. And this was, this was that. One of the things I love about you is you can't put your music into a box. People want to say, what kind of music? I mean, it's R&B, yes, but it's a little bit of older blues, it's Jimi Hendrix on the guitar. So when you were growing up, I love your list of influences because I don't <laughs> think most people would expect it from a kid who grew up in the 2000s talking about names like B.B. King and Hendrix and, and yeah. Prince to go along with Mariah and Whitney and mm -hmm. all the people who influenced you. So when you were growing up in your house, I mentioned you were a toddler playing the piano on your dad's lap. Yep. How did this music thing start for you? 
Um, it was just, it, it seemed like it was there. It was like, you know, my dad's band was playing in the living room when my mom was pregnant. So I was probably, you know, in the womb, <laughs> like, I'm gonna do this, you know, like probably. Um, and, and when I was growing up, it was like, there was all kinds of music around me, you know. Um, I was blessed to grow up in an extended family home where it was my grandparents that grew up in the Philippines, you know, they were in the house with us. So they were listening to Johnny Mathis and Barry Manilow and, and uh, Celine Dion. And then my mom was listening to her favorite, you know, um, R&B artists like, you know, Jodeci and, and people like that. And, and then my dad was listening to Funk and James Brown and Hendrix, as well as Eric Clapton and as well as Ozzy Osbourne and ACDC because he was just such a guitar you know, guy, and then my uncle was playing, you know, Aaliyah and Joe and, you know, uh, Usher and, and people like that. So I was exposed to so many different types of music and I loved it all. I loved it all because I just heard all the details, you know, of, of everything and, and I took it all in and was like, maybe I can make this, you know, and I didn't think I thought about that really, but I just did. You know, I, I just did, and, and music was just something I loved. There was, it wasn't about the genre or the style, it was just, this is music. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It seems to me you've always been comfortable performing. Maybe that's not true, but just watching you in that interview when you're 10 years old, yeah. the poise you had even during the interview, so you got to sit and talk to these two strangers for a while <laughs> before you play this song by someone you look up to, Alicia Keys on national television. Where do you get your stage presence? Is that from your dad too? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it is. Maybe it is. You know, my dad, he would go on stage and it would be, you know, two people in the audience and he's going crazy, you know, no matter who's in the audience or it's a hundred people at a, at a club or a festival and he's going crazy. And, you know, they were they were a cover band. So they would play songs like, you know, James Brown, get on up. And then they would play Sweet Home Alabama. Like it was like there was no he just had so much fun. And I think maybe watching him have so much fun on stage encouraged me too. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Was there ever a chance you weren't going to be a musician? I know you flirted with the idea of being a dentist for I a little did. while. When I was a kid, it was it was going to be something like probably in the medical field. You know, when you when you have an Asian mother, like the pressure of you know of the Asian family home, sometimes it's like you know success is like you got to become a doctor or like a right. nurse. You right. know, so I think that that was that was definitely going to be in the plans, and then you know I, that didn't work out. So. I just became a musician instead. So in your heart, you knew you were going to be a musician. <laughs> I think so. I think I decided, um, you know, it was a given. But when I graduated high school, I, I really decided I'm going to do this thing 100%. I'm going to be fully invested in this. And yeah. Have there ever been, once you decided, have there been bumps along the way where you said, man, this is a tough business. I don't know how to break through. I don't know if this is going to work out. And obviously, you've overcome all that if you had it. But have you been frustrated at certain points in oh, your rise? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've been blessed with an amazing team, MBK Entertainment, who believe in artist development. And they saw me when I was on the Today Show when I was 10 years old. And, and everybody saw something in me that I don't even think I saw in myself. Mm. But I shortly after that, I got signed to 
um, RCA Records to MBK RCA, and I was 14. And you know, of course, people around you are like, "Oh, you're gonna be a huge star!" Like right away, they think that's how it works. And I think I knew that's not how it works, you know, just because I had been exposed so young um, and watching other artists. But um, of course, throughout those years, I'm working on my craft and I'm being patient, but I'm watching so many other artists, you know, become successful. Uh, they were manage, managing um, Elle Varner and Kay Michelle and Brandy and Alicia Keys and um, Justine Skye and all these different artists and I watched them and I was on the side of the stage at their shows. I was the ones, I was the one backstage cheering them on, you know, like, oh, that's gonna be me one day. But of course you get frustrated, like, when is it gonna be my turn? And of course I was working on my craft and people would say things like, oh, she's gonna get shelved, you know, she's mm -hmm. never gonna make it or she's never gonna put music out. And I think I just quieted all those voices and I knew, you know, what's for me is for me and, and it's gonna happen when it's supposed to and finally, as soon as I graduated high school, um, the following year in 2016, we all took a chance and um, decided it's time to release volume one and finally really, you know, be, be the artist that I'm, I'm meant to be. And the rest is history. I feel like probably for a 14 year old coming into the music industry, they might have wanted to push you in a certain direction, certain Absolutely. people because it, I, it's gotta be hard for them to even conceive of a 14 year old who wants to play the guitar like Jimi Hendrix and have this old school soulful sound, like how do I market that, how do I sell it? Were, was there an effort by some people to kind of nudge you in a direction other than you found yourself? I mean, everybody has their opinions. Everybody has their thoughts and feelings on the artist I should be. Oh, you should do songs like this. You should do songs like this. And I've tried them all. I've done everything because I love all types of music and I'm not afraid to, you know, challenge myself. But when it was 2016 um, and I was, or 2015 really, and I was finally finding who I wanted to be as an artist, I realized I needed to make what was most authentic to me that fit into the world of what was going on in music at the same time. You know, you never compromise yourself, but you learn. And I had to be a student of the game, a student of what was happening in music. And so I did that and I listened to a lot of artists like Drake and Janae Aiko and Bryson Tiller at the time and um, so many different artists. Um, and I really admired that sound and I thought this might be the, the, the lane, this might be the sound that I would really like to make an introduction, you know, into the world of, uh, with, and, and that, was, that was how Volume 1 came to be. So tell me about the name Her, um, because that's part of your evolution as well, why you decided to go with that and what the significance is to you. Um, you know, with, with Her, it was like a time in my life, of course, when you're in high school and, you know, you're changing and you're going through all these things and boys and, <laughs> you know, all these things that are part of life, right? And I always watch, like, the women that I, I grew up around and um, I always said, you know, I'm not gonna be like them. I'm not gonna, you know, fall for the wrong guy. Like it was like a hopeless romantic way to think. Or I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be that vulnerable. And you know, I'm gonna be like this type of woman and whatever that means. You know, when I was a teenager trying to be a perfectionist. And then I realized that it's inevitable to fall for the wrong guy, or you know, to make mistakes, or you know, to to have feelings that that are, are you know, valid because. It's part of life, you know. It's it's inevitable to to go through changes as a woman and to be imperfect, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I decided, you know, I, I really would like this music to reflect that period of time and, and all of those things. Um, and that's that's why I decided to to go by the name Her. And it was also a way to make people focus on the music because sometimes we listen with our eyes and not our ears, you know, and, and I really wanted the music to be the center of attention, not, you know, the, the, my, my look or how old I am or, you know, where I'm from and all of those things, what I'm wearing, who I'm dating. I, I just didn't think any of those things matter. I always wanted to get back to the art and to the music. And um, that's why I decided to just have a silhouette as the cover and for it to be called her. And do you think that has worked for you in terms of people sort of just being like, man, she can play, she can sing, and that's all I need to know about her? I think so. And I mean, I definitely think people, you know, were like, wow, the music, you yeah. know, it's all about the music. And 
now I feel there's an organic, you know, kind of reveal of, of me and who I am as a person and, you know, as an artist and, and you know, just a little bit more of the details, a little bit more of my face, you know, here and there. But, um, yeah, the music was the forefront, and I'm, I'm happy that that's, that's the driving force here. Well, I was going to ask you about that. The new cover, we finally get to see a little of your face on a the little cover. Bit, a little bit of my face. And that's by design. Here's a little peek. Yeah, it is. You know, they say eyes are the window to the soul. My music is the window to my soul. No, but here's a little here's a little peek into myself. So what do you think now that you give us a little peek people should know about you that they don't know about you through all these years of listening to your music as you open yourself up mm. a little bit? That's a really good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that I think the major thing is like don't take yourself too seriously all the time. You really have to enjoy this. I, I find myself um, like forgetting to just be in the moment, you know, and I'm working on that, but I think people need to know that, you know, I don't take myself too seriously. I take my art and my expression seriously, but I don't take myself too seriously. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I mentioned your Grammy this year, which you won for I Can't Breathe. Yeah. Um, I was talking last week, we had Trevor Noah on the show, and we were talking about doing comedy in this year that didn't feel very funny yeah. and how you address everything that's happening in the country. So the song obviously addresses what's been happening in our country, not just for the last year, but for generations. Mm -hmm. What was it like to make music in this last year as you would watch the news or see something happening in the streets and want to have something to say about it? Yeah, it was um, it was a tough year. I actually didn't create a lot in the first half of the year because it was just so like I had my whole year plan. I was going to do a bunch of shows and it all just came to a stop. And that's very scary. Like, OK, we have no idea what's going on. So, um, you know, when the summer happened, and the George Floyd protests were happening, of course we were all affected by it, but it was just like, like this new awareness and like this, you could not escape it. You couldn't say, oh, you know, I'll read about that article later or I'll, you know, you could not avoid it. So seeing that, um, I ended up just calling um, Tierra Thomas, who I write with all, all the time, yeah. but we're, we're friends, you know, that's like my big sister. Um, and we were just catching up. We started talking about, like, isn't this crazy? And, and she started talking about her pain, I started talking about my pain, and just, you know, just the fear that we both had. And suddenly we ended up writing a song. My guitar stays next to my, uh, my bed uh, in my mom's house, and I was at my mom's house during quarantine, and I picked up the guitar, and we, we just started asking, you know, those questions, like, to ourselves, like, how do we cope when we don't love each other? What is a gun to a man that surrenders? All these things that we really felt, and um, it kind of just happened organically, 
and um, I ended up recording it in my, my room. You know, I was wow. like engineering myself and the dogs were barking. I had to <laughs> wait for a second and then continue recording. And, um, you know, and I just felt like, wow, okay, this is something that I want to put out there because it reflected how we felt. So the song of the year was recorded in a bedroom in your mom's house. Yes, <laughs> it was. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That had to be incredibly gratifying, though, to hear your name called for not just for that song, but for what it was speaking about, oh to be the song of the year at the Grammys. You have no idea. So I, I didn't expect it to win. You know, I, I, I really didn't. I was like, oh, man, these are all amazing and you know, incredible artists. I just wrote the song in, in my room, you know? <laughs> I didn't... That's cool enough, and then you win an Oscar. Yeah, oh <laughs> on my top gosh. of it, I mean, it's crazy. What was that experience? Like? I mean, the next day after winning Song of the Year, you know, they were like, the Oscar nominations are, are gonna come out, and I was like, okay, well, it, it's okay if I don't get nominated. I got Song of the Year, like it's all good. We got the nomination, and I'm like talking it down because I'm like, this is a huge deal, but I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get my hopes up for anything. And we go, and it's super chill, and my mom's there, and she's all like happy, just happy to be there. We're meeting Angela Bassett, and then you know, Zadea calls my name, yep. and you know, I, I everything just stopped for a second. Everything just stopped. I was like, did this really just happen? Like, did I just win an Oscar? Am I an Oscar winner? <laughs> And of course, I thought about you know Prince winning his Oscar. I thought about the, just all of these things, um, the movie and, and the importance of that film that I was even winning for. I just felt like bigger than me. Like, oh my gosh, I'm being recognized for this specific moment, um, this 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 movie based on an important moment in Black history, which was even more rewarding, you know, to be winning an Oscar for that. So there were all of these things going through my head, and I just couldn't even like. <laughs> Couldn't even fathom, you know, what was going on. I'm sure. So in the space of a couple of weeks, you got the G and the O and the EGOT. We just got to get to the outside now. Got to get to the, the E right? and the T. There's some talk that you might be doing some work on Broadway, potentially, that you want to get into acting. Absolutely. Is that in your future? Absolutely. Um, I had a, a little part in the, the movie Yesterday with Jennifer Garner. Yeah. And um, I got to play myself, but I had some lines. And, you know, they were all like, wow, you're, you know, you're such a natural. And I've actually loved acting for so many years, um, but music has been the main focus. So I'll definitely be on the big screen soon. I'll, I'll make some time for it. No reason you can't do both, right? Exactly. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Today Show's newest fan. This is the little Al Roker. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I'm curious. Um, everyone seems to have a moment in their career where they feel like everything changed. Mm. Do you have one? Some people point to Rihanna posting the video with your song on in the background. That was a big moment. Was it? Yeah, that was definitely a big moment. It was like, oh my gosh, like people really listen to my music. But I, I think it's it's not so much, you know, social media really, it is, but it, it's more so when I'm really with the people. You know, when, I'm, when I was on stage opening up for Bryson Tiller in 2017 in Atlanta, this was my first show you know, well, not my very first show, but my first show on a tour um, after I released my project. Um, everybody was singing the lyrics. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, these people know the lyrics to my songs? Like, we're all freaking out. Like, did you hear them? You know, like they were really singing along and I knew at that point, you know, um, that I was really getting a, a, a core following, like a, a group of people that, that really love my music. And then fast forward, I'm doing a festival in Las Vegas and there's people with cowboy hats in the audience <laughs> singing all the lyrics to my songs. And I'm like, okay, this is crazy. You know, it's so much more than I thought. But it just shows you, you know, music brings people together. And I, I didn't think I would have the, the ability to do that. But um, I, I, I see it and I, thought, I feel it. I thought the same thing watching you at the CMTs with yeah. Stapleton. That, that's a country audience and they were singing yeah. along and they're, they, you've got fans across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And you've been smart. You've come up in this generation where you, know, you don't have to focus on the radio as much, mm -hmm. right? You can do streaming and social media. Um, does that make it easier for an artist to be able to just put your stuff out directly in some ways? Definitely. When you use social media as a tool, I think it definitely makes it easier. Like, I kind of um, built this thing. We, we built this, like, kind of like a rapper, you know, where you put out a mixtape yeah. and you just grind. And it was a lot of, you know, posting. And it was really word of mouth, you know, like, and then really getting on the road and just touring. I toured for, like, two or three years, you know, just you know, just on the road and, and doing my thing. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it makes it easier and it's hard, there's so much out there and you could get discouraged, but when you are totally your authentic self and you put yourself out there, anything is possible, you know? And there's somebody out there that is looking for somebody like you to look up to, mm. you know? So you gotta tell yourself that. That's a great message because I think a lot of people are trying to be something they think will be popular yeah. and people will make people like them. Yeah, no. And you get lost doing that, you? you? get lost and, and then you regret it because you're like, why didn't I just stick to, to my guns? Why didn't I just be who I am? You know, and that's that's part of life. We all have, you know, a hard time being who we, we really are and being afraid of, of, you know, standing out too much. But when you realize standing out is your superpower and that you're actually helping other people by standing out, you know, helping them be comfortable in their own skin by you being comfortable in your own skin, then, then you have impact. I know you've got sound check in a few hours, basically, because you have to get <laughs> up much. so early for the Today Show, so we'll let you go. But how much fun is it going to be, not just tomorrow morning, but this summer and into the fall to get back on a stage and just hear those audience sing your songs back to you again. I'm so excited. You have no idea. I'm like, let's, let's, all right, let's, let's get to it. Let's, let's get on the stage. No, I'm, I'm really, really excited. Um, it's been a long time and um, we've, we've lost a lot in the past year. And of course I've, I've been blessed to, to still be able to do what I'm, I do, but um, there's nothing like being in front of a real audience and having that connection. So I can't wait. Well, I'm so happy for your success. It's great to see somebody true and real and so talented succeeding the way you are. Thank so, you so much. Congrats, and we'll see you on TV at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. What's happening, everybody? It is great to see you. Welcome to this Thursday edition of Popstar Plus. On today's show, we are checking in with two of the stars of the show, Cheer, the popular cheerleading docuseries, back for another season. Plus, a fun from the vault today. We've got a clip with McDreamy himself, Patrick Dempsey. But first, here's what's going on in the world of entertainment. A lot to get to you today. It's award show season. We'll start with the SAG Award nominations for the 28th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. They were announced on Wednesday and leading the pack for movies this year with three nominations each. Ridley Scott's House of Gucci that stars Lady Gaga, Adam Driver, and Al Pacino, Jared Leto as well, and Netflix's Western Power of the Dog with Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst, and Jesse Plemons. And after big wins at last weekend's Golden Globes for top acting in a drama, Will Smith and Nicole Kidman are again nominated for their work in the biopics King Richard and being the Ricardos over in the world of TV. HBO's hit drama Succession continues its domination this award season, this time with five noms, including three for best actor in the drama, going to all three stars in that show, Brian Cox, Kieran Culkin, and Jeremy Strong, and tied with them for the top number of nods, one of our favorites around here, Uncle Al, Ted Lasso. Oh, yes. That cast earning five nominations as well. The SAG Awards are set to take place with an in-person ceremony on February. 27th. Next up, Rihanna, the Grammy winner, is part of a very select group of artists in YouTube's Billion Views Club. This week, 
Riri crossed the threshold of 1 billion streams on a music video once again, this time for the 2013 hit Stay. Ooh. That uh, chart topped that, uh, with another vocalist on that track, Mickey Echo. Billboard reporting that it'll be Rihanna's eighth video Jeez. in that YouTube milestone Crazy. category of a billion views. Stay, if you're wondering, peaked at number three on the Hot 100 charts. It was nominated for Grammy as well, again, back in 2013. Mm. So shout out to Rihanna. Next up. I'm sure you read about this one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Saw the picture. Megan Fox, put a Machine Gun on. Kelly, the Hollywood couple are officially engaged. On Wednesday, Megan posting this video from inside the big proposal, sharing in the caption that Machine Gun Kelly popped the question underneath a banyan tree mm. that holds some sentimental value in their relationship. Megan writing in the caption. And just as in every lifetime before this one, and as in every lifetime that will follow it, I said, wow. yes. Beautiful. Machine Gun Kelly sharing Beautiful. a look at uh, not one on that ring, but two unique Diamonds. Well, one's a diamond, actually. The other one is an emerald, I believe. Their huh. their birthstones being held oh, by gosh. this sort of uh, thorn was the idea of them oh, coming together, making nice. a, beautiful. Uh, he designed the whole thing. It was very cool. So congratulations to Machine Gun Kelly and uh, Megan Fox. All right. Next up is Nev Campbell. The Scream star is revealing one of the most terrifying experiences that she's ever had on set, and has nothing to do with a guy in a white mask. <laughs> Sitting down on the Kelly Clarkson show, Nev Campbell sharing how. When she was just 17 years old, she was told to dip her hand what? in honey in an attempt to encourage a bear to chase her what? for a scene that she was shooting. Well, how do you think that went? Me, they say, dip your hand in honey and just run. And when you get to the tree over there, turn around and stick your hand out and feed the bear. And I, of course, wanting to please everyone, was like, okay. And I turn around and I put my hand out and the bear is not slowing down. And he's not coming for my hand. And he grabs me by the leg and he pulls me through the forest. And my mother happens to be visiting set, so she's screaming. And then finally the, the bear wrangler starts just throwing rocks at the bear to get it off me. And it finally gets pissed off and turns around and goes after him. And I run, I go up a rock. Um, yeah. What? Oh my There's God. a lot to unpack here. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen her in a while. It looks incredible. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. That story is unbelievable. That is right. someone should have been mauled by a day. bear at 17 on a movie set. Yeah, that's, that's someone should have lost their job. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's just that's one big boo boo. Uh, they actually did that stunt. She wanted to do it again. Oh, I see you did there. Wow. Yeah. How dare you? Sorry. Uncle Al, come on. I'm yeah, so yeah, sorry. Too soon. I'm not so even done with the item. You know what happens? <laughs> she was 17. It's all good. Now. Wait till uh, I get into the Super it's Bowl too commercial. Good. It's all too good. It's too good. All right. Finally, as we head into the NFL playoffs, uh, everybody's favorite time of the year when brands start to break out the best commercials leading up to the Super Bowl. This morning, we've got a special sneak peek at Frito Lay and PepsiCo Beverages joint campaign. They're calling it The Road to Super Bowl. The new ad features NFL legends Peyton and Eli Manning, also Jerome the Bus Bettis, Victor Cruz, and Terry Bradshaw. Here you go. Peyton, Eli, road trip to the Super Bowl. Hard pass. Playoffs are on. You're paying for that door, by the way. So much longer. Bus, are we there yet? No. Hey, Bus, we gotta pull over for some more chips and drinks. Oh, you got it. <laughs> hey, guys, got room for one more? Got Doritos? Got Mountain Dew. We got one seat left, and it's special just for you. This is like a convertible. Stuff a whole lot better. Oh, that's great. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Ready, right? Little Olivia right yeah, fine. there. Fine. We got the bus driving the bus. <laughs> yes. Genius. That's Hips good stuff there. Beautiful. That'll get you jacked and all, up. And it's all leading to the big game, everybody. February 13th. Guess where it is? Where? Right, right here. Right here on NBC. At and Peacock. And, of course, we have a lot more to cover here on Popstar Plus. And we'll start with Adele. The Grammy winner is back with a brand new music video. This time, Adele bringing us some serious black and white drama in the video for Oh My God, which is off her latest album, 30. Here's a little peek. Well, she looks and sounds incredible per usual. Interesting, Adele actually shot this video on the same day that Easy On Me came out and was released. It was her first single in six years. So it has indeed been a whirlwind few months for Adele. Next up on Popstar Plus, and finally, Red Notice, the hit comedic heist movie is getting the sequel treatment. Deadline reporting that a follow-up is in the works for the star-studded film. Of course, it stars Ryan Reynolds, Gal Gadot, and Dwayne Johnson. They're all expected to return. Back in November, Red Notice debuted with the biggest opening weekend ever 
for a Netflix film. The action comedy hit number one on Netflix's global, global streaming charts. So we don't want to spoil anything, but if you've seen the film, you know it ends on a big cliffhanger. So we are dying to see what's next. And that is going to wrap up today's Popstar Plus headlines. But up next, we're giving you something to cheer about from two of the stars on the Netflix hit. They're going to be taking us inside season two. Stay with us. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fit too. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back. Viewers quickly connected with Cheer when it debuted on Netflix back in 2020, following the ups and downs of life in competitive college cheerleading. Now, the show's back for a second season, tracking more competitions, controversies, and emotions. And we spoke with two of the show stars, Gabby Butler and Morgan Simonier. Take a look. Navarro and Trinity Valley battling it out yet again. I have not seen Cheer yet, but what I know you can expect is the season 2020 and the season 2021. You know, following the team again, there's going to be some familiar faces, there's going to be some new faces. If Navarro slips up this year, Trinity Valley is right there to snatch the title from them. I would have to say the thing that I think would surprise people the most, it's just this whole entire season is full of a bunch of just craziness and yeah, just wild. I left after 2019 and I went back home to cheer, but I felt like I still have years to go there. And I figured honestly, like that place is my home. It will always be my home, even 10 years from now. Navarro will always have my heart and Monica will always have my heart. That woman is amazing. She's been a huge impact in my life and she still talks to me to this very day. So that's why I went back. I felt like I have more years to give, so I'm gonna give it, every, I, I'm gonna give Nav Navarro and Monica everything that I've got. Since the show came out, there was just like so much craziness. Being in the spotlight once the show first came out was very overwhelming. I was doing double school and cheering at Navarro and, you know, jumping on flights to go do interviews and all of that. So it was kind of hard to juggle it at first. And, you know, we weren't expecting season one to blow up the way it did. But I was like so excited for like what each day was going to have. So it was incredible. From a young age, I've kind of been thrown into the public eye for many years now and obviously it was just cheerleading and as the show came out I it started getting bigger with other audiences and you know real life people that aren't involved in cheerleading so uh, it's definitely been something I'm somewhat familiar with so I've kind of had a little bit of a head start but it's definitely it's amazing that you can touch people's lives without even knowing and impact it for the good. Because I feel like if you have a pull, you can really change someone's life for the better. And if I can change at least one person's life, then, you know, that makes me feel very good. Cheerleading is the only thing that can get my mind off of everything else. I think some of the biggest takeaways from the show is that 
we are normal people and you know nothing is staged and also our stories are so raw and so real and it's just very relatable for people like there are people out there that are struggling and don't really know how to handle it but seeing our stories and being able to connect to us on one level or another um, just kind of opens opportunity for them to not feel alone and feel accepted. I kind of lost myself. If I wouldn't have came here, I'd be sitting in a jail cell right now. When you're vulnerable, I feel like that is the best way to connect with people because people go on social media or they'll go on TV and it's like a bunch of things that aren't necessarily true. And you know, we're not perfect. The truth is we have our bad days, we have our fights, we have our struggles and our weaknesses. And I feel like it's a very good way of, yeah, having people feel like they're not alone in this world that we live in, this crazy, crazy world. And again, season two of Cheer is on Netflix right now. Coming up, Savannah's chatting with the star of another hit show, Euphoria. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just me too. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. HBO's hit show Euphoria has returned for its long-awaited second season. So we thought it was the perfect time to revisit Savannah's six-minute marathon with Storm Reid, who plays Gia. Check it out. Welcome, Storm, to Thank Six you. Minute Marathon. I'm excited. Are you ready? Are you stretched? You limbered up? Yes. You ready? I think for... I'm going to do a good job. I think you are too. <laughs> I feel good about it. First question: What never fails to make you smile? My family. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and you've got brothers and sisters, right? I do. I have two sisters and one brother. Wow. What show do you always have playing in the background? Ooh, I don't watch much TV, but there's always a TV on in my house. Yes. There's always the news. So we could stay informed. Yes. Well, that's good. Yes. You, you could say euphoria. Right. Well, you're most famous yeah. for. <laughs> Which fashion trend are you loving right now? I'm loving like where people are wearing any type of sneaker, but specifically a high top sneaker and then like long socks, and oh. you can kind of see the socks like. It's kind of like a cutoff jean, and you see the socks, and then you see the I'm sneaker. I'm pro sock. Look, I've been right. I'm wearing socks, <laughs> exactly. sort of. I, I'll tell you, my trend I'm loving is your nails. Oh, thank you. They are beautiful. Thank you. I love that. Who are you inspired by? So many people, but um, my mom. She's my first inspiration. <laughs> What's your hype up song? Probably. It's been Bodak Yellow for a long time. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big Cardi B fan. Yeah, and that's all. Every time it'll pump you up. Yes. Okay. Do you prefer texting or talking on the phone? Texting. 
me too. <laughs> it's easier. Does anyone even call anymore? I mean, yes, I do love talking on the phone, but texting is just like more convenient. But sometimes texts can get like misconstrued. Definitely. And you don't know how a person is really feeling. So a phone call is better. That's when you need emojis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most famous person you have in your phone? Probably Miss Oprah. <laughs> you have Oprah's phone number. That's incredible. Do you text sometimes? Sometimes, yes. We have a group chat. If um, she calls, you pick up the phone. Oh, of course. Yes, okay. Put everything down. <laughs> what is your ideal date? I like being at home. So, like, getting snacks, watching movies or television shows, and yeah. just chilling at home. What's your favorite movie? Matilda, all time. Like, that's my favorite movie. Have you ever used the fact that you're a celebrity to get out of trouble? No. No, I don't usually get in trouble, but I feel like if I were to get in trouble, I mean, I just have to own it and, yeah. and learn from my mistake and move on. Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> yes. Good that your mom would be proud. Right. What is your hidden talent? My hidden talent. <laughs> so, like, if I drop something on the floor and I don't feel like reaching down, I could pick up something, like, with my toe. Really? <laughs> it's so weird. Looking for something right. to throw. Exactly. This would be too easy. Right. So you have, your toes are, like, superhuman. Yes, I could pick up stuff. Wow. <laughs> that comes in handy, too. Right. What's your guilty pleasure? Mmm, chocolate chip cookies. Oh, mm. so good. Do you bake them, or? I do, I love to bake. Yeah. I love to cook, so I make a good chocolate chip cookie. How did you learn to cook? Oh, my mom is an amazing cook. Um, and then, like, I always just used to watch the Food Network. Oh. And then I have, like, cooking books, so it's a, a big deal. You're in into it. Okay. Yes. If you were stuck on a desert island but could bring one type of food with you to eat forever, what would you bring? Probably my mom's macaroni and cheese. My mom has the best macaroni and cheese I've ever had. Oh, and that's good. That'll keep you keep you going. Right. Yeah. It's, it's good. probably not the healthiest choice, but you're on a desert island. Exactly. You know, <laughs> just go with it. Who is your dream actor or actress to work with? Uh, right now, Miss Meryl Streep. I think she's incredible. I would love to work with her. I love how you say. Miss Meryl, Miss Oprah. <laughs> yes. Is that just some good Southern upbringing right yes, there? Yes, yes. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's just the Southern hospitality. <laughs> I like it. I might just try that with my own kids. <laughs> the greatest advice you ever got from your parents? Ooh, just to always be myself and don't let anyone tell me that I can't do something because I can. And as long as I'm a good person and I'm prepared, then I'll be able to do anything I want to do. If you could have a superpower, Besides your feet. <laughs> right. What would it be? Um, probably to fly. I hate sitting in traffic, yeah. and I like getting places fast. So if I could fly and get places fast and safe, then I'd do it. You know what? Flying is the best. Why would anyone want any other superpower? Exactly. What other answer is there? Right. Hearing well? No, exactly. Or like fly. reading people's minds. That no. might get your feelings hurt. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> flying all right. the way. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Night owl. Really? Yes. Do you stay up late a lot? I don't stay up too late, but I feel like, I mean, waking up initially is a little hard, and then I could get into the, the groove of things, but initially I'm like, oh, can I get some more sleep? If you could set your own <laughs> schedule, what time would you go to bed? I usually go to bed around like 11, 30, 12, so that's not too bad. Not terrible. Um, I could go to sleep earlier, but I'm always like doing something or like talking to my mom or my sister. Or Oprah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if your friends could describe you in one word, what would it be? Funny. Mm. I think I'm hilarious. I think you are too. And charming. <laughs> Thank you. And gorgeous. Thank you. What is the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? I am very adventurous. Okay. So I like, I, I'm, when I'm like on vacation, I'm like willing to like do some fun things. Like I want to go parasailing. I want to go skydiving for my 18th birthday. Okay, you're so, gutsy. Yeah, I am. All right. <laughs> Last movie that made you cry? Probably Queen and Slim. That's a movie that like I... I wept after. The, like the first time seeing it, I saw it twice. And the first time I was devastated. And it stuck with you. It did. But then you saw it again. I did. I see. I saw it again because it's a, a beautiful film. And I love Melina and Lena. And I had to go support again. And it's a great film. Mm. What is something you would like to learn? And I just hope I can like learn from each person that I work with. Like You never know what skill set a person has or how they operate through the world. So if I feel like I can continue to observe the people I work with, then I'll learn a whole bunch of new things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet you're a good teacher, too. <laughs> uh, I try to be. <laughs> Storm, thank you so much. Thank you. That's it. Six minutes goes so fast. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. She has Oprah in her contacts. Who has that?
Still coming up from the vault, Patrick Dempsey, circa 1990. And trust us, you're not going to want to miss it. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just it. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Patrick Dempsey turns 56 today, and in his honor, we're flashing back to 1990 when the then 24 year old actor visited us here today and shared some of his hidden talents. The movie Coupe de Ville opens tomorrow. It's billed as a comedy about three brothers who never got along as kids and who are forced by their father to drive a vintage 1954 Cadillac Coupe de Ville from Detroit to Florida in time for their mother's birthday. The brothers, as you might expect, battle all the way to Florida. In the process, they get to know each other for the first time. The film stars Patrick Dempsey as one of the brothers. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good morning. Thanks. I'm doing all right. Is, is it true that this is based on a true story? Yeah, it's based on uh, Mike Binder's uh, father and brothers. Yeah. You're one of you're one of three yourself, right? Yes. Was, did you relate to this real easily? Uh, I was the baby of three, so I kind of uh, understood where he was coming from. Yeah. Give me an idea. Give me a character sketch of of Bobby. I mean, one of your brothers is 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 a bully, and one of them's kind of a peacemaker. Right. But but tell me about tell me about Bobby. What's Bobby in this? Thing? Well, he's like the little brother who everybody doesn't want to really deal with, and. Um, he just wants to be accepted as one of the peers, as one of, uh, you know, as an equal. And when he's not, he says, okay, you think I'm a kid, I'm going to act like a kid. And he creates havoc. Yeah. It is strange to talk about um, 1963 as a period piece, <laughs> but I guess it's getting to be about that time. Yeah. I mean, was, was that a tough era for you to get into? Well, it was a time when the, the country wasn't so, you know, jaded. You know, we had a lot of faith in our, our government and uh, the people in control. And we were coming out of, you know, Camelot was in full swing. Kennedy was right there. The wall was just going up. So it was a hopeful time. Yeah, was it an eye opener for you? 63? Yeah, I mean, to get back in, <laughs> no, 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 obviously, to get into the part. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun uh, to sort of just do the research on the time period and to look back, and uh, the music was great. Yeah. Let's get a look at a, at, a, at a piece of the film. I think you get an idea from this how uh, serious and, and comedic the parts can be. We'll watch. You're right. Oh my God, right. that's this incredible. Is incredible. This is the car. Oh my we had this God. Car. Cool. I don't oh believe my it. God. That's amazing. You were right. Oh God, help me. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm fine. You're gonna throw up? No, don't. Don't throw up in the car, buddy. I'm not gonna throw up. If he said he's not gonna throw up, he's not gonna throw up. I'm gonna throw up. No! That is a negative! Burton, do not throw up in this car! Don't panic! Marvin, pull the car over, I can't please. pull the car over, we're on a bridge! Oh. Barf at the back! No! No! Don't barf at the back! Go up in the air, just swallow! Disgusting. Keep swallowing, okay? Swallow! Is that helping? Does that really work? Because you're swallowing your own throw up, you know that though. Buddy, don't listen to him! Buddy! <gasps> no! 
<laughs> your your brothers in this are, are Ari Gross and, and Daniel Stern. Did you guys develop much of a camaraderie am, among you as you did it? Oh yeah, definitely. We became brothers, without a doubt. We uh, we had a lot of fun, and we uh, fought a lot. Yeah. Was it a hard Was it a hard movie to do? I mean, I know a lot of it was shot in in the South in in the summertime. Mm -hmm. it, w it was hot. I mean, what? It was very. It was uh, you were in the middle of Florida in the summer, and um, it was very hard. So everybody was drinking a lot of Gatorade and going to a bathroom a lot. Uh, that would make it difficult. Yeah. This, this this movie is is a real switch for you, isn't it? I mean, you, you're usually the the romantic lead. Right. Uh, it sounds a heck of a thing to say for somebody who's all of 24, but right. you're usually the romantic lead in your movies. Do you like the switch? I did like the switch because I got to work with really good actors, and uh, I learned a lot from them. And it was a different character for me to play and to see if I could do it. Uh. All right, now let's get to the real meat of this thing. Okay. Um, I mean, I went to school in Lewiston, Maine. Right. You're really from Lewiston, Maine. Now, well, how does, wait a minute, how does a kid from Lewiston, Maine make it to Hollywood? It was a big jump. Well, actually, I got to say I'm from Buckfield. I went to school in Buckfield part-time, then I went, uh, grew up in Turner, too, and then I went to Lewiston. Oh, yeah. So I have to mention everybody. Okay. And um, it just sort of happened. You know, I sort of was into ski racing, then I learned how to ride the unicycle. You were a state champion. Don't understand. Right, right. Go ahead. And I, this guy, Paul McKinney, taught me how to juggle. And I said, this is what I want to do. You know, and I started going to uh, Portland, Maine, to this agent there, and uh, I said, you know, can I do commercials and things? Tried out for this... Um, thing called Town America and I ended up winning coming to New York and I met this agent Davina Wells and uh, she sort of helped me get going. Fun fact, did you also know that Patrick starred in the movie Scream 3 with a new installment out this weekend? We've got a bonus flashback to the year 2000 when Patrick visited Studio 1A to talk about the iconic franchise. Take a look. Basically I'm the uh, detective for the LAPD uh -huh. and I'm there investigating a murder that happens on the set of Stab 3. So how did you get involved in the Scream sequel? Uh, normal process, auditioning. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and was it fun to do? Uh, the movie or yeah. the auditioning process? No, the movie rather the than movie the was auditioning. A, yeah, the movie was uh, extremely difficult because uh, you were always sort of off balance with um, waiting for the script to come in and um, the anxiety. My, my very first day, I show up uh, having learned the lines that I thought I was going to do and they said, no, we're going to change that on you. Here's your new script, go. And but the camera set up, you've got to go do it. So it was the actor's nightmare come to life. It was, but was so that, that, first day was was that intentional then? They, they, they wanted to keep you guys off no, balance No, I think they were well? just refining it and trying to make sure that all of the uh, pieces to the puzzle were being put together. So they were constantly revising. But they literally wouldn't give you the script until the day of the shoot. Well, uh, four minutes before I stepped in front of the camera. It was like, you, here you go, let's go shoot this. You've got plenty of time, no problems. And you're looking around at the crew and the crew's going, oh my God, what's wrong with this guy? And how did that work out? It was good. I, you know, when you see it, you, you would never even know, which is very nice. So there's this, as typical with the other screen movies, there's this kind of hot, young cast. Mm -hmm. What is it like working with your colleagues? It was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, the energy on the set was very light. A lot of um, jokes played on each other. It was very enjoyable. Now, both the, the first two screen movies, mm -hmm are at times pretty gory. Right. And I heard that maybe some of the violence has been sort of tamed down a bit in this uh, one? Yeah, a little bit, yes. <laughs> You're not going to oversell uh, that one? Uh, no. I mean, uh, there's, yeah, it's, a, it's violent, but at the same time, it's sort of uh, counterbalanced by a lot of humor. It is. I mean, it's sort of like a, a humorous look at this whole horror genre, right? I mean, that's Yeah, the it's point. turned the genre pretty much upside down, right. and it makes fun of it at the same time. And there you go, McDreamy. Happy birthday to you, sir. Thanks for being with us today. That is going to do it for Popstar Plus. We'll see you next time. Oh, hold a look. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Look, look wow, look they those, came again. Those beautiful people. We appreciate you joining us for this edition of Today in 30. So happy to see you. It was a real busy morning around here, starting with Craig. Craig had an exclusive interview with Vice President Kamala Harris. She had a lot to say. Mm -hmm. uh, hold on, a lot to say when it came to the pandemic, uh, where the battle over a voting rights bill is heading, and more. So we're going to share part of our wide-ranging conversation in just a moment. And speaking of the COVID crisis, Kerry Sanders, he's taking us inside the race to keep up with all that demand for COVID tests and better masks, higher quality masks. So if you're having trouble finding either of those, you're gonna to wanna to see his report. And Hody, you and Jenna crossed another adventure off your bucket list. Okay, this one was way out of the comfort zone. Okay, we stepped outside, it was 32 degrees. 
we jumped in the ocean. Of course. No, yeah, we did. It's called the polar plunge. You know what it's called. Oh, yeah. I never thought I'd do it. We did it. I'd love to tell the story. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. So let's get this little show started, Miss Copy. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We started with a pandemic. The vice president sharing her take on the current state of COVID in the United States and new criticism that's been leveled at the White House. As we sit here this week, we saw a record number of hospitalizations, adults and children. Uh, we've seen the infection record broken. I think a lot of people are, are scratching their heads and they're wondering one year into this administration, why, why aren't we doing better in the fight against COVID? So let me start with saying that people are rightly frustrated with where we are. We're frustrated, we're all frustrated, but I think it's a mistake and it would be a mistake to suggest that we've not seen great progress. If you think back to March of 2020, we were all wiping down the boxes that we got if we ordered things online, uh, we, there was no vaccine. Now we have a vaccine, which has proved to be effective and boosters. Now we have our children back in school. 95% of schools are back open. But we're, we're, we're building back up, we're opening back up, and we are not where we were a year ago. Let's talk about masks for a second. It's been several weeks now since public health experts have acknowledged that cloth masks, surgical masks, they're not as effective in, in terms of stopping this new variant, Omicron. Should, should Americans be wearing KN95 masks or N95 masks? Well, the CDC is going to be providing us with those guidelines. But, but what, what's taking so long? Well, the CDC is making their decisions. I don't make the CDC's decisions. But what I will say is what, what has been clear about the masks is you want to wear a tight-fitting mask. That is clear. And we want to urge everybody to do that. In terms of the N95 masks, they are available. There is a stockpile of, I believe, over 700 million of those masks. So the supply is there as necessary and as needed. At what point does the administration say, you know what, this strategy isn't working. We're going to change strategies. Six former administration officials last week wrote that open letter urging the administration to change course, to change strategy. Is it time? It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree that there are things and tools that are available to us to slow this thing down. And so right now we know we still have a number of people that, that is in the millions of Americans who have not been vaccinated and could be vaccinated, and we are urging them to get vaccinated because it will save their life. At, at what point but, does the administration acknowledge these people aren't going to get the shot? They're just not going to do it. I don't believe in giving up on people, Craig. I really don't. The 500 million tests that have been ordered that are going to be sent to every, every American, do we know when those are going out? Shortly, though they're going to go out next shortly. Week, they've been or? ordered, they've been ordered. We, I have to look at the current information. I think it's going to be by next week, but soon, absolutely soon. And it is a matter of urgency for us. Should we have done that sooner? We are doing it. But should we have done it sooner? We are doing it. Let's turn to voting rights here for a moment. Um, you were there in Atlanta with the president yeah. um, when he uh, compared those who oppose uh, Democratic-backed voting bills that are currently in the Senate. He compared the folks who oppose those to folks who oppose civil rights. Senator Romney, in response yesterday, he took to the floor of the Senate and he said, quote, so much for unifying the country. When, when the president was on the campaign trail in the fall of 2020, he said something. He said, with Trump out of the way, the vindictiveness of a president going after Republicans who don't do exactly what he says gets taken away. Isn't that exactly what, what President Biden did in Atlanta on Wednesday? President Biden took the, I believe, right and courageous step to say that Senate rules should not get in the way of protecting the American people's access to the ballot. And he compared this time to a previous time in our history, which is apt for comparison. It's not just Republican opposition. It, it would seem as if this piece of legislation is going to come down to one or two uh, moderate Democrats. In months and weeks, the administration hasn't been able to convince one or two senators to come around. How are you going to do that in two or three days? If I may, 
I'd like to contextualize this conversation. Sure. Which is, in 2006, in this very town of Washington, D.C., up the street at the United States Capitol, in the United States Senate, 98 of the 100 members of the United States Senate voted in favor of an extension of the Voting Rights Act. It was not a partisan issue. It was an American issue. But Madam Vice President, how are you going to get it done? Well, well, when we have the discussion about who's responsible, I will not absolve the 50 Republicans in the United States Senate from responsibility for upholding one of the most basic and important tenets of our democracy, which is free and fair elections and access to the ballot for all eligible voters. What about Senator Manchin? What about Senator Sinema? I don't think anyone should be absolved from the responsibility of preserving and protecting our democracy, Are you working? especially when they took an oath to protect and defend our Constitution. Why has the administration not been able to get Senate Democrats on board? We are not giving up. No, but the question was, why, why has it taken but this But you're long? acting as though it's over. Well, I mean, you've, you've It's been, not over. So it's gonna happen by Monday. I'm saying it's not over, and we don't give up. We don't give up and we will not give up. Are we going to, uh, to see the same Democratic ticket in 2024? I'm sorry, we are thinking about today. I mean, honestly, the, I, I, I know why you're asking the question, because this is the part of the punditry and the, right. the gossip around places like Washington, D.C. Let me just tell you something. We're focused on the things in front of us. We're focused on what we need to do to, to address issues like affordable child care, what we need to do to ensure So there have been that, no conversations that, about 2024? The American people sent us here to do a job, and right now there's a lot of work to be done, and that's my focus. It sounds Sincerely. like you're at least familiar with some of the punditry. I don't know if you've heard that there've been some. There's been some talk about a a, a Biden Cheney ticket, perhaps in 2024. Did you read that article? I did not. I'm. I no, I did not, and I really could care less about the high class gossip on these issues. Hmm. She had a lot to say. The other thing that I thought was interesting, a lot of interesting things, but a lot of people are at home waiting for those rapid tests. And she sure. said in a week, they might be out to everybody. That's what the vice president yeah, said. Yeah. Uh, now, the reality is we've spoken to a number of companies that actually manufacture these yeah. tests. They have led NBC News to believe that would be a lofty goal. Oh, okay. it, is, it is going to take some time okay. to manufacture some 500 million tests, especially when you look at the empty store shelves right now. Yeah. You've seen the long lines of folks who are waiting for tests, so it mm -hmm. remains to be seen. But mm -hmm. apparently the tests are on order. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have much more of our exclusive conversation with Vice President Harris later this morning on the third hour. Her message to critics who say the administration should have been more prepared for Omicron's rapid rise in the wake of the Delta surge. All right, now let's focus more on that promise mentioned by the vice president to ramp up COVID testing supplies. Many health and school officials saying it is critical to help kids stay in the classroom amid new outbreaks and staffing shortages. NBC Stephanie Goss joins us with more on that piece of the puzzle. Hey, Stephanie, good morning. Hey, Lahota, good morning. Yeah, that new supply will be critical to keeping kids in the classroom. Despite the really good news that Omicron is not as serious as Delta, it is still a struggle keeping those kids in class. Millions of free COVID tests will soon be headed to schools nationwide. The White House promising a monthly stream of 5 million rapid tests and 5 million PCR tests to K-12 schools in states that apply for them. The first shipments are expected to arrive as early as this month. How important is testing for keeping your schools open safely? It is vital. I think it's next to vaccines and the boosters. It's the only way that we can continue to keep our teachers and our students safe. The new testing push comes as schools struggle to stay open amid Omicron surge. Austin school superintendent says she started deploying administrative staff with teaching experience as substitutes just to keep class going. Even if it isn't as perfect as it would have been with our great teachers, we know that it's better than our students not having that support. Hospitals are struggling, too. At an ICU on the Cleveland Clinic's main campus, 5% of the staff is out sick. The National Guard now helping to clean, test, and deliver meals. The reality is that we have an overwhelming number of COVID patients that are occupying our ICUs, that our emergency rooms are overcrowded, that our teams are exha exhausted. The good news, a new study out of Southern California finds Omicron is far less likely to cause severe illness or death, 
compared to the Delta variant. But that doesn't mean the public should let its guard down. The White House says it's considering ways to increase the availability of higher quality masks. And the CDC has said it's going to update its guidance on masks. The agency's director reiterating any face covering is better than none at all. The best mask that you can that you wear is the one that you will wear and the one you can keep on all day long that you can tolerate in public indoor settings. There's an update on the school system in Chicago. Last night, the union voted for an agreement that includes new safety measures, including new testing to get those kids back into class. They were in class yesterday after school had been canceled entirely for five days, Hoda. All right, Stephanie Gosk for us. Uh, Stephanie, thank you. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it. Today show's newest fan. This is the moment. Little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We are back with more on a major focus of our exclusive conversation with Vice President Kamala Harris. The Biden administration's promise to increase COVID testing nationwide and to distribute 100 million at-home tests to America. Which leads us to a key question this morning. Are there enough of those kits to go around? NBC's Carrie Sanders has been looking into that for us. And Carrie, we see all those people hard at work yeah. behind you. Yeah, good morning. You know, that frenetic activity is to get these COVID tests out because right now, as you noted, there is a much greater demand than there is a supply. And on Saturday, insurance companies will be obligated to start paying for up to eight tests a month if, and it's a big if, if you can find them. At this Miami-Dade factory, 450 employees working around the clock, trying to keep up with the unprecedented demand for home COVID test kits. So we're just at about a million kits per day, and which is one of the- That's still not enough? That's still not enough. So what does that tell us about the demand out there? You know, with the new variants and the new viruses, the demand is just packed up. It's, we just can't make enough. The largest manufacturer in the country, Abbott Laboratories, producing 70 million tests a month. And that's still not enough. The Ongo antigen test here, one of 15 home tests authorized by the FDA. Is there a good reason to be fearful that there's not enough test kits? Uh, we're working around the clock to make sure that everybody that wants to get tested, get tested immediately. But in many stores, shelves are empty. If you are able to score a self-test, be prepared to pay. Two weeks ago, prices were $7, now up to $25. And on eBay, they're going for as much as 80 bucks each. But it's those do-it-yourself tests that are the fastest and easiest way to find out if you're infected. Critical experts say to slowing the spread. So if you test regularly and if you detect it, you are going to be safer, your family is going to be safer, your community is going to be safer. OnGo takes the results one step further. A snapshot of the results are uploaded anonymously to the cloud, allowing artificial intelligence to track geographic COVID clusters. So you can look at a town, say Sudbury, Massachusetts, and if you see a large cluster there, you can predict what's going to happen. Many of them take a snapshot at the same time and we start seeing how it grows. This all comes as the CDC now says some masks we've been using are ineffective against Omicron. 
cloth mask like this and these paper masks are really not effective and we need to wear these N95s, how do you put it on? Okay, so you want to hold it in your hand. You actually want to put it onto your nose. Take your first strap and put it right on the top. And you want to take the bottom strap. Right. And you want to go all the way. You want to go under the ears. You never want to crisscross. Okay, now take your two fingers and you want to create a nice seal with that thing. Remember when the pandemic began two years ago? Americans were discouraged from using those high quality masks because they were in short supply and doctors and nurses needed them most. It does feel like from a health standpoint, we are constantly moving the goalpost. We're not moving the goalpost. It's that this virus is literally outpacing us and out tricking us and outwitting us in terms of how long it's lasting. So while it may be uh, difficult to find these right now, masks like this, the N95 is very easy to find. As a matter of fact, right here in this warehouse, way back there, those boxes, they have 200 million of these N95 masks. So no shortage of those, but try to find these right mm -hmm. now. It's a, real, it's a real challenge, guys. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Ooh, the answer's Today Show's newest fan, a little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? This morning, whether you're looking for a winter escape or a way to escape the cold, we've got you covered. Editor-in-Chief of Travel and Leisure, Jackie Gifford, is here with her best fire and ice travel destinations. Of course, we should say check on COVID guidelines before you travel. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. Let's start where most of our heads are. I would say some heat, right? Take us to the Gulf Coast. Yeah, we all need some warmth right now in New York City. So we're actually talking right now about Tampa Bay and the Gulf Coast area, which includes St. Petersburg and Clearwater. It was named to uh, Travel and Leisure's Best Places to Travel in 2022. You can, of course, go to the beach. There's also cultural attractions. You're looking right now at the Hotel Haya, which is an amazing new hotel that opened at the end of 2020 in Tampa Bay. It pays um, homage to the area's Cuban roots. Um, you've got a great ceviche restaurant, Florfina. They have a pool there. You can do yoga on the pool deck. So lots to do in Tampa. And this property I should add is $239 a night, which is relatively affordable for Florida at this time of year. So Jackie, you want someplace warm, but you don't care about a beach or the water. What do you suggest? We like Sedona, Arizona. Again, another oh, place no, like uh, aimed to travel and leisure's list of places to go in 2022. Everybody goes to Sedona for those gorgeous red rocks, for the hiking, the outdoor activities. To be in nature, you can go to Devil's Bridge, which is a popular spot to take photos. And then you've got the Sky Ranch Lodge. It's a historic property. It opened 40 years ago. The rooms have all been updated. They've got a heated pool. You know, it's a really great place to go. Again, if you're into biking and the outdoors, I, I love Sedona. It's Same also here. a wellness yeah. spot. 
I should add too. Remember, we were there. A couple we years. were. It was so peaceful. Jackie, folks, you know, some folks might want to travel internationally, but they're a little hesitant at the moment because of the virus. Tell us how the U.S. Virgin Islands fits into all of that. U.S. Virgin Islands, no passport required, right? So that's a great place to go. Again, if you're a little bit more hesitant, you've got three islands, St. Thomas, St. Croix, St. John. St. John is two-thirds uh, protected park, the U.S. Virgin Islands National Park. The temperature right now is in the 70s and 80s, so if you're looking for some sun and some relaxation, this is a great place to go. The Concordia Echo Resort, it's $188 a night, and what they it's, um, it's on the southeastern coast. What they have are these sort of wooden bungalow tent-like structures. They're solar powered and then they've got natural breezes you let in um, through the canvas windows and walls and you can go to all sorts of beaches nearby i really like st john again if you're looking for something that's eco friendly and you want to reconnect with nature let's turn now to some icy destinations why is idaho a great spot for folks looking for a winter adventure mccall idaho is a great place for skiing and snowboarding and sledding and all those winter activities Act, outdoor activities that we love. You can go. Um, you can go uh, snowshoeing on tons of trails in Ponderosa State Park. Brundage Mountain is the place to ski. Idaho has seen a, really a boom in population during the pandemic, and again, people like to go because of all those outdoor activities right now. And then the Shore Lodge. It's one hundred ninety-five dollars a night. This is actually a property that's rated really highly by travel and leisure readers. It's on um, Lake Payette. All right, Payette. Jackie. Thank you so much. Way to go, Idaho. We'll be right back. Yeah. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Okay, all month long, we're talking about living a life we love. And sometimes that means leaving your comfort zone, and that can really make you feel alive. Yeah, it's exactly why we said yes to diving right into the new year with a very frigid polar plunge. So grab a warm blanket. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Yes, no. Okay, get cozy and take a look. Every winter at the turn of the new year, the boldest among us brave the cold and just their swimsuits for a dip into near-freezing water. That's right, it's the polar bear plunge. What seems like a wild stunt for daredevils is so much more. This 100-year-long tradition has raised millions of dollars for charity and helps countless risk takers feel refreshed for a new year. Famous past polar bears include Lady Gaga, Jimmy Fallon, and even our Today Show pals, Alan Craig. This is the perfect time to face like a brand new challenge and see if you can do it. It's like, what do we want to do in 2022? You know, let's do something cool. And by cool, I mean frigid. The beach is my second home. So if you're going to do a challenge and you're doing one on the beach, you got my number. Okay, I've never done a polar plunge, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. But I'm imagining Baywatch you know, slow, beautiful running into warm temperature. It all seemed great when we were driving up here. Yeah. It all seemed great when we got out of the car. And then all of a sudden and we all of a felt sudden, the this, wind. This is the illusion of a summer day. Yes. But 
we know right now it's it cold. is biting cold. We're a little nervous. Yes. By the way, I just went to the bathroom before this and the toilet seat was cold. <laughs> so, so that tells you I'm everything. Terrified. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so freezing. You might have noticed we're not the only ones looking to check an item off our bucket list. We're joined by the official Long Beach polar bears. These New Yorkers have been jumping into the ocean every winter for 24 years, raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They heard we were coming and they couldn't resist an excuse to plunge. Any advice for us newbies? It's timing, yeah. timing. It's time. Wait. But you're going to help us with the timing, you're, right? Yes, we're, gonna help you. we're, we're all going to be together. I was like, told us we need to wear those, no? No, that's a negative. Yeah. We do. Yeah. 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 No, no shoes! shoes. Yeah. No booties! <laughs> Never go in the ocean or any body of water without a lifeguard. Oh, that's true. You know. A good looking one. Yes. That's a good looking one. So you'll save us. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We couldn't stall any longer. It was time to plunge. I feel amazing. My hands are numb. That was crazy. My hair is wet. We went under. We did it. We have to check our vitals to make sure we're okay. Still alive. Wait, wait, wait. I so, so fast, and now I get it. You didn't actually die. <laughs> what was going through your minds when Hoda, you didn't dive and Jenna, you I wasn't, didn't know till just this first moment. First of all, I didn't realize that she decided to go all we in like that. We said we were gonna die. No, we said we were gonna get our hair wet. That's what the agreement was. The guy was. said, do a shallow dive. <laughs> no, well, that was the guy's interpretation. We decided, are we gonna get our hair wet? Yes, no, yes, no. We decided, yes. You know so one of us went like this. Where one of you, where you have two friends and you're jumping off a high dive <laughs> and the other one doesn't jump? I jump. No, 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 it would be, I, I would, if I had stayed on the beach, <laughs> well, then that would have been true, different. Let's, I, let's, I let's. thought let's. the legs were coming up. <laughs> I like to see her kicking legs. By the way, not for nothing, Jenna, you have a good dive. Yeah, you Who knew? Well, are you a swimmer? No. <laughs> Thank you. So be sure to tune in tomorrow on today. It is going to be a huge show, a special show. Yeah, it's not like our average shows every day. This one is our 70th anniversary show. We'll have a fun look back at all the moments that have happened throughout the years on today. Can't wait to share those with you guys. Let me see you then. January 14, 1952, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are in NBC's World Communications Center in the heart of Radio City, New York. We are in touch with the world. We'll tell you what's happening today. My name is Jack Laskula. And here is Dave Garrelin. Well, here we are. Good morning to you. 
The very first good morning of what I hope and suspect will be a great many good mornings between you and I. Here it is, Jack said, January 14th, 1952, when NBC begins a new program called Today, and if it doesn't sound too revolutionary, I really believe it begins a new kind of television. We'll be with you every day for two hours in the morning, just about the time you get up, 7 to 9 a.m. We're going to try very much to put you more closely in touch with the world we live in by the magnificent, unparalleled means of communication which NBC has assembled into a single room in New York. We call this room our communication center. From it, we'll put you in touch with the whole world and not only with news, which we'll cover as no program ever has been able to cover before, because they didn't have this many tools, but we'll give you lots of music, music of today, what good records are coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow in art, tomorrow in science, tomorrow and today in sports. All fields of human endeavor, we think we'll be able to inform you better about, and the people who are close to you, than you had a chance to be informed before. So that as you leave the house at the end of the day, you're close to it at the beginning of the day, knowing where you're going and what the world is like that you're going into. That sounds like a pretty big job. Believe me, it is. We've been working on this for quite a while. We're glad finally to have made the grain into your home for the first day. We hope we can give you enough to stay with you for a long time. Now, that's a preamble, and you know how preambles are. I mostly talk, and I like to get going and put you in touch today with the world you're going to live in. Our feature will have news, by the way, every quarter hour. You can depend on that. Every half hour, we'll have a two-minute summary, a capsule of the day that you're going to live in. We call it Today and Two Minutes. And here it is for the first time. January 14th, 1952. Here's today's headline. Indochina crisis. Rebels use Russian radar guns. The headline picked from the New York Herald Tribune today as the headline of the day. Here's today's front page story. The story of the inflammable explosive sweaters made from synthetic rayon, which have been exploding in 50 seconds. They've been all impounded now, and the police department is rounding up a few more remaining ones. Here are faces in the news today. This is the famous Princess Margaret, a now a monster engagement tentatively and rumored to the Earl of Dalkeith. His mother is on the left. Here are trends of today. Here's William O. Douglas of the Supreme Court, who has told the president that he is not interested in running for vice president. Now there are places in the news today. First, here is Oak Ridge, birthplace of the atomic bomb. Senator Gordon Dean, atomic chairman, says the big problem for the AEC is to expand atomic energy and still keep our overall economy in the balance. To the left of that picture, here is a boy in Wellesley, Massachusetts, 12-year-old John Howe, taking a close look at the broken rail that he spotted to avert a probable train wreck. There are places today out west, too, across the sun country in Big Bear, California, where the Sunshine State is battling snowstorms like this one, and an occasional flood for good measure, too. Now, here is opening night on Broadway. Husband and wife, George S. Kaufman and Louine McGrath, co-authors of a new play, Fancy Meeting You Again, and she acts in it. He staged it. New books are out today. Here is Fleur Cole's Bloody President, which looks Argentina today and yesterday. Looks most particularly at Evita Perón. Here's the newsreel of the hour. The hero of the hour, too, the man who all missed went down with the ship at sea. Captain Kurt Carlson, commander of the famous Flying Enterprise, as he talked to citizens, thankfully, at Falmouth, England. I singing so fast that uh, there was not time for the helicopter to arrive and uh, the weather was too bad for the helicopter to come out anyway. So we decided between the two of us we would walk out on the smokestack, which we did, and uh, <laughs> with our life jackets on, we jumped from the smokestack into the sea and swam toward the uh, uh, tugboat turmoil where the crew was ready to pick us up. And uh, in less than nine minutes, we were aboard in the uh, turmoil where we were handed some warm tea and rum, some warm clothes, and then we had a very welcome rest. And what are you going to do now? I'm going to sleep. Until he gets back to New York, where he'll be hero of the day. There's Jimmy DeMerritt, hero of the Bing Crosby Pro Amateur Sports Tournament, cut to 36 holes from 72 because of big heavy rains in the Monterey Peninsula. 
There is today in capsule form, just about this big. So as you leave the house, you know where you are and what's going to happen to it. That feature will come on this program every half hour. Every quarter hour after and quarter of the hour, we'll have another news broadcast for you. So anytime you tune us in, you'll know, uh, well, you'll know what time it is, like you see, 7.05 in the east here. You'll find the news also running over my feet like this. And you'll find our communication center full at work and about to put you in touch with the day. Let me, uh, let me take a little tour with you if you're not busy for a second and find out some of the tools and some of the people who work on the news as it comes in. This is in no sense a studio. This is really a working news center. The news actually is written and put together here in front of your eyes and will be every morning. Uh, this uh, character here, for example, is Jack Les Cooley, who is a very warm-blooded character. Jack and I are old friends from the Grouch Club days. If you heard that wonderful show of Jack's on the West Coast a few seasons ago. Jack will be my right hand, left hand, and probably middle head much of the time. This is a desk where some of the news is put together and some of the features are assembled by uh, pretty girls like Mary Kelly, who's talking to who you're talking to. I have the weather bureau waiting for you, Dave. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You got your electric typewriter waiting to? Mm -hmm. This is a, a fantastic machine. If you can get real close to it, it sounds like a machine gun. Isn't that pretty? How fast? Yeah, <laughs> finally beat him. Uh, these are our tape recording machines that put down the voices of people all over the world who may have spoken during the night or who may speak on our early morning program. We'll record them for rebroadcast later. Dad, I hope you're all lined up there. This is the uh, telephoto machine. Anybody coming in? Yes, we're taking a picture now from San Francisco oh. of the 25th Division. Of what? The 25th Division. Well. Good enough. See, the picture will come in on this machine. We'll show it to you maybe minutes after it was taken. The print we show you will still be wet, but you won't be able to feel it at home, I hope. Uh, let's look up here. I want you to meet Buck Prince. Buck is our overseas news editor. Buck, who you got on the circuit this morning? Uh, well, Dave, we got London standing by, and we got Franker standing by. You got please. London there? Well, let me have a can yeah. here. Hello, London. Hello, London. Stand by, London. London, is that Romney Wheeler? Good morning, Romney. This is the first of the NBC series of today broadcasts. Well, uh, Dave, here in London, we're pleased and proud to be part of this exciting new experiment. Well, sounds like we're both pretty happy. What's the big news story in London this morning, Romney? Well, Dave, before you sign off, I want to give you the latest on those two ships that are breaking up in a storm on the English coast this morning. Go ahead. Well, for a while, I thought we had another Captain Carlson on our hands. The French steamer Argon went aground on the Goodwin Sands last night and broke in two. Dawn, her lifeboat got out to her and took off 37 crewmen, but Captain Maurice Landro wouldn't leave his ship. But just a few minutes before I came on the air here, I got word that the lifeboat has made a second trip to the wreck, and Captain Landro has been brought safely ashore. Good news, Romney, and thank you from London. Uh, Buck, put me on to Frankfurt All there, right, will you? just a minute, Dave. We turn our non-system monitor selector right. to 13. Hello, Ed Hawker in Frankfurt. Yeah, hello, Dave. Hello, greetings from Frankfurt, Dave. Yeah, there. Good to hear your voice, Ed, from the old days. Good to hear you, Dave. Here. Tell me the big news story in your part of the world this morning. Dave, the, the uh, big news right here in Frankfurt at the moment is the weather. We had our first real snowstorm of the night. The first snowstorm of the winter, and it's really chilly over here today. You're not alone. Thank you very much, Ed. They're from Frankfurt in London, and we can take you to any place in the world, or Buck can with his magic wires and overseas transmitters. Uh, it was good for me to talk to Ed Hocker there because we were page boys together here in Radio City about 400 years ago. I want you to meet another friend of mine, Jim Fleming. Jim is our news editor who handles all the news as it comes out of the machine and back. Jim's uh, background for this is pretty dandy. You may have remembered the wonderful war correspondent work that he did. He covered the Cairo and Tehran conferences. And Jim was in Moscow for a long time until, how would you put that? You objected so strongly to the censorship uh, <coughs> they ejected me, Dave. <laughs> I didn't want to say yeah. thrown out, but <laughs> it's Ejected. a pleasure and an honor, I guess, to be admitted from there, isn't it? Pleasure to be with you, Dave. Good kind. Yeah. We'll have Jim with regular quarter-hour reports, 15 minutes after and 15 minutes of every morning. Here are the, uh, the guts of the place. This is where the machines do the news and bring it right into us. Here's the United Press teletype in this corner. And International and AP over here, all the news services feed into here. And let me uh, make a point. See all these newspapers here? This is not a program from New York to you someplace if you don't live in New York. This is a program from America to America so that the guy in one city knows what the people in other cities are feeling and thinking. 
That's why we fly in the newspapers from most important American cities every day. The airlines do a wonderful job for us. They fly them in, and actually the morning papers. Here's the Minneapolis Morning Tribune, Monday morning, this very morning. And here it is, and a guy who lives in Wilmington, Delaware, can see that the big story in Minneapolis is Truman withdrawing Clark's appointment to the Vatican. Uh, or a dog leads rescuer to frozen woman. So that the whole country, by means of this show, is more closely put together. We hope to do that. Got some pictures just came off? Yes, we'll leave some of them earlier during the oh, night. Oh, well, we'll show them then a little later in the day. Thought maybe that was a wet one like I just told you about. We, uh, we hope to do all this and not get stuffy about it. We hope to keep you more free, more informed, because I believe, as I hope you do, that an informed people tends to be a free people. Not only with the sounds that you've seen up there, but the uh, eyes that we have all over the country. We have NBC mobile units, television-wise, many different points. In fact, I think I can call in a few of them right now. Let me see what my schedule was. The first camera I'm going to go to, if it's on, it's dark in New York, pretty dark. And that doesn't look like it's New York, does it? I think that may be Washington. Wait till I get on the intercom and find out. Thanks, that's Washington coming up, isn't it? Uh, that, oh, there, there we are up on the roof now. Well, my monitor is going from Washington to the roof. Put me up on the roof again now. Okay, roof, take it, roof. Roof is over here. That's the roof? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's almost dark up there this morning. Up on the RCA roof, you can see it's foggy. It's raining miserably in New York at the moment. And those are some big uh, smoke stacks or air ventilation stacks. Beyond that, you can see nothing because it's still pretty dark and there's a heavy fog up that high at the top of the roof. Now we'll uh, take it down in Washington at the Wardman, top of the Wardman Park Hotel. Take it, Washington. This, uh, Dave, is the Pentagon building over in Arlington, Virginia. Things aren't so visible from the Wardman Park, but that's the Pentagon building where a few people already have come to work. You can see a few cars there, people driving up. And we'll take a little quick look around the horizon. We're switching from the mall entrance. There's the moon up in the corner there. We're switching from the mall entrance to the Pentagon. We're now looking over toward Fort Myer and uh, Arlington Cemetery. Sort of panning along the Shirley Highway, one of the main highway entrances to Washington, D.C., where all the people come to work from Virginia. There's the Potomac River. In the foreground, you can see one of the two main parking lots that service the Pentagon building. And over in the background, you should pretty soon begin to see some Washington, D.C. lights. Oh, recess time right back. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. Now, like the man said, every 15 minutes, direct news. It's quarter after the hour. Yes. So this time, at least, I'll take you way up and introduce you to our news editor, Jim Fleming, who will bring you the quarter after and quarter of news. It seems like I've just been here. Here's James now, and here's the news of the day. Right, Dave. Top story, the White House will not resubmit the nomination of General Mark Clark as envoy to the Vatican. Clark himself has asked that his name be withdrawn because of what he called the controversy that's developed. Despite Protestant opposition, the White House says it will submit another name for the post. Egyptian guerrilla hit-and-run tactics against British troops in the Suez Canal have resulted in 17 deaths in the past 24 hours. 
The British expect more large-scale attacks. The man of the day, I think, Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas announces that he'll be a candidate for neither president nor vice president, and he's told the president so in a letter. Presidential economic advisor Kaiserling predicts a national budget close to $95 billion, hints of new taxes in the coming year. Those inflammable sweaters are in the news this morning. They burn in a matter of seconds. They've been traced to manufacturers in New York and Cleveland. They've been sold all over the country by door-to-door -door peddlers. Massachusetts police say brushed rayon has also been made into rugs and is also inflammable. Gales and high seas holding up that search for survivors in the Pacific freighter wreck. Captain Carls is in London to catch a New York plane. He'll arrive in New York for a ticker tape parade on Wednesday. This is James Fleming, and that is Dave Garraway. Oh, let me get the weather bureau here. We sent the weather. James, are you there? Yeah, this is another James. This is Jim Fiddler in the weather bureau. Uh, you'd rather be called Jim than Jimmy, isn't that right, boy? Good. I can understand that, and here we go. Wait a minute till I get rid of yesterday's weather here. We had Jim up all day the day before, working on the weather here. Nobody thought to remove same. Jim is our official U.S. weather forecaster, you understand, right in the Weather Bureau where they make the stuff. And we're ready for you. Go ahead, Jim. I'll put it on the map. Mild weather. I, I can't hear you on the uh, studio PA. Uh, are you coming through on the circuit? Wait till I go check this to be sure our listeners not no. coming on the circuit, Dave. Can you All take right. it on the phone? There's my PA. Now I can repeat what Jimmy's saying. Mild weather centrally extending from Texas up through Tennessee. Mild in this area, yeah. Here it turns to rain in Pennsylvania. Yep, here it turns to snow, right in here. I want you to know your forecast is very good because it's raining right here in New York. All right. Rain there. What about some temperatures, Jim? Oh, we got one already. Go ahead. 60 up here. That's a big, long 60. About 32 up here. Freezing drizzle. F. I like freezing drizzle better. Okay. 22. Well, Jim, that'll just about do it for us, and thank you very much for this morning. See you later. That's Jim Fiddler, U.S. weatherman down in Washington. Usually you'll be able to hear Jimmy's voice. The line to Washington's been a little busy this morning. It didn't come quite through on time. There'll be lots of uh, bugs on this show, by the way, from time to time. This is a fairly ambitious undertaking. And uh, just expect a few bugs. Like somebody said, we're like a play in New Haven for the first week. We're getting ready to come into the big town. Well, we'll be like that for a while, but don't mind it, because we don't mind it. Now, we've done that. I'll cross off the weatherman here. Now we're going to have uh, lots of music coming up on this program, by the way. Forgot to tell you how much music there will be. There'll be all kinds of music to keep you happy during much of the morning, because we realize that you're not going to sit with your two pretty eyes glued to that screen. Wouldn't expect that, please. You've got to do lots of things, like mend holes and socks and uh, get the children up and get yourself up and shave and whatnot. So we'll play music as you go along, and that's sort of for stirring your coffee, whatever you like. Here's one by Ralph Flanagan, for example. Solo folk, huh? Bye. Keep you waiting till it's getting aggravating. You're a slow folk. Don't worry, but you never seem to hurry. You're a slow folk. Time means nothing to you. I wait and then play again. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, what is it saying? Why should I linger every time you snap your finger, little slow folk?
Let's go up and see what uh, those newspaper headlines we spoke are. Jim, you're up there. Show them the headlines from this morning, will you? Dave. These are newspapers from all over the country. We're very proud and happy that publishers and the airlines have cooperated to bring to today all of these papers so we can give you an impression of the USA this morning, the opinion across the country. It's rather interesting to, to note how stories are, are handled in different parts of the country. Let's take the headline here. I don't know if you can come up close enough to see it. It's the Minneapolis what? Morning Tribune. Now, here's an important story to the Minneapolis Morning Tribune. Prime Minister Churchill, it said, is thinking oh, about appointing Field Marshal Viscount Montgomery to a high post in, uh, in the British government in Britain. Now, that's of great interest. That's of great interest up there because Minneapolis, Minnesota, is close to the Canadian border. Naturally, they're following the Canadian news. Every, all across the country, we find different treatments. Here's the final edition of the San Francisco Chronicle in by wire photo. The big news in San Francisco and Northern California is storm damage this morning. Jim, Hello, I think Jack. That's one of the most terrific things I've ever run into. I mean, the San Francisco Chronicle, mm -hmm. 3,000 miles away, and we've got it in the studio here. New York Times, Excuse me, well, it's just about right? 7.24. Jack, not only by wire photo, but Dave, it's coming in... Recess time. Recess time. <laughs> just stand by for a moment. We'll Mark be right seven. back. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore, What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. Well, this is a, in the order of a short demonstration, short, I promise, to give you an idea of the tools that we have to work with on this program. We will be taking you to most major, major American cities as we go along in the months and years. We just want you to know we can get the eyes and the ears of our facilities into almost any place. For example, my good friend Jim Hurlbut is out in Chicago right now. Let's see what Jim has got. Take it, Jim, in Chicago. There's that boy. Dave, now we've moved over in front of the loop terminal of the Illinois Central Suburban Railroad. And up from that tunnel behind me, you'll see some 2,000 commuters come in in the three minutes that are around us right now. These folks come from as far south as South Bend, Indiana, the jobs all over Chicago's loop. They come on foot, too, into this section from the near north side. And over on Michigan Avenue, which you can see just behind us there, the corner of Randolph and Michigan, that's one of the busiest corners down here on the north end of the loop at the rush hour because you've got cars coming off the outer drive from the south side and the north side. You've car got cars coming from north and south on Michigan Boulevard. It's early yet really isn't quite 8 o'clock here in Chicago, and yet the rush hour is really underway. And again, behind me here, you can see those commuters coming from their homes, ready for another day's work in Chicago's loop inside the Iron Triangle. The Iron Triangle, of course, being the loop itself. We've had quite a morning here in Chicago. This fog, they tell us, is going to be with us all morning long. And you can see it on that big spectacular electric sign. You can see that the fog is swirling around us. There's our truck over on the bridge that leads across the Illinois Central tracks to the outer drive. 
And if we could see just a little bit further up to the north, we could see the Michigan Avenue Bridge, where a lot of these people are going now to jobs in the Wrigley Building and the Tribune Tower. These buses that you see lined up here bring folks down the loop from all over Chicago, and that's the story from Chicago right now, Dave. So take it away, Dave Garraway. There we are. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, old friend. And he is that. That's my old hometown. It looks pretty familiar to me. Now my new hometown is right here in New York, where there are more people doing more things than you can imagine. Over in Grand Central Station right this minute, NBC has a camera. Let's look at the most concentrated transportation cross point in the universe. Grand Central Station at seven minutes of nine in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. And now you can begin to see some of the 150,000 people who arrive in Grand Central Station every morning. This uh, concourse in front of us here is just crowded with people. Hustle and bustle, hurly-burly, the fast pace that we spoke of earlier has already been accentuated a great deal. In addition to the people you see in your screen, many of the people are arriving on the lower level concourse, and of course we don't get a chance to see them from our vantage point here in the mezzanine. Also, directly under us, many of the trains from the west and the north are arriving, and of course we don't see those either. It's almost nine o'clock and the rush is just about at its peak. Incidentally, I think you should know that there's a train arrives here every 47 seconds at this point. And that's Grand Central Station right now. We're gonna take a little time out for a short recess right at this minute. Be right back, folks. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Oh, me, yeah, I'm here. Um, zoom in on number two if you can. I want to show you something. This is made by a man I'm not sure I'd like to meet or not. It's a gadget. We've got a whole box full of new kinds of gadgets that are coming out. This is a needle threader. If you can't thread a needle either, get one of these and you put the eye in this little place here like this. And um, then you push on this little button here. It really does work. I tried it and it threads the needle for you. That's all you're gonna do. Can you see that? Yeah, that's right. All you do is push that little button there and the prime annoyance of life, for men at least, who are trying to thread needles is all fixed. We hope to have lots of little gadgets to make life more worthwhile on this program. And I see it's time to say goodbye to our Eastern Zone listeners. And to sincerely, and I'll stand up to say this because I mean it that way, thank you for being with us on our very first today's show. Like I say, we've got lots of bugs, but we'll try to get them out and give you a smooth, interesting, mu musical, and informative, and freedom-making show on television in the morning. Thank you. Goodbye until tomorrow morning. Peace. It is a big anniversary. Real big. 70 years, you get a big statue. Very first, good morning. Good morning, tough I... news. First, here's the news. Morning, everyone. Good I'm... morning. Welcome to today. On... Welcome to today. On... In your neck of the woods. Happy it's birthday. Recorded in the history books. It's hard to. You know what? When you sit with that and think this program has been on the air for 70 years, 
older than all of us. Really, it just kind of blows your mind. And it also makes you feel kind of small in its shadow. Cuba tonight is an island in revolt. The nation and the world today mourn the 46-year-old chief executive. These are the honor guards of President Kennedy. Dr. Martin Luther King died violently last night in Memphis, Tennessee. The Vietnam War will continue. Hell no, we will go! The biggest White House scandal in a century. Well, I'm not a crook. No justice, no peace! Violence erupted after the acquittal of four white policemen in the beating trial of black motorist Rodney King. And it went on through the night. A Thursday morning that finds this country at war with Iraq. The tsunami was spawned by a magnitude 9 quake off the coast of Indonesia. Help me, please, King. Please. One of the darkest days in American history, the U.S. Capitol under siege, stormed by an angry mob of Trump supporters. Welcome, I'm Bryant Gumbel. The Today Show was always on in my house growing up. We're going to be talking with the man who holds the second highest office in the land. He is, of course, Vice President George Bush. And every morning, I got ready to go to school watching Bryant interview newsmakers and presidents and heads of state and athletes and actors. And when the Today Show went on the air, uh, I mean, TVs weren't being turned on. If you turned on your TV, you got, I mean, that was it. And there was a, a test pattern. Was, so, uh, you know, Pat Weaver, the president of NBC says, you know what? People get up, they want to turn their TVs on. They got this new box sitting in their living room. Let's give them something to, to watch. And they, they started the Today Show. And, and look, a lot of folks thought, you're nuts. This is crazy. Well, here we are. Good morning to you. The very first good morning of what I hope and suspect will be a great many. Good morning between you and I. Here it is, Jack said, January 14th, 1952, when NBC begins a new program called Today. Historically, for 70 years, going back to Dave Garraway, was you never felt like you were being talked at. It was more like a friend or a family. It's a part of a television show that tries not only to fill in the world on the news every morning, but to be kind of a friend in the house. Morning, all. I'm Tom Brokaw here with Jane Pauley. Good morning. The newest member, old Uncle Willard. The newest I think the secret sauce to me and why, why this show has lasted 70 years is it's simple. It's the simplest thing of all. It's good company. We'll sit with you. Sure. You having breakfast? OK. Having a crummy morning? We're here. Having the best morning of your life? We're still here. Your kid's not eating his Cheerios? We're here. You know, kids are late to school? We get it. I think it's just good company. And I think that people like that. I like good company. And I feel like that that's something that we have provided. We, I'm saying, the Today Show family for 70 years. You sit with us and we'll make, we'll, we'll start your day off okay. So happy that you are joining us on this Tuesday morning. I think this show has so much ambition because the idea was always to be news first, to set the agenda, to set the table, to inform viewers, but also do it with this beautiful mix of lightness and humor and joy, a little weather, a little celebrity, a little razzle dazzle, but always first and foremost, the news. What do people need to know to start their days? Savannah Hoda, good morning uh, to both of you. We are in Lafayette Park. We are, as you can see behind me, just steps away from the White House. This is the same spot where I stood last night uh, as violence erupted. I think when the Today Show is at its best is when something has happened, either late at night or overnight, and we are there, 7 o'clock Eastern, giving you a front row seat to whatever that is. See that fire uh, that's been set uh, just in front of the White House outside Lafayette Park. I remember when I was growing up, the first time I marveled at how impressive it was. It was 1995. It was the Oklahoma City bombing. Good morning. You're looking at a live picture of what's left of the federal building in Oklahoma City, the site of the worst terrorist bombing to ever hit the United States. I was a teenager and I woke up that morning and there was Bryant Gumbel in front of um, that hollowed out building. You can see the federal building right behind me, or what's left of it, nine stories with a hole blown in the north wall. And I remember thinking even then, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. And we still do it. Uh, when disaster strikes, 
We're there first thing in the morning. When something amazing happens, when there's some sort of like great inspiration, when the Chilean miners were hoisted to safety, we're right there. A lot of excitement, a lot of emotion here as the rescues are now continuing ahead of schedule. The 11th minor to be brought out, Jorge Galleguillos, as you see there with that newly grown beard. He was the 11th, as I said, to be rescued. When I'm headed out in the middle of the night sometimes to, to breaking news for the show, in my mind, I'm thinking, I've got millions of people who need me to get this right. Savannah, good morning to you again. Derek Chauvin waking up at a correctional facility about 30 minutes from where I'm standing right now. A moment, 11 long months in the making for George Floyd's family. Whether it's a riot, whether it's uh, a hurricane, whether it's Notre Dame on fire. Now it's become a bit of a solemn spectacle. Folks still stopping, all of them looking up, wondering how long is it going to take to rebuild Notre Dame? There are people who are going to wake up at seven o'clock and who are going to be looking to me to tell them what happened and to get it right. Breaking news on a Tuesday morning. I remember covering the Boston Marathon attack, and that was really early on at my time in the Today Show. And we are learning more about the dual explosions that rocked the Boston Marathon. Breaking news out of Boston. Here is what we know right now. We were on the air seven straight hours live, and it was me alone, alone on the set but not alone because I had our incredible producers and crews and correspondents. But I remember thinking in that moment, oh wow, this is, I have to get this right. I, you know, there's, this is, there's no time for sloppiness or error. I think here's the truth of it. When there's a breaking news story, it is everywhere. So then you have a choice to make. Where am I going to find it? Where do I want to receive it? Where's my place where I can receive it with sort of gentle hands. Here it is, you know. And I think that that's why the show stands out. Because you can certainly get news anywhere you want, at any time you want. But it's not always that you get to sit with someone you're comfortable with. I'd rather someone I love tell me, hey, this is what went down. It's not great, but here's, here's what happened. And we are upstairs on a balcony roof right now. We not only come in with breaking news, but we contextualize it. We, we make it more palatable in a sense because we're going through it with you. I mean, I can't think of a more sacred moment than the morning of 9-11. You know, uh, I remember saying on the air, it's a perfect day. It's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful morning here in the Northeast. Let's check the rest of your weather, show you what's going on for today. Nobody had any idea, not just this city would be changed forever. This country, this world was changed forever. We have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available at this point in time. And at that moment, I think we were all one. Not just us in the studio, but everybody watching at home. We were trying to comfort each other, and it was a two-way street. Of course, we'll let people know as soon as we have more information as to what actually caused this, and of course, on everybody's mind, who was yeah. might have been hurt as a result of, the, of this terrible, terrible incident. And on that day, I could not have been prouder to have been part of this show. Today Show's newest fan. This is the moment. Little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. This is your moment. Your moment. Your moment. Ooh, the answer's gone.
the Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Since President Harry Truman, the Today Show has been holding politicians' feet to the fire. Over the years, politicians have loved to come to the Today Show because we do have that collegiality and it's a great audience and, and politicians want to reach that audience. But if they come to the Today Show, they can expect a hard question. Well, let's talk about that third person, Ross hey, Perot. I told you I was going to be here for 30 seconds. Well, I know, but aren't I great? I'm one of these less contentious reporters who can convince yeah, you to stick around and talk with me. Yeah. And sometimes maybe harder than they anticipated. I hear a lot that you are sometimes slow to react. Are you the leader of the opposition in exile right now in the Republican Party? Do you get how bad it looks? I have the transcript of the call. Do you think this was a perfect call? Yeah. Have you known that he's, he is a liar, as you say? Well, absolutely. He Why don't you work for him? Savannah, slow down. And when I think about what to ask, I'm thinking about what people at home are wondering. I'm thinking about the question that maybe the politician doesn't want to answer, but people at home really want to know. And I think that's our role. You know, I interviewed President Obama at the White House. If this resolution fails in Congress, would you act without Congress? The, the answer could be yes, no, or I haven't decided. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that I haven't decided. Welcome, Mr. President, and thank you for being well, that here. That was very well stated, I have to say. I did the town hall with President Trump just weeks before the election. So the stakes were really high. We were in the middle of a pandemic and the election was weeks away and it was controversial. That was a retweet. People can decide for themselves. I don't, themselves. I don't the take president. a position. You're not like someone's crazy uncle who no, can no, just retweet no, no. whatever. That was a retweet. I have a pretty little colon. That's it? We were up to the top, mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. I'll stay up there a little longer. I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. The Today Show has a long history of sparking conversations about subjects people usually don't like to talk about and almost never on TV. We lost Frank. I, I want to thank everybody for your love. I'll tell you when I realized the possibilities of the platform. A couple years ago, my, uh, my older brother was, was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer, late, late stage, and, and uh, I went to the powers that be and I said, you know, I, I think we can, we can do some good here. And we profiled him and his treatment and his doctor and, and just colon cancer in, in general. We, we decided to, to shine a light on it. And he ultimately, you know, he, he didn't make it, he died. And during the course of that, during the course of the coverage, because we did a number of follow-up stories as well on colon cancer, not an exaggeration, hundreds of people. I heard from them, whether it's email or on the streets or on the plaza, they would say, hey, I got screened because I saw your story on your brother, or, or I, I, I made my, my husband get screened, or I called my doctor because something went right and I saw your story and I started asking about family history. That's when I realized. Cleveland Cavaliers forward Kevin Love details his bout with a very public panic attack. I was uh, diagnosed with GAD, general anxiety disorder, and mild panic, very similar to what Kevin Love was talking about there. And during the piece, as he was describing his panic attack, I was saying to Craig Melvin, my colleague, oh my God, this has happened to me a million times. And he was like, what, really? He's like, can I ask you about that? And so when we came out of the piece, I first started sharing that I was had been diagnosed for GAD, generalized anxiety disorder, and, and panic attacks. You feel like you're dying. In fact, I went to the hospital, and the first thing you put it on, I got leads on my chest. I'm like, my heart's going to stop, or I'm gonna have a heart attack. And of course, what happens is you're perfectly fine. From that moment on, it's become something that I've really tried to take ownership of here at the Today Show and NBC News to cre help create that conversation around mental health and help break the stigma of talking about mental health and bringing the stats to life. And you know, I'm somebody that has suffered in silence and there's so many millions of us that do. And I'm really proud of that, the part that I've 
you know, been able to just kind of share what's worked for me and my struggles. And in turn, it's hopefully helped other people share their story. And that's really what's so important with mental health is to get that conversation going. I do have something to tell you. That little girl, Haley Joy. Yes. <laughs> I'm She's fine. Um, is my daughter. No! Yay! Wow! Congratulations! Oh my gosh! I adopted her. And I think no matter what the experience is, whether it's breast cancer or adoption or, you know, getting engaged later in life, whatever it is, I feel like sometimes if, if, if I get hope from people who do things um, that I feel like are, are difficult at the time. And so, I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm providing except for just, you know, kind of telling my business. The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. The news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some of my favorite moments on the Today Show had me going places I never really thought I would see, or not not the way I got to see them through the show. I got to go visit the Holy Land. And when we walk through these doors, we're going to see Calvary. On the valley, we're going to see Calvary itself. Calvary is where Jesus was crucified, now located inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I knew, I, I always wanted to visit Israel, to go with the Today Show and have access to the places, the wisdom of experts. It was a phenomenal professional experience, but it was also a deeply personal and spiritual experience. And good morning from the Sydney Opera House in Sydney, Australia. We I went to Australia, which actually is the place I was born, but I had no memory of it. In all my life, Australia ha held this kind of mystical quality of this other land. And not only did I get to visit the house where I lived when I was a newborn baby, we found the hospital where I was born, we found the room where I was born, and they even found the midwives from that era who basically delivered me. This is the room that you took your first breath in. <gasps> oh my gosh. How does that oh feel? My I think seeing the very place you were born is not something most people get to do or That's see. True. To get to go back with my mom, this is really special, special time. Amazingly awesome. And to top it all off, to be in the place where it all began for us, <laughs> to be in the room where it all began for us is a memory I will treasure. Love you. We love you. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just the answer.
today's show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year gonna look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just love that. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, the United Shutdown of America. Look, the pandemic, we were, we were just like everybody else. We were working from home or we were living at work. I can't figure out which one it was, but we were separated from each other. And you don't realize how much you feed off of each other. It's a little funky looking at this three box, but I'm happy to be sitting in between you guys. I think what connected us was this common mission, this feeling that these are serious times, people are terrified. We have the opportunity to ask the questions of these doctors and experts and public health officials. Joining us now from Washington, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. <sighs> Look who it is! That's it! Go! Slow-mo <laughs> run shot! Are we allowed to hug? It's Al Roker! Oh, yes! Yes! Also, when we got back together and we got to see each other again for the first time, when we got to sit next to each other for the first time, when we got to hug each other, we'll never take that for granted again. I didn't fully appreciate how much we were a part of people's lives during the pandemic until folks started returning to the plaza. And you would get like teachers and nurses, especially, who would say, Craig, thank you. Thank you for helping us get through the pandemic. And I was like, and at first I was like, what do you mean? You mean like the, the doctors who would, no, no, no. Like, it was heavy, it was hard. And we would turn on the Today Show in the morning because we knew we'd get the information that we needed. But we also knew that we would laugh and we would smile with you guys. Today Show viewers come here every single day to propose, to, to wave to friends and family, to hold up signs, to share messages, to be with us. Um, and that is a huge, huge part of the recipe of success for the show for 70 years. Like we can't do this without the people who come down here to the plaza and our viewers nationwide. The show really first got going. It was in a window on that same side of the street on 49th Street and and everybody would stop by. It was it was it was like we had taken the, the beauty and the majesty and the mystery of television. Because if you gotta remember, again, back at that time, people would literally stand in front of appliance stores and watch TV through the glass. Well now, they could come and watch TV through the glass and the TV was watching them. Well, well part of our cast is you, uh, you the public at least. See, we're in a big glass in kind of fishbowl here. We can look out the window, as you see, and see the people who are looking in at us anytime. And we see all sorts of fascinating folks from home out there, and sometimes they stand out there and look at us and wave at the folks back home. Here we are, TikTok, the interweb, the tweeter, all that stuff. But you know what? People still like to be seen on TV to the folks back home. There's the beauty of it. In 1952, people were waving, and the TV camera was panning them. And here we are in the 21st century, and people are still waving and holding up signs and hoping that somebody back home sees them. How great is that? The audience is the heart of this show, whether they're at home or whether they're in our plaza or whether they're peeking through our window. The audience is the beating heart of this show. It's literally why we get up in the morning. People have made the Today Show part of their mornings and part of their lives and part of their families for decades. 
you will meet people who say, my grandma watched the Today Show, my mom watched the Today Show, now I watch the Today Show, my kids watch it with me. People who watch the Today Show feel like their family, and guess what? We feel like your family too. I've always felt like an audience member, because that's what I feel like I am a lot of the time. Like when I walk out, I think I would be doing that. I would be coming to 30 Rock. I'd hold up a sign. I know my mom would. She'd be out there with a sign. So I think when you look out and you see like bright shining faces of, of people who've waited, you know, for this magical moment, it's so um, like incredibly satisfying and beautiful to share in it. Like that's what I feel like when I walk out. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to find out like who's here. So what, bring, what brings you to the Today Show? Well, I mean, this, we've always wanted to do this, and um, today's show is a part of our life. We've and been watching it every day for seven years when we met, so, yeah. so from a boat. Yeah. Super fans. <laughs> My name is well, good morning, Barbara. Huh? Barbara Walters, the Jane Paulies, the Katies, the Merediths, they blew the doors open. And then me and Savannah just strolled through. We're like, hey, thanks. We are kicking off the year right because Hoda is officially the co-anchor of today. Hoda, you are a partner and a friend and a sister, and I am so happy to be doing this. Well, there's no one I'd rather be sitting next to in 2018. A woman stopped me with her child, and she said, thank you, because now my daughter thinks this is totally normal. To me, the Today Show is the gold standard. The producers, the crew, the staff, Everyone who puts this show together, far more than the people you see on TV, they are the best of the best, and they pour themselves into it every day and every night. People tune in because they know what they're going to see is reliable, it's accurate, it's well-produced, it's curated, it's important. We won't waste your time. And I think that's why the show continues to be relevant. It's that, and then it's also that hopefully people feel a connection and feel a bond with the people on set who are sharing the news with them. I mean, in a way, I, I, I feel like it, it's different than some anchorman voice of God telling you what's going on in the world. I feel like we are coming on together and we are informing, but also processing the news with our viewers. And there's a connection there. And to me, that has stood the test of time and is what will continue to stand the test of time. People have tuned in and the people who brought them that news will have changed. But the mission has it, to find out that the world is still there and get them ready for their day. Here's the thing about life, okay, for all of us. Every single working environment, family, group, has days that it's bright and shiny and there's nothing better. And we also have days when we're on our knees. And that's the way life goes. That's the way it goes. And you just ride the waves, and I feel like that's how you have to navigate just life in general. And we navigate it at work. Some days are the best day ever, and some days you wonder, like, what in the heck's going on? But no matter what, you adjust your sails and you go because we got a long road. We're only 70? I mean, like, we're babies, you know, goo goo. We got a long way to go. I think Dave Garraway and everyone that started this little project in black and white would be astonished and amazed, and I hope they'd be proud. Thank you, goodbye until tomorrow morning. Peace. January 14th, 1952, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are in NBC's World Communications Center in the heart of Radio City, New York. We are in touch with the world. We'll tell you what's happening today. My name is Jack Laskula. And here is Dave Garrowan. Well, here we are. And good morning to you. The very first good morning of what I hope and suspect will be a great many. Good morning between you and I. Here it is, 
Jack said January 14th, 1952, when NBC begins a new program called Today, and if it doesn't sound too revolutionary, I really believe it begins a new kind of television. We'll be with you every day for two hours in the morning, just about the time you get up, 7 to 9 a.m. We're going to try very much to put you more closely in touch with the world we live in by the magnificent, unparalleled means of communication which NBC has assembled into a single room in New York. We call this room our communication center. From it, we'll put you in touch with the whole world, and not only with news, which we'll cover as no program ever has been able to cover before, because they didn't have this many tools, but we'll give you lots of music, music of today, what good records are coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow in art, tomorrow in science, tomorrow and today in sports. All fields of human endeavor, we think we'll be able to inform you better about, and the people who are close to you, than you had a chance to be informed before. So that as you leave the house at the end of the day, you're close to it at the beginning of the day, knowing where you're going and what the world is like that you're going into. That sounds like a pretty big job. Believe me, it is. We've been working on this for quite a while. We're glad finally to have made the grain into your home for the first day. We hope we can give you enough to stay with you for a long time. Now, that's a preamble, and you know how preambles are. I mostly talk, and I like to get going and put you in touch today with the world you're going to live in. Our feature will have news, by the way, every quarter hour. You can depend on that. Every half hour, we'll have a two-minute summary, a capsule of the day that you're going to live in. We call it Today and Two Minutes. And here it is for the first time. January 14th, 1952. Here's today's headline. Indochina crisis. Rebels use Russian radar guns. The headline picked from the New York Herald Tribune today as the headline of the day. Here's today's front page story. The story of the inflammable explosive sweaters made from synthetic rayon, which have been exploding in 50 seconds. They've been all impounded now, and the police department is rounding up a few more remaining ones. Here are faces in the news today. This is the famous Princess Margaret, and now amounts to engagement tentatively and rumored to the Earl of Dalkeith. His mother is on the left. Here are trends of today. Here's William O. Douglas of the Supreme Court, who has told the president that he is not interested in running for vice president. Now there are places in the news today. First, here is Oak Ridge, birthplace of the atomic bomb. Senator Gordon Dean, atomic chairman, says the big problem for the AEC is to expand atomic energy and still keep our overall economy in the balance. To the left of that picture, here is a boy in Wellesley, Massachusetts, 12-year-old John Howe, taking a close look at the broken rail that he spotted to avert a probable train wreck. There are places today out west, too, across the sun country in Big Bear, California, where the Sunshine State is battling snowstorms like this one, and an occasional flood for good measure, too. Now, here is opening night on Broadway. Husband and wife, George S. Kaufman and Louine McGrath, co-authors of a new play, Fancy Meeting You Again. And she acts in it. He staged it. New books are out today. Here is Fleur Cole's Bloody President, which looks Argentina today and yesterday. Looks most particularly at Evita Perón. Here's the newsreel of the hour. The hero of the hour, too, the man who all men went down with the ship at sea. Captain Kurt Carlson, commander of the famous Flying Enterprise as he talked to citizens, thankfully, at Falmouth, England. He started singing so fast that uh, there was not time for the helicopter to arrive, and uh, the weather was too bad for the helicopter to come out anyway. So we decided between the two of us we would walk out on the smokestack, which we did, and uh, <laughs> with our life jackets on, we jumped from the smokestack into the sea and swam toward the uh, uh, tugboat turmoil where the crew was ready to pick us up, and uh, in less than nine minutes, we were brought in the uh, turmoil, where we were handed some warm tea and rum, some warm clothes, and then we had a very welcome rest. And what are you going to do now? I'm going to sleep. Until he gets back to New York, where he'll be hero of the day. There's Jimmy DeMerit, hero of the Bing Crosby Pro Amateur Sports Tournament, cut to 36 holes from 72 because of big heavy rains in the Monterey Peninsula. There is today in capsule form, just about this big. So as you leave the house, you know where you are and what's going to happen to it. That feature will come on this program every half hour. 
Every quarter hour after and quarter of the hour, we'll have another news broadcast for you. So anytime you tune us in, you'll know, uh, well, you'll know what time it is, like you see, 7.05 in the east here. You'll find the news also running over my feet like this. And you'll find our communication center full at work and about to put you in touch with the day. Let me, uh, let me take a little tour with you if you're not busy for a second and find out some of the tools and some of the people who work on the news as it comes in. This is in no sense a studio. This is really a working news center. The news actually is written and put together here in front of your eyes and will be every morning. Uh, this uh, character here, for example, is Jack Les Cooley, who is a very warm-blooded character. Jack and I are old friends from the Grouch Club days. You heard that wonderful show of Jack's on the West Coast a few seasons ago. Jack will be my right hand, left hand, and probably middle head much of the time. This is a desk where some of the news is put together and some of the features are assembled by uh, pretty girls like Mary Kelly, who's talking to who you're talking to. I have the weather bureau waiting for you, Dave. Oh, that's right. You got your electric typewriter awakened, too? Mm -hmm. This is a, a fantastic machine. If you can get real close to it, it just sounds like a machine gun. Isn't that pretty? How fast? Yeah, <laughs> finally beat him. Uh, these are our tape recording machines that put down the voices of people all over the world who may have spoken during the night or who may speak on our early morning program. We'll record them for rebroadcast later. Dad, I hope you're all lined up there. This is the uh, telephoto machine. Anybody coming in? Yes, we're taking a picture now from San Francisco oh. of the 25th Division. Of what? The 25th Division. Is Good enough. See, the picture will come in on this machine. We'll show it to you maybe minutes after it was taken. The print we show you will still be wet, but you won't be able to feel it at home, I hope. Uh, let's look up here. I want you to meet Buck Prince. Buck is our overseas news editor. Buck, who you got on the circuit this morning? Uh, we'll see. We got London standing by, and we got Franker standing by. You got please. London there? Well, let me have a can yeah. here. Hello, London. Hello, London. Stand by, London. London, is that Romney Wheeler? Good morning, Romney. This is the first of the NBC series of Today Broadcasts. Well, today, uh, here in London, we're pleased and proud to be part of this exciting new experiment. Well, sounds like we're both pretty happy. What's the big news story in London this morning, Romney? Well, Dave, before you sign off, I want to give you the latest on those two ships that are breaking up in a storm on the English coast this morning. Go ahead. Well, for a while, I thought we had another Captain Carlson on our hands. The French steamer Hagen weathered ground on the Goodwin Sands last night and broke in two. Dawn, her lifeboat got out to her and took all 37 crewmen, but Captain Maurice Landro wouldn't leave his ship. But just a few minutes before I came on the air here, I got word that the lifeboat has made a second trip to the wreck, and Captain Landro has been brought safely ashore. Good news, Romney, and thank you from London. Uh, Buck, put me under Frankfurt there, right, will you? just a minute, Steve. We turn our non-system monitor selector right. to 13. Hello, Ed Hocker in Frankfurt. Yeah, hello, hello. Greetings from Frankfurt, Dave. Yeah, there. Good to hear your voice, Ed, from the Good old days of New York here. Tell me the big news story in your part of the world this morning. Dave, the, the uh, big news right here in Frankfurt at the moment is the weather. We had our first real snowstorm of the night. The first snowstorm of the winter, and it's really chilly over here today. You're not alone. Thank you very much, Ed. They're from Frankfurt in London, and we can take you to any place in the world, or Buck can with his magic wires and overseas transmitters. Uh, it was good for me to talk to Ed Hocker there because we were page boys together here in Radio City about 400 years ago. I want you to meet another friend of mine, Jim Fleming. Jim is our news editor who handles all the news as it comes out of the machine and back. Jim's uh, background for this is pretty dandy. You may have remembered the wonderful war correspondent work that he did. He covered the Cairo and Tehran conferences. And Jim was in Moscow for a long time until... How would you put that? You objected so strongly to the censorship uh, <coughs> they injected me. They. <laughs> I didn't want to say yeah. thrown out, but <laughs> it's Ejected a pleasure and an honor, I guess, to be emitted from there, isn't it? It's a pleasure to be with you, Dave. Good kind. Yeah. We'll have Jim with regular quarter hour reports, 15 minutes after and 15 minutes of every morning. Here are the, uh, the guts of the place. This is where the machines do the news and bring it right into us. Here's the United Press teletype in this corner. And International and AP over here, all the news services feed into here. And let me uh, make a point. See all these newspapers here? This is not a program from New York to you someplace if you don't live in New York. This is a program from America to America so that the guy in one city knows what the people in other cities are feeling and thinking. That's why we fly in the newspapers from most important American cities every day. The airlines do a wonderful job for us. 
They fly them in, and actually the morning papers. Here's the Minneapolis Morning Tribune, Monday morning, this very morning. And here it is, and a guy who lives in Wilmington, Delaware, can see that the big story in Minneapolis is Truman withdrawing Clark's appointment to the Vatican. Uh, or a dog leads rescuer to frozen woman. So that the whole country, by means of this show, is more closely put together. We hope to do that. Got some pictures just came off? Yes, we'll leave some of them earlier during the day. Oh, well, we'll show them then a little later in the day. Thought maybe that was a wet one like I just told you about. We, uh, we hope to do all this and not get stuffy about it. We hope to keep you more free, more informed, because I believe, as I hope you do, that an informed people tends to be a free people. Not only with the sounds that you've seen up there, but the uh, eyes that we have all over the country. We have NBC mobile units, television-wise, many different points. In fact, I think I can call in a few of them right now. Let me see what my schedule was. The first camera I'm going to go to, if it's on, it's dark in New York, pretty dark. And that doesn't look like it's New York, does it? I think that may be Washington. Wait till I get on the intercom and find out. Thanks, that's Washington coming up, isn't it? Uh, that, oh, there, there we are up on the roof now. Well, my monitor is going from Washington to the roof. Put me up on the roof again now. Okay, roof, take it, roof. Roof is over here. That's the roof? Yeah. Well, it's almost dark up there this morning. Up on the RCA roof, you can see it's foggy. It's raining miserably in New York at the moment. And those are some big uh, smoke stacks or air ventilation stacks. Beyond that, you can see nothing because it's still pretty dark and there's a heavy fog up that high at the top of the roof. Now we'll uh, take it down in Washington at the uh, top of the Wardman Park Hotel. Take it, Washington. This, uh, Dave, is the Pentagon building over in Arlington, Virginia. Things aren't so visible from the Wardman Park, but that's the Pentagon building where a few people already have come to work. You can see a few cars there, people driving up. And we'll take a little quick look around the horizon. We're switching from the mall entrance. There's the moon up in the corner there. We're switching from the mall entrance to the Pentagon. We're now looking over toward Fort Myer and uh, Arlington Cemetery. Sort of panning along the Shirley Highway, one of the main highway entrances to Washington, D.C., where all the people come to work from Virginia. There's the Potomac River. In the foreground, you can see one of the two main parking lots that service the Pentagon building. And over in the background, you should pretty soon begin to see some Washington, D.C. lights. Oh, recess time right back. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just did. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now, like the man said, every 15 minutes, direct news. It's quarter after the hour. Yes. So this time, at least, I'll take you way up and introduce you to our news editor, Jim Fleming, who will bring you the quarter after and quarter of news. It seems like I've just been here. Here's James now, and here's the news of the day. Right, Dave. Top story, the White House will not resubmit the nomination of General Mark Clark as envoy to the Vatican. Clark himself has asked that his name be withdrawn because of what he called the controversy that's developed. Despite Protestant opposition, the White House says it will submit another name for the post. Egyptian guerrilla hit-and-run tactics against British troops in the Suez Canal have resulted in 17 deaths in the past 24 hours. The British expect more large-scale attacks. The man of the day, I think, Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas announces that he'll be a candidate for neither 
president nor vice president, and he's told the president so in a letter. Presidential economic advisor Kaiserling predicts a national budget close to $95 billion, hints of new taxes in the coming year. Those inflammable sweaters are in the news this morning. They burn in a matter of seconds. They've been traced to manufacturers in New York and Cleveland. They've been sold all over the country by door-to-door -door peddlers. Massachusetts police say brushed rayon has also been made into rugs and is also inflammable. Gales and high seas holding up that search for survivors in the Pacific freighter wreck. Captain Carls is in London to catch a New York plane. He'll arrive in New York for a ticker tape parade on Wednesday. This is James Fleming, and that is Dave Garraway. Oh, let me get the weather bureau here. We sent the weather. James, are you there? Yeah, this is another James. This is Jim Fiddler in the weather bureau. Uh, you'd rather be called Jim than Jimmy, isn't that right, boy? Good. I can understand that, and here we go. Wait a minute till I get rid of yesterday's weather here. We had Jim up all day the day before, working on the weather here. Nobody thought to remove same. Jim is our official U.S. weather forecaster, you understand, right in the Weather Bureau where they make the stuff. And we're ready for you. Go ahead, Jim. I'll put it on the map. Mild weather. I, I can't hear you on the uh, studio PA. Uh, are you coming through on the circuit? Wait till I go check this to be sure our listeners not no. coming on the circuit, Dave. Can you All take right. it on the phone? There's my PA. Now I can repeat what Jimmy's saying. Mild weather centrally extending from Texas up through Tennessee. Mild in this area, yeah. Here it turns to rain in Pennsylvania. Yep, here it turns to snow right in here. I want you to know your forecast is very good because it's raining right here in New York. All right. Rain there. What about some temperatures, Jim? Oh, we got one already. Go ahead. 60 up here. That's a big, long 60. About 32 up here. Freezing drizzle. F. I like freezing drizzle better. Okay. 22. Well, Jim, that'll just about do it for us, and thank you very much for this morning. See you later. That's Jim Fiddler, U.S. weatherman down in Washington. Usually you'll be able to hear Jimmy's voice. The line to Washington's been a little busy this morning. It didn't come quite through on time. There'll be lots of uh, bugs on this show, by the way, from time to time. This is a fairly ambitious undertaking. And uh, just expect a few bugs. Like somebody said, we're like a play in New Haven for the first week. We're getting ready to come into the big town. Well, we'll be like that for a while, but don't mind it, because we don't mind it. Now, we've done that. I'll cross off the weatherman here. Now we're going to have uh, lots of music coming up on this program, by the way. Forgot to tell you how much music there will be. There'll be all kinds of music to keep you happy during much of the morning, because we realize that you're not going to sit with your two pretty eyes glued to that screen. Wouldn't expect that, please. You've got to do lots of things, like mend holes and socks and uh, get the children up and get yourself up and shave and whatnot. So we'll play music as you go along, and that's sort of for stirring your coffee, whatever you like. Here's one by Ralph Flanagan, for example. Solo folk, huh? Bye. Keep you waiting till it's getting aggravating. You're a slow folk. Don't worry, but you never seem to hurry. You're a slow folk. Time means nothing to you. I wait and then wait again. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, what is it then? Why should I linger every time you snap your finger, little slow folk? Let's go up and see what uh, those newspaper headlines we spoke are. Jim, you're up there. Show them the headlines from this morning, will you? Dave. 
These are newspapers from all over the country. We're very proud and happy that publishers and the airlines have cooperated to bring to today all of these papers so we can give you an impression of the USA this morning, the opinion across the country. It's rather interesting to, to note how stories are, are handled in different parts of the country. Let's take the headline here. I don't know if you can come up close enough to see it. It's the Minneapolis what? Morning Tribune. Now, here's an important story to the Minneapolis Morning Tribune. Prime Minister Churchill, it said, is thinking oh, about appointing Field Marshal Viscount Montgomery to a high post in, uh, in the British government in Britain. Now, that's of great interest. That's of great interest up there because Minneapolis, Minnesota is close to the Canadian border. Naturally, they're following the Canadian news. Every, all across the country, we find different treatments. Here's the final edition of the San Francisco Chronicle in by wire photo. The big news in San Francisco and Northern California is storm damage this morning. Yeah, Hello, I think Jack. That's one of the most terrific things I've ever run into. I mean, the San Francisco Chronicle, mm -hmm. 3,000 miles away, and we've got it in the studio here. New York Times, well, it's just about way. 724. Jack, not only by wire photo, but Dave, it's coming in recess time. Recess time. <laughs> just stand by for a moment. We'll Mark be right seven. back. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All yeah, right, it's this thing. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> it was talking smack part of this. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Well, this is a, in the order of a short demonstration, short, I promise, to give you an idea of the tools that we have to work with on this program. We will be taking you to most major, major American cities as we go along in the months and years. We just want you to know we can get the eyes and the ears of our facilities into almost any place. For example, my good friend Jim Hurlbut is out in Chicago right now. Let's see what Jim has got. Take it, Jim, in Chicago. There's our boy. Dave, now we've moved over in front of the loop terminal of the Illinois Central Suburban Railroad. And up from that tunnel behind me, you'll see some 2,000 commuters come in in the three minutes that are around us right now. These folks come from as far south as South Bend, Indiana the jobs all over Chicago's loop. They come on foot, too, into this section from the near north side. And over on Michigan Avenue, which you can see just behind us there, the corner of Randolph and Michigan, that's one of the busiest corners down here on the north end of the loop at the rush hour. Because you've got cars coming off the outer drive from the south side and the north side, you've car got cars coming from north and south on Michigan Boulevard. It's early yet, it really isn't quite eight o'clock here in Chicago, and yet the rush hour is really underway. And again, behind me here, you can see those commuters coming from their homes, ready for another day's work in Chicago's loop inside the Iron Triangle. The Iron Triangle, of course, being the loop itself. We've had quite a morning here in Chicago. This fog, they tell us, is going to be with us all morning long. And you can see it on that big spectacular electric sign. You can see that the fog is swirling around us. There's our truck over on the bridge that leads across the Illinois Central tracks to the outer drive. And if we could see just a little bit further up to the north, we could see the Michigan Avenue Bridge, where a lot of these people are going now to
jobs in the Wrigley Building and the Tribune Tower. These buses that you see lined up here bring folks down a loop from all over Chicago, and that's the story from Chicago right now, Dave. So take it away, Dave Garraway. There we are. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, old friend. And he is that. That's my old hometown. It looks pretty familiar to me. Now my new hometown is right here in New York, where there are more people doing more things than you can imagine. Over in Grand Central Station right this minute, NBC has a camera. Let's look at the most concentrated transportation cross point in the universe. Grand Central Station at seven minutes of nine in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. And now you can begin to see some of the 150,000 people who arrive in Grand Central Station every morning. This uh, concourse in front of us here is just crowded with people. Hustle and bustle, hurly-burly, the fast pace that we spoke of earlier has already been accentuated a great deal. In addition to the people you see in your screen, many of the people are arriving on the lower level concourse, and of course we don't get a chance to see them from our vantage point here in the mezzanine. Also, directly under us, many of the trains from the west and the north are arriving, and of course we don't see those either. It's almost nine o'clock and the rush is just about at its peak. Incidentally, I think you should know that there's a train arrives here every 47 seconds at this point. And that's Grand Central Station right now. We're gonna take a little time out for a short recess right at this minute. Be right back, folks. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We begin our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Oh, me? Yeah, I'm here. Um, zoom in on number two if you can. I want to show you something. This is made by a man I'm not sure I'd like to meet or not. It's a gadget. We've got a whole box full of new kinds of gadgets that are coming out. This is a needle threader. If you can't thread a needle either, get one of these and you put the eye in this little place here like this. And um, then you push on this little button here. It really does work. I tried it and it threads the needle for you. That's all you're going to do. Can you see that? Yeah, that's right. All you do is push that little button there and the prime annoyance of life, for men at least, who are trying to thread needles is all fixed. We hope to have lots of little gadgets to make life more worthwhile on this program, and I see it's time to say goodbye to our Eastern Zone listeners, and to sincerely, and I'll stand up to say this because I mean it that way, thank you for being with us on our very first today's show. Like I say, we've got lots of bugs, but we'll try to get them out and give you a smooth, interesting, mu musical, and informative, and freedom-making show on television in the morning. Thank you, goodbye, and until tomorrow morning, peace. It is a big anniversary, real big. 70 years, you get a big statue. Very first, good morning. Good morning, tough I... news. First, here's the news. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to today. On... Welcome to today. On... In your neck of the woods. Happy you birthday. Recorded in the history books, it's hard to You know what? When you sit with that and think, this program has been on the air for 70 years, older than all of us. Really, it just kind of blows your mind. And it also makes you feel kind of 
small in its shadow. Cuba tonight is an island in revolt. The nation and the world today mourn the 46-year-old chief executive. These are the honor guards of President Kennedy. Dr. Martin Luther King died violently last night in Memphis, Tennessee. The Vietnam War will continue. Hell no, we won't go! The biggest White House scandal in a century. Well, I'm not a crook. No justice, no peace! The violence erupted after the acquittal of four white policemen in the beating trial of black motorist Rodney King and it went on through the night. A Thursday morning that finds this country at war with Iraq. The tsunami was spawned by a magnitude nine quake off the coast of Indonesia. Help me please, Katie. Please. One of the darkest days in American history, the U.S. Capitol under siege, stormed by an angry mob of Trump supporters. Welcome, I'm Bryant Gumbel. The Today Show was always on in my house growing up. We're going to be talking with the man who holds the second highest office in the land. He is, of course, Vice President George Bush. And every morning, I got ready to go to school watching Brian interview newsmakers and presidents and heads of state, and athletes and actors. And when the Today Show went on the air, uh, I mean, TVs weren't being turned on. If you turned on your TV, you got I mean, that was it, and there was a, a test pattern. So, uh, you know, Pat Weaver, the president of NBC, says, you know what? People get up, they want to turn their TVs on. They got this new box sitting in their living room. Let's give them something to, to watch. And they, they started the Today Show. And, and look, a lot of folks thought, you're nuts. This is crazy. Well, here we are. Good morning to you. The very first good morning of what I hope and suspect will be a great many. Good morning between you and I. Here it is, Jack said, January 14th, 1952, when NBC begins a new program called Today. Historically, for 70 years, going back to Dave Garraway, was you never felt like you were being talked at. It was more like a friend or a family. It's a part of a television show that tries not only to fill in the world on the news every morning, but to be a kind of a friend in the house. Morning, all. I'm Tom Brokaw here with Jane Pauley. Good morning. And the newest member, old Uncle Willard. The newest I think the secret sauce to me and why, why this show has lasted 70 years is it's simple. It's the simplest thing of all. It's good company. We'll sit with you. Sure. You having breakfast? Okay. Having a crummy morning? We're here. Having the best morning of your life? We're still here. Your kid's not eating his Cheerios? We're here. You know, kids are late to school? We get it. I think it's just good company. And I think that people like that. I like good company. And I feel like that that's something that we have provided. We, I'm saying, the Today Show family for 70 years. You sit with us and we'll make, we'll, we'll start your day off okay. So happy that you are joining us on this Tuesday morning. I think this show has so much ambition because the idea was always to be news first, to set the agenda, to set the table, to inform viewers, but also do it with this beautiful mix of lightness and humor and joy, a little weather, a little celebrity, a little razzle dazzle, but always first and foremost, the news. What do people need to know to start their days? Savannah Hoda, good morning uh, to both of you. We are in Lafayette Park. We are, as you can see behind me, just steps away from the White House. This is the same spot where I stood last night uh, as violence erupted. I think when the Today Show is at its best is when something has happened, either late at night or overnight, and we are there, 7 o'clock Eastern, giving you a front row seat to whatever that is. See that fire uh, that's been set uh, just in front of the White House outside Lafayette Park. I remember when I was growing up, the first time I marveled at how impressive it was. It was 1995. It was the Oklahoma City bombing. Good morning. You're looking at a live picture of what's left of the federal building in Oklahoma City, the site of the worst terrorist bombing to ever hit the United States. I was a teenager and I woke up that morning and there was Bryant Gumbel in front of um, that hollowed out building. You can see the federal building right behind me, or what's left of it, nine stories with a hole blown in the north wall. And I remember thinking even then, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. And we still do it. Uh, when disaster strikes, we're there first thing in the morning. When something amazing happens. 
Indians, when there's some sort of like great inspiration, when the Chilean miners were hoisted to safety, we're right there. A lot of excitement, a lot of emotion here as the rescues are now continuing ahead of schedule. The 11th miner to be brought out, Jorge Gallegos, as you see there with that newly grown beard. He was the 11th, as I said, to be rescued. When I'm headed out in the middle of the night sometimes to, to breaking news for the show, in my mind, I'm thinking, I've got millions of people who need me to get this right. Savannah, good morning to you again. Derek Chauvin waking up at a correctional facility about 30 minutes from where I'm standing right now. A moment, 11 long months in the making for George Floyd's family. Whether it's a riot, whether it's uh, a hurricane, whether it's Notre Dame on fire. Now it's become a bit of a solemn spectacle. Folks still stopping, all of them looking up, wondering how long is it going to take to rebuild Notre Dame? There are people who are going to wake up at seven o'clock and who are going to be looking to me to tell them what happened and to get it right. Breaking news on a Tuesday morning. I remember covering the Boston Marathon attack and that was really early on at my time in the Today Show. And we are learning more about the dual explosions that rocked the Boston Marathon. Breaking news out of Boston. Here is what we know right now. We were on the air seven straight hours live and it was me alone, alone on the set but not alone because I had our incredible producers and crews and correspondents. But I remember thinking in that moment, oh wow, this is, I have to get this right. I, you know, there's, this is, there's no time for sloppiness or error. I think here's the truth of it. When there's a breaking news story, it is everywhere. So then you have a choice to make. Where am I going to find it? Where do I want to receive it? Where's my place where I can receive it with sort of gentle hands. Here it is, you know, and I think that that's why the show stands out because you can certainly get news anywhere you want at any time you want, but it's not always that you get to sit with someone you're comfortable with. I'd rather someone I love tell me, hey, this is what went down. It's not great, but here's, here's what happened. We are upstairs on a balcony roof right now. We not only come in with breaking news, but we contextualize it. We, we make it more palatable in a sense because we're going through it with you. I mean, I can't think of a more sacred moment than the morning of 9-11, you know? Uh, I remember saying on the air, it's a perfect day. It's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful morning here in the Northeast. Let's check the rest of your weather, show you what's going on for today. Nobody had any idea, not just this city would be changed forever. This country, this world was changed forever. We have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available at this point in time. And at that moment, I think we were all one, not just us in the studio, but everybody watching at home, we were trying to comfort each other. And it was a two-way street. Of course, we'll let people know as soon as we have more information as to what actually caused this. And of course, on everybody's mind, who was yeah. might have been hurt as a result of, the, of this terrible, terrible incident. And on that day, I could not have been prouder to have been part of this show. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man in the Richard. All right, it just made two. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day.
people really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the hand of the All right, it just did too. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Since President Harry Truman, the Today Show has been holding politicians' feet to the fire. Over the years, politicians have loved to come to the Today Show because we do have that collegiality and it's a great audience and, and politicians want to reach that audience. But if they come to the Today Show, they can expect a hard question. Well, let's talk about that third person, Ross I mean, Perot. I told you I was gonna be here for 30 seconds. Well, I know, but aren't I great? I'm one of these less contentious reporters who can convince yeah, you to stick around and talk with me. Yeah. And sometimes maybe harder than they anticipated. I hear a lot that you are sometimes slow to react. Are you the leader of the opposition in exile right now in the Republican Party? Do you get how bad it looks? I have the transcript of the call. Do you think this was a perfect call? Yeah. Have you known that he's, he is a liar, as you say? Well, absolutely. He Why did you work for him? Savannah, slow down. And when I think about what to ask, I'm thinking about what people at home are wondering. I'm thinking about the question that maybe the politician doesn't want to answer, but people at home really want to know. And I think that's our role. You know, I interviewed President Obama at the White House. If this resolution fails in Congress, would you act without Congress? The, the answer could be yes, no, or I haven't decided. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that I haven't decided. Welcome, Mr. President, and thank you for being well, that here. That was very well stated, I have to say. I did the town hall with President Trump just weeks before the election. So the stakes were really high. We were in the middle of a pandemic and the election was weeks away and it was controversial. That was a retweet. People can decide for themselves. I don't, themselves. I don't the take president. a position. You're not like someone's crazy uncle who no, can no, just retweet no, no. whatever. That was a retweet. I have a pretty little colon. That's it? We are up to the top, mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. I'll stay up there a little longer. I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. The Today Show has a long history of sparking conversations about subjects people usually don't like to talk about and almost never on TV. We lost Frank. I, I want to thank everybody for your love. I'll tell you when I realized the possibilities of the platform. A couple years ago, my, uh, my older brother was, was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer, late, late stage, and, and uh, I went to the powers that be and I said, you know, I, I think we can, we can do some good here. And we profiled him and his treatment and his doctor and, and just colon cancer in, in general. We, we decided to, to shine a light on it. And he ultimately, you know, he, he didn't make it, he died. And during the course of that, during the course of the coverage, because we did a number of follow-up stories as well on colon cancer, not an exaggeration, hundreds of people. I heard from them, whether it's email or on the streets or on the plaza, they would say, hey, I got screened because I saw your story on your brother, or, or I, I, I made my, my husband get screened, or I called my doctor because something went right and I saw your story and I started asking about family history. That's when I realized. Cleveland Cavaliers forward Kevin Love details his bout with a very public panic attack. I was uh, diagnosed with GAD, general anxiety disorder, and mild panic, very similar to what Kevin Love was talking about there. And during the piece, as he was describing his panic attack, I was saying to Craig Melvin, my colleague, oh my God, this has happened to me a million times. And he was like, what, really? He's like, can I ask you about that? And so when we came out of the piece, I first started sharing that I was had been diagnosed for GAD, generalized anxiety disorder, and, and panic attacks. You feel like you're dying. In fact, I went to the hospital, and the first thing you put it on, I got leads on my chest. I'm like, my heart's going to stop, or I'm gonna have a heart attack. And of course, what happens is you're perfectly fine. From that moment on, it's become something that I've really tried to take ownership of here at the Today Show and NBC News to cre help create that conversation around mental health and help break the stigma of talking about mental health and bringing the stats to life. And you know, I'm somebody that has suffered in silence and there's so many millions of us that do. And I'm really proud of that, the part that I've 
you know, been able to just kind of share what's worked for me and my struggles. And in turn, it's hopefully helped other people share their story. And that's really what's so important with mental health is to get that conversation going. I do have something to tell you. That little girl, Haley Joy. Yes. <laughs> I'm She's fine. Um, is my daughter. No! Yay! Wow! Congratulations! Oh my gosh! I adopted her. And I think no matter what the experience is, whether it's breast cancer or adoption or, you know, getting engaged later in life, whatever it is, I feel like sometimes if, if, if I get hope from people who do things um, that I feel like are, are difficult at the time. And so, I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm providing except for just, you know, kind of telling my business. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We begin our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just is. Some of my favorite moments on the Today Show had me going places I never really thought I would see, or not not the way I got to see them through the show. I got to go visit the Holy Land. And when we walk through these doors, we're going to see Calvary. On the valley, we're gonna see Calvary itself. Calvary is where Jesus was crucified, now located inside the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. I knew, I, I always wanted to visit Israel, to go with the Today Show and have access to the places the wisdom of experts. It was a phenomenal professional experience, but it was also a deeply personal and spiritual experience. And good morning from the Sydney Opera House in Sydney, Australia. We I went to Australia, which actually is the place I was born, but I had no memory of it. In all my life, Australia ha held this kind of mystical quality, this other land. And not only did I get to visit the house where I lived when I was a newborn baby, we found the hospital where I was born. We found the room where I was born. And they even found the midwives from that era who basically delivered me. This is the room that you took your first breath in. <gasps> oh my gosh. How does that oh feel? Oh my gosh. I think seeing the very place you were born is not something most people get to do or That's see. True. To get to go back with my mom, this is really special. Special time. Amazingly awesome. And to top it all off, to be in the place where it all began for us, <laughs> to be in the room where it all began for us is a memory I will treasure. Love you. We love you. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the 
Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just did. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this? Good morning, the United Shutdown of America. Look, the pandemic, we were, we were just like everybody else. We were working from home or we were living at work. I can't figure out which one it was, but we were separated from each other. And you don't realize how much you feed off of each other. It's a little funky looking at this three box, but I'm happy to be sitting in between you guys. I think what connected us was this common mission, this feeling that these are serious times. People are terrified. We have the opportunity to ask the questions of these doctors and experts and public health officials. Joining us now from Washington, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. <sighs> Look who it is! That's it! Go! Slow-mo <laughs> run shot! Are we allowed to hug? It's El Roca! Oh, yes! Yes! Also, when we got back together and we got to see each other again for the first time, when we got to sit next to each other for the first time, when we got to hug each other, we'll never take that for granted again. I didn't fully appreciate how much we were a part of people's lives during the pandemic until folks started returning to the plaza. And you would get like teachers, and nurses especially, who would say, Craig, thank you. Thank you for helping us get through the pandemic. And I was like, and at first I was like, what do you mean? You mean like the, the doctors who were, no, no, no. Like, it was heavy, it was hard. And we would turn on the Today Show in the morning because we knew we'd get the information that we needed, but we also knew that we would laugh and we would smile with you guys. Today Show viewers come here every single day to propose, to, to wave to friends and family, to hold up signs, to share messages, to be with us. Um, and that is a huge, huge part of the recipe of success for the show for 70 years. Like we can't do this without the people who come down here to the plaza and our viewers nationwide. The show really first got going. It was in a window on that same side of the street on 49th Street, and and everybody would stop by. It was it was it was like we had taken the the beauty and the majesty and the mystery of television. Because if you got to remember, again, back at that time, people would literally stand in front of appliance stores and watch TV through the glass. Well, now they could come and watch TV through the glass, and the TV was watching them. Well, what part of our cast is you, uh, you the public at least? See, we're in a big glassed-in kind of fishbowl here. We can look out the window, as you see, and see the people who are looking in at us anytime. And we see all sorts of fascinating folks from home out there, and sometimes they stand out there and look at us and wave at the folks back home. But here we are, TikTok, the interweb, the tweeter, all that stuff. But you know what? People still like to be seen on TV to the folks back home. There's the beauty of it. In 1952, people were waving and the TV camera was panning them. And here we are in the 21st century and people are still waving and holding up signs and hoping that somebody back home sees them. How great is that? The audience is the heart of this show. Whether they're at home 
or whether they're in our plaza or whether they're peeking through our window. The audience is the beating heart of this show. It's literally why we get up in the morning. People have made the Today Show part of their mornings and part of their lives and part of their families for decades. You'll meet people who say, my grandma watched the Today Show, my mom watched the Today Show, now I watch the Today Show, my kids watch it with me. People who watch the Today Show feel like their family. And guess what? We feel like your family too. I've always felt like an audience member because that's what I feel like I am a lot of the time. Like when I walk out, I think I would be doing that. I would be coming to 30 Rock. I'd hold up a sign. I know my mom would. She'd be out there with a sign. So I think when you look out and you see like bright shining faces of, of people who've waited, you know, for this magical moment, it's so um, like incredibly satisfying and beautiful to share in it. Like that's what I feel like when I walk out. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to find out like who's here. So what, bring, what brings you to the Today Show? Well, I mean, this, we've always wanted to do this, and um, today's show is a part of our life. We've and been watching it every day for seven years when we met, so, yeah. so from a boat. Yeah. Super fans. <laughs> My name is well, good morning, Barbara. Uh, Barbara Walters, the Jane Paulies, the Katies, the Meredith. They blew the doors open. And then me and Savannah just strolled through. We're like, hey, thanks. We are kicking off the year right because Hoda is officially the co-anchor of today. Hoda, you are a partner and a friend and a sister, and I am so happy to be doing this. Well, there's no one I'd rather be sitting next to in 2018. A woman stopped me with her child, and she said, thank you, because now my daughter thinks this is totally normal. To me, the Today Show is the gold standard. The producers, the crew, the staff, Everyone who puts this show together, far more than the people you see on TV, they are the best of the best, and they pour themselves into it every day and every night. People tune in because they know what they're going to see is reliable, it's accurate, it's well-produced, it's curated, it's important. We won't waste your time. And I think that's why the show continues to be relevant. It's that, and then it's also that hopefully people feel a connection and feel a bond with the people on set who are sharing the news with them. I mean, in a way, I, I, I feel like it, it's different than some anchorman voice of God telling you what's going on in the world. I feel like we are coming on together and we are informing, but also processing the news with our viewers. And there's a connection there. And to me, that has stood the test of time and is what will continue to stand the test of time. People have tuned in and the people who brought them that news will have changed. But the mission hasn't, to find out that the world is still there and get them ready for their day. Here's the thing about life, okay, for all of us. Every single working environment, family, group has days that it's bright and shiny and there's nothing better. And we also have days when we're on our knees. And that's the way life goes. That's the way it goes. And you just ride the waves, and I feel like that's how you have to navigate just life in general. And we navigate it at work. Some days are the best day ever, and some days you wonder, like, what in the heck's going on? But no matter what, you adjust your sails and you go because we got a long road. We're only 70? I mean, like, we're babies, you know, goo goo. We got a long way to go. I think Dave Garraway and everyone that started this little project in black and white would be astonished and amazed, and I hope they'd be proud. Thank you, goodbye until tomorrow morning, peace. Oh my God, Craig, look, it's our friends. Today all day, we, we're so happy you guys are here because it is Friday. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and we're especially grateful this morning because we've got a special treat for you. We're celebrating 70 years of today and we're so happy to party with these people. Oh, we can't wait. We're gonna get things started off with the trip down memory lane, looking back at the iconic events 
and unforgettable moments that have made today an American institution. And then we better brush up on our today knowledge in a hurry because Mr. Roker, he's going to quiz us about everything that's going on, everything that's happened through the years in this iconic studio. I'm glad he's not playing because he'd win. Oh, he'd get so. every single one right. Plus, uh, we'll take you to this adventure we had. We got to flip the switch and turn on the iconic Empire State Building. It is Today Show Orange for this special day. Let's get it started. A special Today at 70 edition of Today, Today in 30. 30. It is time to welcome hey. in our girl, hey, girl. Savannah Guthrie. Hey. Let's go. Ah. She's go. Go. here uh, because it's time to kick off our 70th anniversary celebration, Savannah. That's right, guys. You know, Dave Garraway used this exact Zoom 70 years ago <laughs> today. Um, it, it's wonderful that we were able to recreate it. I'm home, but I am with you in spirit just thinking about that day. 70 years ago, 1952, Dave Garraway said good morning and said, and I hope it's the first of many mornings here on today. And it's been, well, it's been 25,000 25, mornings <laughs> later. Here we are. Can you even believe it? Wow. I can't believe it's been that many. This morning, guys, we're taking time to celebrate those seven decades of informing, inspiring, and hopefully making you smile. Very right, first, good morning. Good morning. Tough news. First, here's the news. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Welcome to today. Welcome to today. In your neck of the woods. Happy birthday. We're in the history books. It's hard to make. It is a big anniversary. Real big. You know, you realize 70 is such a big number. We're each a tiny little piece of that 70 years. Really mind boggling. I mean, that's huge. Seven decades. It's a remarkable achievement. The Today Show was always on in the Daily Household when I was a kid. There was Tom Brokaw and Jane Paul. And I think, wow, that's terrific, but I'm never going to do that. Willard was my inspiration. I've been kissed for the best. All right, I'm done. When I was growing up, there were not a lot of people that looked like me on network television. And then there was Bryant Gumbel. Barriers are down in East Germany this morning. Huh. Maybe I could do that. When I saw Katie, a little dream was born. Still can't decide whether I'm Catherine or Katie. No, I, I was the one on the outside. I was the one with my face plastered to the window, wanting to look in and be part of it, and then suddenly to be invited inside. Good morning, please. The very first good morning of what I hope and suspect will be a great many good mornings between you and I. The Today Show is a national treasure. It started in 1952 and was really groundbreaking in its time. There it turns to rain. When the Today Show went on the air, I mean, TVs weren't being turned on. If you turned on your TV, you got And they thought, well, let's give it a shot. events program geared to keep the people in touch with the world. Take a look at the women on this show. When they started, it was Today Girls. They were show pieces. Barbara Walters here this morning. Then someone named Barbara Walters came along. Get your own cup of coffee. And said, no, I want a seat at the table. Good morning. Mr. Well, President. good morning, Barbara. Hi. Barbara Walters, the Jane Paulies, the Katies, the Merediths. They blew the doors open. And then me and Savannah just strolled through. We're like, hey, thanks. From Studio 1A. And today, it's two female anchors. And I'm so proud of that. A woman stopped me with her child, and she said, thank you, because now my daughter thinks this is totally normal. People have made the Today Show part of their mornings and part of their families for decades. What do people need to know to start their todays? This morning's top news. These are really important moments in our history and people remember who shared that news with them. The President of the United States is dead. These are the honor gods guarding the casket. Dr. Martin Luther King died violently last night in Memphis, Tennessee. Why, when he had it all, did it happen? Pope John Paul II was the target of an assassination attempt. 
long before I was part of the Today Show, I watched major news events on the Today Show. And the Daily Oklahoman speaks of a morning of terror, and indeed that's what we've had. Every time I cover a breaking news story for the Today Show, I feel that way. Breaking news out of Boston, here is what we know right now. We flew over in the middle of the night, got there literally with minutes to spare to, to get on the air. How long is it going to take to rebuild Notre Dame? We are upstairs on a balcony roof right now. Right about now, I do. Oh. We want to go live right now and show you a picture. I can't think of a more potent moment than the morning of 9-11. A plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center. I could not have been prouder to have been part of this show. Good morning, Dave. The Today Show has always been a place that politicians want to come to and where they can always expect a tough question. Do you think this was a perfect call? Vast right-wing conspiracy. Do you feel like you owe her an apology? I never talked to her. We pride ourselves on the ability to turn on a dime. That time when Katie Couric was interviewing Barbara Bush and the president walked in. Yeah, I know what one candidate said about you. Blame it on Katie Couric. I feel like you take something away from each story, but there are others that are just special. They're different. They don't leave you. I interviewed some women who survived the church shooting in Charleston, South Carolina. But now I see. I have chills right now. What's really cool is the power of the Today Show. If just one person went out there and got screened. Darfur, Sudan. I was diagnosed with GAD, General Anxiety Disorder. For the Today Show to give me the platform to do that with its, with its reach, that's really powerful. In 1952, people were waving with signs. So I watch it every, well, every time I get a chance to. Daddy's babysitting, he couldn't come. <laughs> like the grandchildren of people who came 70 years ago now show up. How great is that? Welcome to Studio 1A here on 49th in the Plaza. The audience is the beating heart of this show. When they show up on the Plaza, it's not just as fans of our show. It's people who feel like family. They watch every morning. Like, we are a part of their families. That's awesome. And guess what? We feel like your family, too. We were the first ones to bring concerts. The concerts that we put on in the plaza are iconic. Makes you Today's show for 70 years has been right there at the epicenter of pop culture. <laughs> when are you getting married? Yeah. Well, the name of the movie is Star Wars. Aww. Here's what's happening in your neck of the world. I walk in and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, who's here? Beyonce, Beyonce's here? What, 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 what? You rock Everyone whose poster you may have had plastered all over your junior high bedroom wall, you're gonna meet them. Okay, I'm plastered! And it's amazing. Gosh! you <laughs> ready tonight. I knew if I lived long enough, my dreams would come true, and they have. Do you remember that? Fun is a huge ingredient to the recipe of success here. Who among us is serious all the time? No one. When I say go, we say one, two. Okay, go. One, two. You will see it again. <laughs> <laughs>
even vaunted newsmen like Hugh Downs and Dave Garraway. Here he comes now. There are clips of the Today hosts riding around in little go-karts. This show did start with a monkey, that's proof. That, to me, encapsulates the spirit of the Today Show. It's a blast, because you don't know what's gonna happen on the show. It's like throw your head back and play. Halloween rolls around, I'm all in. Good morning, my neighbors! There's no place this show hasn't gone. Welcome to China. Bon venit in Romania. A splendid morning. We're looking at the great pyramids of Egypt. We were the first ones to do these live remotes from all around the world. Good morning from the Sydney Opera House in Sydney, Australia. Today is the day. We've taken our viewers to every continent. To the ends of the earth today. This side, the southern hemisphere. This side, northern. We touched down at the South Pole. From Africa. Peace. That's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. Allison, can you explain what internet is? 70 years later, we're still coming into people's homes, but now on their phones, their computers. Hey, your phone dinged. It's us. Hey. The Today Show has always innovated, and I think it continues to be groundbreaking. No matter where you go, we will find you. I think what The Today Show does is it makes the world smaller, and it also makes us all feel closer. There's a deep affection for all of us when the cameras aren't rolling. And I think the chemistry that happens on air, it's undeniable. I feel like we have a very special group of people. It's a feeling of when you sit there on the set, you're sitting with old friends. You know, one of the things that makes it easy to succeed here, in a sense, is that it really is a team. Love is real. During the pandemic, we were physically apart, but I don't think we felt emotionally apart. In fact, I think we felt really close. When we got to hug each other, we'll never take that for granted again. To be a part of something that has meant so much to so many for so long, it's not lost on any of my friends and colleagues. I think the secret sauce why this show has lasted 70 years is it's good company. But for 70 years, people have tuned in and the people who brought them that news will have changed. But the mission hasn't, to find out that the world is still there and get them ready for their day. I think Dave Garraway and everyone that started this little project in black and white would be astonished and amazed, and I hope they'd be proud. Thank you, goodbye until tomorrow morning. Peace. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses by the man of the All right, it just did so. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
And here we are now, 70 years and more than 25,000 mornings later, when Dave Garraway first opened the first ever Today Show on this day, January 14th, 1952. He probably had no idea that his words would echo for generations. He started a program that would become a morning ritual for millions, introducing a new era of broadcasting. Here it is, Jack said, January 14th, 1952, when NBC begins a new program called Today, and if it doesn't sound too revolutionary, I really believe it begins a new kind of television. <laughs> a new kind of television indeed. You know what was unheard of at the time? A news program to start your day covering everything from politics to pop culture. You know, we had a lot of morning show first, the very first woman to co-host the first African-American anchor, and the first female anchor team. Also, the first outdoor studio, our beloved plaza. And it turns out it really was revolutionary and paved the way for so many shows to come. We're gonna try very much to put you more closely in touch with the world we live in. We like to call it a front line to history. Rather than just telling you the news, we like to take you to the scene, introduce you to the people involved, and help put news into context. Over seven decades, 20 presidential inaugurations, America's tragedies and triumphs, we have been there for it all. Every day for two hours in the morning, just about the time you get up, 7 to 9 a.m. Well, 7 to 9 a.m., those are the old days, Mr. Garraway. We have evolved quite a bit since then, haven't we? About five decades later, we expanded from two hours. We went to three hours. Of course, now we're four hours. You can watch the Today Show on the weekends with Peter and Kristen on Sunday with Willie. You can also find us, of course, at today.com and on a plethora of all your favorite social media channels right here, of course, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. You can hear us on Sirius XM Radio. We have the, all the podcasts that we do right now. And if that is not enough, you can now tune in literally at any hour of the day. We've got our own streaming channel, Today All Day. So we're no longer just a television program. We're always just one click away on your phone, Uncle Al. That's right. Part of our cast is you, uh, you the public at least. See, we're in a big glassed in kind of fishbowl here. We can look out the window, as you see, and see the people who are looking in at us anytime. And we see all sorts of fascinating folks. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year gonna look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> We're back with today's trivia special game show celebrating today's 70th anniversary. I'm your host, Al Roker. Now, let's meet our contestants from 
South Carolina, Craig Melvin from West Virginia, Hoda Kotb, and from California, Carson Daly. Come on, let's go! Good luck to you all. Okay, here we go. First question. Which star's father created the Today Show? Was it Johnny Carson, Jimmy Fallon? What? Andy McDowell? Is this Sigourney real? Wow. I'm going to go with Sigourney you got a, Weaver. You got a buzz. I did. He did. Oh, Sigourney right. Weaver. You Sigourney. are correct. What? Sigourney oh. Weaver. Her Look at you. Yes. He created not only the Today Show, but the Tonight Show as well. Oh, wow. wow. All right, we're gonna. This is an audio cue. Let's cue the music for this. Play it. Which iconic Hollywood star sang the song that became the original instrumental version of Today? Carson. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. No. I'm going with Doris Day. Correct, Doris oh, Day. That's right. Oda Kotb. Oda's so lucky. That's I right. am Pickleball. lucky. Dave I never Gar- played pickleball, then she rules. <laughs> Dave Garraway came up with that. All right, here's a good one for you. This one's for you, Craig. How many U.S. presidents have been interviewed here on Today? Wow. Craig. 13. You're correct. Wow. Every president since know? President Eisenhower here That's on good. today. Wow. All right, Wait, let's go now. Wow. Here comes Carson. This one's for you. All right. Our very first plaza performance was A, Billy Joel, Ooh. B, Britney Spears, C, Earth, Wind, and Fire, very D, first? Aerosmith. I'll bite. I'll take the bait. It's got to be Earth, Wind, and Fire. Absolutely correct. Go, let's go. Carson! Carson! And your Wait, favorite Carson! band, too. Right. Wait, let's watch for it. Oh, let's relive. Oh, come on, Broker. Broker, was that one of your favorites? Yes, absolutely. Come on. All right. Here we go. A lot of people have been spontaneously spotted stopping by our window, including a president of the United States. What? Was it A, Harry Truman, B, Gerald Ford, C, Lyndon Johnson, D, Bill Clinton? Stop by our window Uh, in the world. It had to be Clinton. uh, uh, Craig, Craig. I'm going to go with uh, Gerald Ford. No. It's got to be Bill Clinton. No. Uh, it was Harry Truman. Absolutely correct. Wait, Harry what? Truman in 1957 oh, stopped 50. by. Look I was there that morning. Oh, wait, Fantastic. No. wait, can you just look at that photo look for a second? Now, that's amazing that with incredible? his hat on. Oh, that's right. They hold it at our tie. So Where's the sign? Right Where's the right. sign? Okay, here we go. Halloween time. Yeah. Which celebrity oh, yeah. has not been portrayed by a Today anchor on Halloween? Blake Shelton, Katy Perry. Oh, gosh. Katy Perry. Perry. Absolutely no, correct. I, I got it. That's good. None of us yet. <laughs> well, you both buzzed in at the same time. I'll Eddie has, you. Cindy has. Okay. okay. We're coming okay. up on the Olympics, right? Oh, Ready? No. We're okay, flying. Okay, here we go. In 17 days, we'll be... How many Olympics has today traveled to? Okay. He's got, I think Craig? you should compete the, complete the no. question. Okay, how many Let's Olympics... Go ahead, Craig. Go how many ahead, Olympic Craig. games have we go, traveled? 15. Absolutely correct. Wow. That's right. Where did We've go? been at every Wait, Olympics can we pause since for 1992. Wow. Al, can we pause for a second? Yeah. What's the score? Uh, uh, I three, believe two, one. No, wait. Hold it three. Got, I've got, I've got I three. Two. No, you got two. Carson, two. All okay. right. All okay. Right. I'm not sure about that. The Today that. Plaza had a big role on a popular sitcom. Name the show. Seinfeld, Will and Grace, oh, wow. Friends. It's got to be 30 Rock. Rock. Nope. <gasps> she said lose a point. Uh-huh. Uh, Will and Grace. Will and Grace is correct. Oh, let's go. go. Oh. Look, we've got a little clip. Well, let's see. <laughs> I want to see. Jack was uh, oh, uh, looking forward to finding.